Good morning, everyone. I am the Eggman, joined with Brian from Stay Zero. You okay there? You, you sure you're here? I didn't get much sleep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are here. Uh, guess where? We're in here. Wow, we are in here. We're here in Santa Clara. Yes. Santa Clara, California, a little ways away from uh, San Jose. Yeah. 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 So if you uh, didn't know, and we're here for Core TCG's uh, regional. Yes. I think it is the first official regional of OPO6 here. Yes, in, in North America. Yeah. Uh, there is one for Oceania that just finished. I know Germany had one also this weekend too. I think they're close to finishing if not finished, but the first one on US soil. And uh, honestly, I'm really excited for, for today. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting uh, for a lot of different reasons. One, you know, uh, after the ban list, Everyone is playing Sakazuki. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Literally, I I've, I haven't walked around and didn't and haven't heard the words. Yeah, I'm on Sak Sakazuki. Yeah. I whenever yeah. I saw someone, I'm like, all right, Saka, Kata, or Gekka, which one are you playing? They're Pretty like, much, yeah. they're like, uh, sometimes there are a couple Reju's, <laughs> couple, yes. honestly, just a couple Reju's. I don't, I don't think I've yeah. talked to anyone else wise. It's interesting because uh, Reju is like the deck that people are like, oh yeah, this is the sauce. Yes. This is the this is the deck that you should be on. People are not playing, and you know what it could be it could be uh i think at the end of the day it could be one of those decks that are uh that sneaks in to the the uh the uh top 16 and yes. we don't even know it right yeah so i've i've i haven't seen them apparently there's a lot of star deck 10 laws here today that's uh random. oh and, no not really i guess it got support right yeah it got support everywhere so it just make it makes sense yeah and i do know so we th again there was a oceana event that did finish uh i do actually have the top 16 list for that one uh Ended up. I'll, I'll let you guys give give yourself a second for for what won that event. Um, but uh, it it was a pretty interesting top sixteen. I'll let you guys think for just a minute. I'll say it in a second. But um, yeah, their their pie chart is pretty diverse. Um, from from that, I'll be uploading that pretty soon. Let me but take a look at this. here, yeah, let me let me get let me it. Let, give me a second. Let, let me get let me let me put it into what's going on with there. I, I don't your, know your eyesight well while you're doing that um our first match we're just grabbing the first and second table pretty much every single round yeah i mean unless we see something super interesting mm -hmm. um uh i'm pretty sure that's just what we're gonna do this first round however we have blue purple raise you yes uh, versus green yellow yamato yes two new leaders i think that they were kind of on you know people argue which one is the uh i guess the second best one from mm -hmm. the uh from the set i think Gekamori is pretty understood as the best one yeah and uh so reiju has been been up there uh then also yamato has been up there too mm -hmm. perona's kind of there they're all kind of like in this middling like who's <laughs> who's the next one and yeah. uh i think i think uh my, my bet's probably reiju but it's just so polarizing in its matchups at times I don't know. Sometimes I'd be I'd be watching Raju games and be like, they're doing a lot of stuff, but nothing's really happening. Yeah. But I will say some of the chains and some of the some of the stuff that you could do as far as like drawing cards and playing bigger bodies, being able to play the uh, the, the four cost, seven cost, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Uh, it is nice. You yeah. Know? And it, it kind of does get out of hand after a while because I, I think the concept is just making sure that you keep a decent hand size, you keep a decent board, and you keep that flow going throughout the game. And yeah. Break that flow, or you you break the consistency of the deck. Sometimes it kind of falls short. So um, uh, we we might see that in this game. All right. So I've given enough time. The winner of the uh, TAC regionals that happened just a couple hours ago was indeed Whitebeard. Whitebeard won that tournament. Uh, Nine zero. Uh, the deck list I don't think ran any OPO six cards, but the rest of their top sixteen for a four eighty seven player event were three Moria, three Katakuri, two Star Deck Ten Law, two Reju, two Sakazuki, two Yamato, a Newgate, and a single copy of Perona as well. This format's kind of sick, huh? Yeah. If this is what we see for the rest of the format, I'd be pretty happy. I'm. A little uh, skeptical. We'll see. We'll see if that's what it ends up being. But sure. uh, for for week one, that's uh, that's a pretty good pie chart. Yeah, honestly, uh, I'm happy to see that. It's not like uh, super oppressive as far as like one one deck, which is always nice. Mm -hmm. It's not like a super heavy top weighted thing. And you know, I think it's a lot of factors, right? Yep. When a set comes out, people want to play the new decks. They do for sure, 100 percent. For two reasons. One, it's cool. Two, it's because uh, a lot of people aren't really used to the matchups. So if you do sit down against a Yamato, for instance, you don't really know what variant they're 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 working with, and sometimes you just don't have that matchup knowledge. And yeah. uh, some people are just taking taking hold of that. 
Yeah, but I think we're ready to start round number one if we want to start going over there. Uh, we'll make sure on that, but let's let's start going over there real quick and yeah, see we, uh, what we've got. We can definitely take a look. Let me make sure we're, we're heard. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, let me make sure we're heard before that, I forget. I mean, I think that's important. Some people might be like, yes, finally. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Um, I think uh, I'll go ahead and start the timer as well these are now 30 minutes these are now 30 minutes yes right so not not 35 minutes it is now 30 minutes from what we understand and what we can see on the big old timer screen so um uh it's very interesting to see that uh i don't these, think these decks are going to need it but no and when we're talking about decks for sure that need the 35 minutes these are not it for no sure. No, maybe maybe Raju at times Yamato is usually like ten minutes. No, yeah, pretty much like if you're just swinging seven nine and like <laughs> a bunch of other don on it, you're, you're, you're it's a wrap. Yeah, and it, it's a uh, it's interesting because Yamato, I was telling uh, I was telling our boys, especially the strongest wizard. Shout out to him. Yeah. Um, how who is wearing the hat today makes it he he is wearing the infinitely hat. easier to to spot him. A hundred percent. And uh, basically, we were saying I was I was talking to him. I was like. You know, on paper, and like when you take a look at, like, when you fan out your deck and you're like doing your deck list, you're like, dang, Yamato is kind of sick. And then uh, there are just times where it just doesn't feel great because you know you're committing a lot of dawn to a swing for your leader. There's there's a lot of different stuff, and you know, um, against multicolor leaders, it is pretty scary to to look at a, a, a Yamato sometimes because two hits, two mm -hmm. hits, you're at zero, and then everything else is lethal. Yeah, and it's it's as a four life leader, um, it works in Yamato's favor because you hit them for four to two to zero. Mm -hmm. Five life leaders, it's five three one, so you get that like extra. It, it's extra, but yeah. it looks like Diego has a pretty good start. They ended up getting the Germa sixty six, looking top five, and then we were playing the stage and getting some more recycling, putting the Yonji into the trash there, which is uh, probably the worst of the of the four rangers that we have. But we're just starting with Alexander, big eight k double swing there. And it uh, looks like we're going to get out of it with a Kaya and a, oh, our our two uh, our two boys, the three drop and the four drop. Gotcha. Okay. The Ichi and the, oh, I forget the blue one. It's, it's always, I think it's I, Niji. It's Niji and Ichi. <laughs> You're on your own. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just not going to work out. <laughs> well, so fun fact, uh, their names are puns on numbers. Mm, gotcha. So if you know numbers in Japan uh, or Japanese, then it helps you a little bit, but. Gotcha. Uh, I need a little bit of help sometimes, but I, I do appreciate Diego how he's setting up cards in his trash. It makes it easy for us. So we see that we've got two targets for uh, for us there. We're going to play the two drop, Raju, be able to draw two cards and a third one with our leader effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting because like this this deck kind of teaches you timings of the of the game, right? Yeah. <laughs> it uh it basically uh, allows both players to make sure that the, what they're doing is is correct. And of course, we have a stream judge. Don't worry about it. They they got everything there. Uh, but um, for this, yeah, we are going back to uh, Yamato's turn. Uh, did take that one life, so it's four to three, and with uh, with no trigger too, which is very important. Yeah, I mean that's what I say. I was like, we do, you know, we only have four life, which you know, comparison to categories five, and the ability to to recover and get life back out. Um, it is uh, it is a little bit different, but Yamato has plenty of triggers, you know, uh, uh, Onami and a bunch of other stuff, which we're going to take a look at the two cost, um, 2K, I always get her name wrong, so I'm going to pull it up before I say it, uh, Kozuki Hiro. <laughs> no, you, did, you, you were reading it and you couldn't. <laughs> Kozuki Hiriori, there you yes, go. Yes, there it is. I got it there, we got there. It's an interesting card where you can uh, basically take the life and then place another. But we're going to go ahead and swing, I believe that is eight again, right? Yeah, and uh, we can't keep getting out of these, so we're down to two. And the big thing about Yamato is that it, it cares for a lot of reasons for your opponent to be at three or less life, which is, again, normally pretty easy uh, to do, uh, which is also why Diego, I think, was making sure to get out of it sooner. Mm -hmm. But it uh, looks like we found another Yonji uh, two drop there. Yeah... And, you know, like like I said before, you know, with Raju, you, you, you pretty much want to make sure that you're doing stuff every single turn. It's, yeah. it's very unlikely that you have cards that do nothing. And, um, you know, you really want to make sure that you're also uh, keeping a hold and uh, using your leader effect to keep drawing cards and, and, and uh, keeping that stuff going. Yeah, so it looks like we are... 
we went, what, 6k there? Uh, oh, we knew the Onami was there, and so oh, we put one. it there. Yeah. That was a tough oh, one. Oh, we have another one, though? <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> what can you do about that? <laughs> you play another blocker. Yeah. Uh, Blockers are okay, but you got to realize that you're playing against Yamato that, that also has access to sugar and a bunch of other things that, that can rest in uh, green. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this blocker, which is the four cost, I believe, is the uh, Yonji, right? Um, gets that little boost, and, um, you know, it's only going to go so far if we uh, don't see a sugar or something else like that to rest it. So we're going we're gonna, to, you know, keep trying to figure out what we want to do with our dawn I, I think if you don't have something to rest it basically means like i'm going to put a lot of dawn on something and i'm going to make sure that you that you either uh block with it or um uh, pitch a lot of cards and i think that's what we're doing because i don't see any green in our oh he's he's reading the card oh no oh yeah okay i was just making sure uh it is the the least common of the of the four the, the worst one so it does a blocker it is a 6k because you have less dawn than your opponent right now so hey man it's not the worst one if it prevents this, this that's play. true <laughs> so... it is the easiest one to cut from the deck how about that sure that's fair there are a lot of them uh and especially if you're using the fill card the 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 card that we see here that you can rest and uh look at the top of your deck in order to get another target for your germas um it is nice to to have multiple targets but it looks like we're going seven yeah so we Which... could do block and 2k yeah i think yeah, that that's, makes sense that's exactly what's happening oh two 1ks though uh yeah that's not the greatest not the greatest Oh, but then we're playing the new Momo, uh, so that does let us play and put a land of Wano into our life from the field. So mm -hmm. I I like this card on paper, e but know, not in my hand. What I need to get have hand. counter? Not not when you you look at your life or you take life, and it's it's another one of them, right? Yes. Um, that's where it kind of falls short. I wish it had counter power. If it had counter power, I think it'd be a lot more playable. But. Yeah, I understand why it doesn't. Um, yeah. Maybe if it was like a six drop 6K with counter power, I'd like it a little bit more. Four or five, or four, five, four, five maybe. Um, four or five and healing would be silly though. I don't know. Uh, that. yeah. I mean, but it's it's it's. It's restricted to Wano. That's the only reason why I say that. Okay. If it wasn't restricted to everything else, or if it was unrestricted, then yeah, maybe. But yeah. Oh man! Well, this this is I think the fourth copy of our two drop Yonji, so he must be playing four copies of it. Well, that and I mean we're going through our deck, right? We're yeah. going through a deck for our four costs, and we're we're drawing so many cards. So because of that, we're just we're just seeing so much, and that's just kind of what the deck does, right? Like I said, you just want to keep using your leader ability. You keep want to uh, keep making sure that you have a decent hand, and while we're blocking here. Um, you know, in comparison, Yamato doesn't really have that many cards. Yeah, and how much Dawn do we have open? Is We don't have four Dawn open. Yeah, we only have two, right? As uh, Reiju, yeah. yeah. We only have two. So this might be oh, we're playing another, another one. Oh, wow. Our... How much Dawn do we have? We only have three, right? Yeah, we, we are, we've we we been pretty aggressive on using the effect, because that's our second one from this turn, so we don't get the Dawn back. Wow. Uh, or we don't get like the additional draw, but... Yeah. You know it's fantastic for hitting two blockers, though? Yeah. Oh, good, good. What is it? Uh, I don't know. It uh, starts with Hody and ends with Jones. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> that would be sick. Yeah. Yeah. So if we um if we need to play Howdy Jones, uh, it would be uh it would be pretty cool. Rest both of these blockers, which is just not what's gonna happen, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then uh, go in with the leader. I mean, it is a little. Well, you know what? We know what the top part of our our life is so if we want to get another 2k uh that would be pretty good too are we using it now oh no we're uh oh is <laughs> double nojos uh i saw them in hand i didn't think he had two of them though yeah yeah it's not where you want them i don't know you you always have to assume there's one in hand just being like why are you here why are you not in my life why are you not on my board sure, right dude, sure. oh and we just find the five drop each g which uh is probably our best way to remove this card uh, the only issue is that, again, we don't have a lot of Dawn, so we're going to pay three for it. We're going to use uh, Niji's effect to go play the five drop, use the effect to put one of them back into hand, draw a card. Which is, like, not what you want, right? Mm, <laughs> not not as Alexander, no. Yeah, as Alexander, as Alexander we definitely don't want to see that. It is a bit of a bummer. Yeah, so, but we, 
again, we've got a pretty wide board. Yamato doesn't generally have a good way to answer a lot of this outside of, like, additional Onamis in life. And, uh, I mean, we do have this Momo to block one of the 5Ks, but we'll see. We will see. Yeah, it looks like we're just going 5Ks in. Yeah, which is fine. We're not gonna... I mean, this is probably the one that you block. Unless you want to see if you can get a trigger, so that way, if we do play Howdy Jones, you know, we might have a, another swing. Yep. Ooh, and we're thinking about it. Yeah, I think I think that's what we're we're making on. Asking for cards in hand. There's always a <laughs> happy thing to hear. I'm sure. I wonder what. In pa I mean, what? Maybe it's like a 200 million volts. They're thinking about healing one. Mm, yeah, sure. I mean, it could be as a Satori. I mean, I don't know if they, he plays those, but it could be like a trigger. That I don't know if he wants to uh, pitch a card or not, because it like the hand quality of his hand is not great. Um, maybe he thinks like if he goes in for the other two swings, you know, that type of thing. But he doesn't have any, very much Dawn as Reju yeah. uh, to play with, so I highly doubt that's ever going to happen. That's, right. that's the downside of minusing Dawn every single turn. You, you really don't have Dawn to actually go game with. Yeah, and, and these blockers do end up being pretty tough for, for Yamato to deal with. Again, outside of like Cody Jones, but that just puts you down to zero life. That just says, you know what, I I am confident enough that I can win with this because otherwise I just lose on the crackback. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, it's a little bit of a trade-off. You don't have as much Dawn to, to play with to, to go for game, but you have all these attackers to swing with. You have these blockers to make sure that you're not getting double stricken. Um, and you also have a pretty decent hand throughout the entire game. You know, there's not there's not ever a time that you don't have more than five cards. Or there's always a time that you do have more than five cards yeah. around there. Which is good. I think overall, you know, it, we're in a tough spot as Yamato if we don't have a Howdy Jones, right? We, if we, if we can't rest these guys in order to get into their, uh, their life, um, we really just can't take game. And you know, swinging six one more time. I think if you're gonna do this, I think you want to go eight. I don't, I don't know what, what else you're gonna be using your Dawn with or use your Dawn for, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, Diego's been doing really good. We have five cards on board. Uh, we have two cards left in life, two blockers up. I I think he's been you know very well stabilized for this match at this point. Yeah, I mean I don't know if this is something that people would uh, play test against a lot, but it is something to 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 be aware of. And you know this is also I don't know if it is because we have a lot of dawn and we haven't seen Alexander's hand, but the fortress and eight cost a uh, kid is also something to consider. So yeah. I don't know if that's something that we're going to be leaning on soon. Oh, okay. I, I saw a peek in hand. It looks like we've got Yamato in there. Oh, which, nine drop? Nine drop, which... I think that's, that card's sick in this deck. But I I, I also think, you know, most people cut it. Um, just because if you want to go more aggressive or, you know, that type of thing. But Yeah, but it's, it's good. It's almost worth it, right? Because, unfortunately... There are a bunch of four costs out there, and uh, it can only pop a three or less. But yeah, that's the other downside. Cause like it's it's a weird is dichotomy a white word for that uh, the relationship of nine drop Yamato and the leader, where you're making them take so much life, and the nine drop is is based on that. So like you know yeah I don't know like uh, I I have like an issue because I like playing Godatsu in my copies of Yamato, but like um, it I don't know it just gives my opponent like. If they take the life early, then it doesn't do anything. But then it's a 1k, so it's fine. Right. Um, yellow, yellow's in a spot where your opponent can't play around everything. But that also means that, uh, you know, you you don't have to... Sometimes, like, the stuff they do, they do play around, it just makes it useless in your hand. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, do you see chat? If it's not Fortress, that's fine. Most of the Fortress decks are mostly green, right? Mm -hmm. I'm very aware of that. I am just uh, mentioning 8-drop Kid as an option for a lot of the people who might be playtesting against Yamato. That's and I think, I think one of the things here, <laughs> as we just keep pitching cards, um, is still these two blockers. They're they're menacing, menacingly. They're yeah. just standing there, just waiting to... to not be double stricken. Yeah, and we've got only two cards in hand for Diego, so pretty pretty low for Reju. Reju usually likes to have five or six cards in hand, but Yeah, no, but what were we what are we using for the rest of the dawn here though? Yeah, it's tough. 
I mean, you do want to be a little careful, but... Yeah, it looks like we're going to play our first copy of HG, which has been, you know, 15 minutes without him hitting the board is an eternity <laughs> for, for Raju players. I mean, it's weird, because we, we drew so many cards and we just didn't see it, maybe? Mm -hmm. Or maybe he just didn't... I don't know. Maybe it just it just didn't work out uh, the timing. But most of the time for this card, you know, this card is, is super cool, where, um, you know, we... Uh, uh, we just have a 7k swing that can remove a body. And honestly, we're not probably not going to swing into this 4 cost, uh, but we're still going to minus it. Yeah, so we gave the minus to the to the Momo, so we could block, it'd just be, you know, he would not be around anymore. I mean, that is something to, to minus too. We don't know without dice. Don't get me on that. Ooh, 200 million volts, which... Uh, I guess we must need... Because otherwise, like, that's a really good card to get rid of one of these Yongjis. Yes. Yes. But it also guarantees we can't lose, right? Uh, yeah. At this point, depending on their hand, right? Because yeah. we don't have any more Dawn to use as Reiju. Uh, we have two 6k swings, but um, I don't think you want to do that. Because if you swing with one of them, it's a very big possibility that we're, um, we're going to lose next turn. Yeah, so we'll we'll see. Yeah, so we got rid of a reject. Oh yeah, reject's such a hard card to get out of. But when you're trying to hit them down to two, yeah, from two, then it's it's a little bit easier. Oh, but then we're playing our two drop Reju, and we're gonna use the effect to draw two more cards. So mm -hmm. uh, again, just keeping real low on the dawn. Oh, but double two K off that's that. That's pretty good. That's really very good. It's it's very good. However, you know, it's only three cards, right? Yeah. So at, the, at most, you're still accounting for uh, 6K. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, that's just easy math when it comes down to it. So if we if we do have the Hody Jones, yeah. um, you know, that's going to make it easy. Uh, however, and there it is. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. So we finally found it. We're finally going to get around the silly blockers that have been uh, menacingly standing there and preventing us winning from the game. All right. So we have 8K double. Which they do have the double 2k for that, so a little bit unfortunate. Yeah. The the last card in hand, I did confirm, was a gum gum. So uh, we can get a, a larger attack. Mm -hmm. But I, we could get there. All right. Yeah, Hody Jones attacking big eight. We still have leader effect. I think Yamato is going to take this. I mean, I'm down for that, right? I'm, yeah. uh, I'm down for that. This has been kind of a... Um, yeah, and that is it. Alexander takes it with Yamato. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean that that's this has been a, a big grind to mm -hmm. be honest. Like they both have grinded the entire match. I think one of the things though is that because we didn't see any of the seven drops or the four drop, the place in the seven drop or whatever you want to call it, um, it, we just didn't really do too much aggression, and um, it really was just a factor of just putting down the seven drop uh, Hody, and it there it goes. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Howdy Jones indeed. Howdy Jones indeed. We're gonna go check the other match. How about that? Yeah, let's do it. I have well, a howdy emote. I have And it's done. Uh, it's done. Alright. <laughs> it was category versus Gecko, I think. I, I forget. But that was the other match. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we have table one and two here. Maybe we'll just go back to us. Yeah, I wonder if there was like a play where it made sense. I mean, having the blockers up is good, but uh, I was I was talking to someone else is on the way here today. Um, like yeah, uh, one blocker or two blocker is the same against Yamato, right? They both can get hit down. Like a lot of people are playing around 200 million volts, but mm -hmm. uh, Hody Jones being able to get rid of both uh, puts you in such a good position. I mean that's that's where the uh, the issue is, right? So like you have such a range of tools mm -hmm. as Yamato. Yeah. One, you just have to draw them, unfortunately. Yeah. And if you don't see them, just like how we saw it here, it could take a little while to take the game. Yeah. And two, you know, pretty much everything for or less is up for grabs. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, Surger, Sugar gets it, um, uh, Izu gets it, uh, what was the third one? Oh, uh, Amaru gets it, mm -hmm. right? There's so many things. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's why I like Yamato. It is... A bit of a grind, just like how we saw there, where Reiju just kept drawing cards and, and putting on uh, things on the board where we just had to get all get out of all those 5Ks, and uh, we just kind of pulled through. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was just the difference maker for Yachty Jones. Yeah, and the, the other one is that, um, so I, I saw, as we were reading chat too, a lot of people are wondering why he used the 200 million volts um, for, for what he did. Yeah. And I think it, I, I don't know exactly what it, their hand was, but 
uh, I think they were actually worried about losing, right? If, if they didn't heal that one damage, they only had one blocker, and from the cards they pitched, I don't think they had any counter in hand, like maybe one or two K. I mean, that's probably why they did it in the first place. What, I mean, honestly, recovering a life anytime is yeah, fine. Because I don't think they could have gone out of two 7K swings if they went for it. No. Uh, and that was the other thing. You know, some people in the chat were, were saying that he's just swing with the blockers. Kind of. You know, I, I think it was... I think it was the point. It, it was a... Uh, he was stuck in a hard place, mm -hmm. right? Uh, because if you swing the blockers, then you, if you don't have a decent hand, uh, then he's just immediately to go down to zero. Yeah, uh, it's just it's just gonna happen. And then from there, it just is such uh, an easier time for Yamato to take the game. Yeah. And for what? Just to get a couple cards out of their hand, or mm -hmm. you know, bring them down to zero life. You know. Yeah, it's just a it's a weird balance because like if you were more aggressive with the Yonjis, you would them hit them down to one, which means two hundred million volts was online. Yes. And uh, so it's just like a, a couple of decision points there. So I don't I don't think either player played it incorrectly. Um, probably if the Reiji player played a little bit more aggressively, they would have had a chance to win there. But I don't. I probably would have played made pretty similar you know decisions that they made in that yeah. game yeah i think it i think they just kind of play their hand as well there are certain instances again just uh on the field just looking at Reiji's field because they had five cards yeah five, yeah five cards on the field mm -hmm. at any point yeah which is kind of ridiculous when you think about it um and uh you know just based on the hand i, I think they low-key did get a little lucky with the trigger for yeah. amaru mm -hmm. um but with that little luck and playing yellow that's just the things that come with it right yeah um so it just all kind of worked out so I, I, that was cool man that was an opio six for our first round and um it was a pretty good match yeah i i think it was really good uh i'm, I'm happy i was really nervous about yamato because sometimes those games just end in 10 minutes but it was yeah. it was a real good grind i think both players played it really well and uh, I honestly thought Reiji was going to win that for, for most of that match. Sure, yeah. I mean, I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. What do you think is going to win the event? Ah, oh, boy. Oh, you, you hit <laughs> me with it. I did it before you did. Uh, I did it before you did. I'll, just, I'll say Gecko. Gecko will be my okay. my guess. Because um, I know a lot of people are... <coughs> we don't know the exact numbers right now, but my guess yeah. it's the one that people are playing more of. Yeah. We'll, uh, I'll do some... Uh, we we I'll do some data behind the scenes between rounds and stuff. Yeah, but, we'll, we'll see what's up. But I think it's uh it's the new stuff and it's good, so people want to play it and they will be rewarded for it. Um, but what about you? What do you think? I will be controversial and say category. Okay, yes. I I think uh, Kata Sokka, Kata, um and Mori are the the three to beat right now. Oh, and he's not talking about it out, man. Yeah, that's crazy, right? Yeah, I I think it gets better with the expansion booster because it gets a bunch of silly cards, yes. but. I think Katakuri just gets better with uh, with all the cards. Like just just being able to have like another like the the zero cost event. If yeah. you see it off the top of your life, off your Katakuri skill, yeah. psh, right yeah. to the bottom, you yeah. are suddenly feeling a lot safer, but right? There are just so many triggers that you can kind of control the game with, mm -hmm. and because of how Katakuri works, you're not really doing the roulette, which yeah. is interesting because people usually say Katakuri is the roulette one, not an L. Well, there's just so many hits that it's not even a chance anymore, yes. right? <laughs> it's an expectation. Yeah, so like Adele is interesting because like you kind of just have to hope. I mean, there's a few cards you can manipulate that way, but uh, you just kind of have to hope what your triggers are. But with Katakuri, now you have Onami, the, the zero cost. Mm -hmm. You have uh, uh, Okiku. You have Reject, technically, right? Um, there's so much stuff. There, there's so many things uh, that can really turn the game as Katakuri. And I think a really skilled player will get the RG grasp it in their hand and then put their skill together and put them you know i was going somewhere i don't know i was just mimicking you yeah that's fine um speed round before okay we go to break sure because we uh we have about i don't know eight minutes left or so in the in the round yeah something like that what do you guys think is uh gonna win the map or the 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 entire tournament I'll yeah let's know in the chat. chat yeah let's see in the chat we're we're, we're literally gonna wait here until you guys start to so oh, oh boy do not hold our round. chat hostage nope. nope you guys uh, have to say it you have to say uh, it. speed round i'm gonna boy. say it all. Oh, boy okay sock i'm not saying that one uh Sokka. okay yeah sure sock is a big one sock is a big one corona you're hopeful uh, more Sokka, okay. Katakuri, sure. I agree. You heard me. Perona. I like Perona. I actually would like to see a Perona if we can. In this early, in these early rounds. Whitebeard? Okay. Well, Diego, uh, spoiler alert. You might be right. Uh, <laughs> it, it did win Oceana a couple hours ago. Yes, I think, I think that's why. <laughs> Raise you? I, I don't know about that, Eric. Um... Moria, okay, sure. Uh, Katakuri, 
Perona. I'm also biased. Howdy Jones, of course. Pac oh boy, oh jeez. Any, any deck that has Howdy Jones. Oh jeez. Not okay. It's not Howdy. It's Howdy Jones. You guys know this. We do not. Uh, and now also bias. You Wait, know who's this. Wet potato. Huh? Do you know who Wet Potato is? Uh, if I I know that they visit my chat, oh, I don't okay. well, remember their. I'm not going to dox them, but okay, I don't that's remember. That's fine. I yeah. was just saying if you knew them, and you're like, oh, this is not their first bias. time around. Got it. Got it. All right. All right. Uh, you're messaging. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Ivan Kov. Okay, when was the last time someone registered at Ivan Kov? That's what I want to know. Is there any Ivan Kov? It's in... been a minute. Just control F for me real quick. Can you do that for me? Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Uh, Moria Perona. Yeah, that's yeah. The Navy Man. Is that is that um, Garp? Are you saying Garp? Uh, there are some people okay, in the man. tournament whose first name is Ivan, but uh, <laughs> that is uh, not at all count. Where it where it cuts off. <laughs> yes. Sanji, okay. Isho for sure. I mean, Isho is kind of sick right now, man. I don't know. It's like Perota, but cooler. Uh, and also less useful. Yes. Um, uh, let's see. Smoker. You know, I think Smoker low-key kind of got power crabs, right? There's like so many other black leaders you can you can go for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's tricky with uh, with that, so... There's, uh, like no, there's, no, there's no like underlying reason to play Smoker, other than a 5-life... Yeah, but I think kind of. I think Moria is just better at five life as a less generic, but yeah. just what it is. Yeah. And then we get a I know like Rob Lucci and OPO Seven, which is I think just almost entirely better smoker, right? Right. Don't don't say Garp, Daddy. Don't say Garp. That is. Um, that is your prerogative. The, uh, Zephyr Z, okay. Eminem, this is an L. Shout out to you. Hopefully you saw my thumbnail. Um, <laughs> I love. I did. I did put out that video. Uh, for the beginner guy when it first came out, and I put Eminem, and someone was like, "No, that's not an L, right?" I'm like, "Yes, <laughs> I did make the thumbnail." Uh, Lucci is better, yeah, probably. Reparable law. We are, we do have a few people on that. Um, Arlong Yellow, Mono Yellow Yamato. I mean, that's a fan favorite over here with Hayden. Yes. Um, Arlong, you are hopeful as well. Eight Very for sure, dude. I do want to see an ace, hopefully in the later rounds, because I, I do. I, it's always ace, man, because like it's right now with all the leaders that we were mentioning and all the things. Like red is the perfect rogue color, when you think about it. Sure, it is like the perfect rogue color. That's, I think that's one of the reasons why Whitebeard so, did so successful, or was so, so successful. And I, I hope, fine. I hope that um, ace is one of those uh, decks. So we'll see. Mm, maybe. Let me, let me let me see. Let me see. Let me I'm do hopeful. control F. There's like five people. I already know. Control F. I already know. There's, there's like five. Come on now. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. There are zero. Okay. Well. Bummer. Bummer. <laughs> That's uh, close to five. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How many new gates actually? Uh, I see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, four. Four new gates. Four new gates. Literally, that's it. That is it. That's actually nuts. That is more than I thought. Well, more than three. More than something. three. That's actually something. Um, all right. Yeah, you guys. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of category. A lot of Sakazuki. Some rogue decks every so often, and a lot of decks that aren't aren't even registered. So, uh, we are I think about to be finished with uh round one. Yep. So, uh, let's go to break with like 30 people around us yeah that's fine can't, can't see us or can't see um and uh we'll be right back for round two yep we'll be back with round two see you guys then i forgot i'm running this yeah you are press the button brian i the button brian all right we'll be right back <laughs> classic <laughs> Uh, we're back here um, in a very empty room. Basically. Yeah, it, uh, uh, it got pretty full in between the rounds for yeah. sure. There's like 100 people in here. Uh, and now we are back with round two. Uh, it is blazing fast with these 30 minute rounds. It's just uh, getting everybody wrangled together. Yeah. And uh, last round we had Reiju versus Yamato. Yeah, uh, pretty, for our table one. pretty tight game. Yamato able to get it with Hody Jones. Howdy. 
And now we have uh, Gecko Moria versus Katakuri. Yeah. Two of the very prominent and well-expected decks. Yeah, I think those are you know, the big three, I think, right now are Moria, Sakazuki, and Katakuri. And uh, those are two of those three. Yes, and I was trying to take a peek of, oh, it's Enel versus Reju for Table 2. So uh, let's go over to the good old people, see if we can get them started. Um... Yeah. So, what what do you think of this matchup, right? Gecko uh, is uh, the new the new kid on the block, right? Uh, it's kind of like a five life copy of Sakazuki. You do lose a little bit of removal power, but you kind of get the benefit of having better cards on board. And I think like a little bit cons more consistency in what you get to do with it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Katakuri is just the same old thing: new coat of paint, a couple more triggers in that life, and yeah. uh, in a good spot. Yeah. You know. I keep being told different things, and when you actually start playing the matchup, it also feels different, you know, pretty much every single time. So, like, it, at least to me, kind of feels 50-50, just because Gecko Mario can put a lot of bodies on board and uh, swing pretty much every single turn. And while meanwhile, Katakori can just say, hey, I'm going to swing seven, and uh, you probably don't have that many cards in hand, uh, which means you can't really protect it. And my triggers are most likely going to, going to pop most of the things on your board. Um, and it might change when they start dropping the 8 drops. And uh, Category really doesn't have anything to answer those except for 8 drop Category. Yeah. And, um, you know, those are all factors in the back and forth. And, you know, as we start here, we only have that pudding. And uh, with Gecko Moria going first, we're probably going to see a body on board. Good old 5k. Yeah, and this is also kind of a weird matchup where Gecko Moria wants to go first to be able to get, you know, their leader effect first and get the first attack. Uh, Katakuri also generally likes to go second to get to 10 Dawn a little bit quicker. But it looks like we're just going to be using the effect to play out the the hog back. We are going to get a card back, our 2k Sindri, but our, our trash is going to be empty, which is a little bit unfortunate for Gecko. Um, yeah, I mean... You know, that's where the, the trade-off of the two Ks come, come in, right? So if you want to, like, if you're going first and you open the Victoria, the one that mills the five, um, you know, that's that's something that you can consider. But because you're going against Category and you know that it's going to be 7K swings and all these other swings, um, you probably don't want to do that. And most of the time you want to keep those on board because what ends up happening is that you're not going to swing with it and it just stays there, mm -hmm. uh, which means you can't grab it back with a uh, hog back. Uh, so it just factors. It just depends on what your playstyle is and what you're willing to risk. Yeah, and so we were able to get our our first life there to be a trigger there, be able to play our 5k body, and uh, it's also a five cost, which is a little bit tricky for for Moria to interact with. Moria is really good at interacting with four costs, but five drops are. It's a little bit trickier, which is kind of the difference between it and, and Sakazuki, where mm -hmm. uh, you know Great Eruption Sakazuki effect can reduce a five cost down to two. Meanwhile, you need a little bit something extra for, for Gekka Moria. Yeah. I mean, I've been personally pl been playing uh, Soap. I've been playing a lot of Soap. Uh, the uh, Soap Sheet? Is soap? Yeah, yeah. Playing Soap. Uh, so that can kind of get there with Great Eruption. If you want to play both of them, you don't have to. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you can play Hina. You can play a bunch of other stuff uh, to reduce these costs. But the most annoying part is that it is a 5k5. So, like, it's harder to get rid of through your effects. And uh, it is literally just a 5k. So, like, you, you just, most more often than not, you're just going to swing into it. But uh, I think here uh, we're just kind of deciding if we want to take this, and it looks like we do. Yeah, so we took the 5 and the 7, which uh, we have another 5 coming in. A lot of aggressive from this pudding. But you don't really want to go down to 3 because that puts, like, Kiko Nojo on, uh, which means that uh, it's a little bit scary for... For Gecko, for you know them getting those out for free and yeah, I don't know. That's that's like the big benefit for playing Gecko is that you have five life and that that does make quite a difference. Yeah, it does. Uh, I mean, the other big difference is that like you're getting a body on board that does something every single turn. You know, something that pops something if you want to reduce it beforehand, which we can. We can go seven into the Satori and then pop the uh, the pudding if we wanted to. And um. It doesn't look like that's what's going to happen. We're going to use the brand new and grab the uh, Suru. Yep. And Suru is just is getting better, I feel like, every set. Like, this, just yeah. to be able to have, you know, kind of how, like, Otama was in the first year of Red, uh, mm -hmm. just get things into range. Being able to be a 2K, that also, you know what, for one, give you a uh, minus 2K cost, get rid of that, some, uh, you know, get some additional removal. Uh, it just helps out a lot. 
Yeah, yeah, no, totally. I, I do agree with that. A lot, a lot of cards, or not cards, well, yeah, I guess cards um, end up being that way. You know, we saw a great eruption when Sada, uh, Sakazuki came out, mm -hmm. and we're probably going to see that with a lot of different uh, cards in the future. But yeah, so we used our leader effect on attack to play the new Perona, which is a 4-drop uh, 5k, but also a 2k counter that also has a pretty okay on play. Uh, that, that card's a little bit overstated in my mind, but it made you uh, have a discard, which ended up being the Paro Sparrow, which was interesting that we decided not to play that last turn and said put that 3 Dawn on the pudding. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that worked out. I think the thought process is that, well, one, he's already at three. So, like, mm -hmm. our Kikos are cool, and, and they're alive, and things like that. Uh, but also, you know, we said it before, or at least try to mention it, that, like, Gekko Mori doesn't really have that much of a hand sometimes. So, over time, these 5k swings are, are definitely going to be um, uh, going to be the, what we uh, will want to see. Um, if anything, all right, so we are looking at the top card of our life, putting it to the bottom there, and another 7k swing, getting rid of the hog back. Yeah, I think, uh, one of the things, what we're trying to do as geckos, you know, get to that eight dawn turn, right? Get to the, get to the a drop, and, uh, we basically are going to have, um, a better time when it comes down to, uh, these things. All right, so we did get the Gadatsu, get rid of the brand new, uh, and it's also five six again. Those five K body or five cost bodies are a little bit tricky, but we'll see. We have, I believe, we have seven Dawn for Moria. So uh, obviously, eight Dawns where you play the eight drop. So th th this turn is kind of like the weird turn for Moria, where you could play something from your drop uh, or from your trash. You can play like a like a something from there and then play another four cost. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes I like playing Sabo right now, but it doesn't mean I can use my leader effect. There's just some weird, this is like the weirdest turn for the deck, I feel like. Yeah, you know, it, it, for me at least, it gets weird when you're at seven, uh, because you just sort of like, okay, do I want to play something or do I want to play, um, uh, you know, or not even play, but use my Dawn to swing with. And most of the time you want to be at eight, just like we were saying. And, you know, like I said, it doesn't really work out that way. Mm -hmm. Um, so if anything... It uh, it's interesting that we see the Hina come out, and we do have four Dawn open, which means we can just use Rob Lucci, maybe? Okay, doesn't matter. We're probably going to use seven into face, and then pop the uh, the card that we just reduced just reduced uh, into the uh, four cost that pops two or less. Yeah, so we have... Yeah, we're going to use the seven Dawn here. And uh, so 7k attack, we're going to play probably an Absalom. We're going to put a Kuzon into our trash. And there's the Absalom. We're going to get rid of the Gadatsu there. So it gets rid of the Gadatsu. It's going to be 7 into face. And honestly, like, this has been pretty good for Sean. We're able to, you know, we have three 5k bodies on, on board right now. Yeah, uh, it's going to be hard for Katakuri to get rid of these outside of like an Onami trigger right now or something like that. I mean, even then, you know, that's banking on the fact. I mean, yeah, it's Katakuri. We did already see the life, so we probably went ahead and uh, switched what we, what we could. Uh, we only have two life here, and we're going to eight dawn? Or, yeah, eight dawn, right? Yeah. There's also, so so there was a decision there for Sean as well. If they wanted to attack with Perona first, or if they wanted to attack with Gecko first. Right. If they attacked with Perona first, and then you hit a beige to stun the leader. Right. Uh, you are very upset uh, compared oh, sure. to, like, an Onami popping the Perona. So I think that's the right way to do it. Uh, but I want to you... get the beiges out of the way, though. Mm. If, if we're getting a beige, I'd rather do it on this board state than, like, one or two Gecko A drops, right? Like, I'd rather... I'd rather do it now then. Yeah. Or rather than then. Yeah, I mean, if we had an Absalom in hand, I probably would have waited to attach the Dawn attack with Perona first, but uh, yeah. if we didn't have that, then I, I like this play. Sure. And this is probably a 7-drop Big Mom, if I had to take a guess. Uh, you are correct. Yeah. That's pretty much the play that you want to do. Um, they are going to go ahead and trash one. It's funny because the stuff that you do trash, you can just get it back or play it, play it out from the 8-drop. Mm-hmm. 
which is probably what we're going to see. You know, we just got to be a little careful of them going to one. If we play Borsalino or Re the Rebecca that's in our trash right now, mm -hmm. this is going to get rested by um, uh, Amaru, and we're probably going to be in deep trouble from there. So, you know, there, there's some plays here, and it uh, doesn't look like Sean's hand is agreeing what, what we want to do. We do see an Ice Age, I do believe. Yeah, a brand but, new and as well as a Suru. Yeah, because if they had if they had a copy of Gekka Moria, I think they'd slam it right now. Well, we do have it. Yeah, then Ice Age Moria seems like the really good play, right? Because we get to get rid of the the Lin Lin, we get into some attacks, and then uh, like again establish a really wide board. Yeah, I think Ice Age into Gecko into something that pops it would be great. All right, so we're gonna go five into life there mm -hmm. okay another five uh yeah these five case swings are trying to get some cards out of hand which is what it's happening and we're making some room for our little um eight drop that does 10 dawn worth of stuff 12 dawn maybe yeah quite a lot yeah i think or 12 13 dawn 15 dawn yeah, well, you know it's coming. Like, he scooched the cards over, right? So you know that it's coming yeah, this surely. turn. Surely it's coming. But I, I think the... And, and we're thinking about if we're taking the life or we're, we're going to counter out of it. Um, Our hand is, like, doing all right, right? It, it's doing okay as far as, like, hand size. Like, I, I don't know what our, our category is going to do for our falling turn. It could be a 10-drop, you know? Uh, but if we know that the 8-drop gecko is coming... Uh, there's not really much you can do, right? Yeah, and I'm I'm looking through it. There's actually no removal in, in the trash there, right? We see two Kuzans, we see two copies of Rebecca. I thought that Hogback was another copy of Absalom, but it it's definitely a Hogback. So, without yeah. that, uh, you're, you know, this Moria does not do as much. You could, um, Gecko into Rebecca, grab the Kuzan maybe, and then play out brand new. Yeah, uh, I think that's what's happening. E, well, yeah, brand new and Rebecca. Yep, brand new Rebecca, and then Rebecca effect. Well, you can do brand new effect, so that way you can get two other targets uh, into the trash, and then grab something else. Yeah, so... We, I guess we're not doing that? Yeah, we whiffed with brand new. Okay. Oh, yeah, we are doing that. Okay. And then, yeah, we're probably adding a Perona back to hand. Oh, we're adding... We could get a Sabo. Yeah. And Sabo would be pretty good. I mean, you want the 2Ks in hand, sure, but the Sabo would be pretty good for your following turn. So if he's pretty confident that, uh, which it looks like that's what it's happening. All right, no way. Six cards off the top of our deck. Oh, no. Wow, we whiffed twice. Oh, no. Almost looks like the same cards, too, right? It's like, very simple, yeah. Really, literally the, the same cards that we have in our trash, is we're, we're, we're looking at the top of the game. Yeah, we're, that, that was an unfortunate double cycle. I mean, six more cards into our trash are good, but those are cards we already had yes. and i think most of them we wanted in our hand and also just don't need it in trash again mm -hmm. like <laughs> it is uh not great all right so we've got the big 10 dawn for our katakuri player here so uh it's two life to one uh it might be two life to one again in a second but on the other side which is silly but it is what it is <laughs> i think uh you know, there's a couple things you can do. I don't think you're winning this turn for sure as Katakuri. So if you want to put it under the RNG gods, you may as well just play the bit, uh, the, the 10 drop and pass. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you can swing with the Katakuri as well as the uh, the big mom. Maybe get rid of this uh, Absalom and as well as the uh, Hida. But uh, we're really definitely trying... To decide what we want to do here. We still have some time. About 60 minutes in the round timer. We're, we're a little we're a little different from the actual round timer, maybe about a minute or two, so you know. Alright, so they're they're looking through it. Ten dawn again available. Uh, you're at one life, so it's like Amaru's a play, but I don't, what, I don't think Amaru Reject can get there. Um, no. No, because we will go down to one, rest the, um, the Rebecca, 
And then we know that, I, I think we know that we have at least 2k in hand as Gecko. I, I'm pretty sure we, we reveal that. Maybe, maybe I'm thinking about something else, but we know that he has at least 2k. I, I think two 2k's actually. So the rest of the hand, we have no, no idea. But you're really big on the fact that they're bricking if we're trying to go for game here. Yeah. All right, yeah, so we're going to decide, yeah, all right, 200 million volts, giving it to our Katakuri, so it is now at an 8K. We have 8 Dawn to still play with. Um, It's getting a little risky, because mm -hmm. now that you did that, you probably have to commit to it. I mean, there is a world where, like, we swing 8Ks, um, and then play 8-drop Katakuri, and then put the pudding down, but it doesn't look like that's what is going on. Yeah, so right now, again, we have a plus 3k from the 200 million volts, so uh, we are now 9k, 10k, and then using the effect. So I think this is 11. We're going to look at the top part of their life. We're going to keep it there. Well, we're definitely oh, taking... no, we're going we're gonna... to... Yeah, we're going to put it there. We're definitely taking this one, right? Yeah. I don't think there's really a world we don't. I think the, the next swing is going to be easier and or the same, so like either you take it or you don't, I feel like. And there's a trigger here. Uh, sure. Pop right. with Ice Age. Yeah. Okay. Now, what are we playing for four? Uh, it is the copy of Reject. There's Reject. All right. So it's Ooh. now another Amaru. Okay, we Amaru. have double Amaru. Wow. So okay. this is 11K going in for game. I didn't see this line. <laughs> I'll let you know now. I didn't, I didn't account for the second Amaru. Yeah. Two Amaru is insane, but I think we got out of it. That's a that, little bit more insane, actually. <laughs> and that will be it. Yeah, that's crazy. I, you know, again, I didn't see that coming. I didn't see the double Mario. I didn't, uh, we talked about the reject, sure. Sure. But, uh, you know, that's, hey, that was a really good effort. Mm -hmm. That was a really good effort for what it was. So, uh, shout out to these guys. And I, I think it was the right play because, I mean, we only had 1K left. Um, I don't, and he got a 2K out of his life. Uh, if my opponent double whiffed on brand new, I'm like, all right, there's a chance that there's a lot of cards in hand that I can't, yeah. they can't uh, combo with. So I think I would have made the same play, just the numbers didn't work out, but yeah. definitely really close. I mean, he had a pretty decent hand. I knew, like I said, we knew that he had uh, at least two 2Ks, so like that's that really helped. Mm -hmm. What helped uh, this one out? But let's let's go take a look at the second table. Ooh, what's going on here? Uh, we gotta we gotta catch up real quick. I, uh, oh boy. I, I don't know. I will double check and who who's who here. But we do have the Reju versus Anel. And yes, um, this seems to be taking a minute. Uh, but it's interesting that that Reju is still at three. Yes, and the Anel is at one. They've got the Hiori there. Not anymore. Uh, and now he's back. And Wait, yeah, now he's at one. Oh, sorry. It he's was right. Okay, now. yeah. It was perfectly placed. Yes. So, uh, very interesting. I'll go take a look and see who's who. Yeah, our now player seems to have, again, a, a pretty good hand, like wide hand at least for right now. They yeah. played the, the Vinsmoke Judge, uh, so we do have this wide board. I think they played it the previous turn. Yeah. And uh, yeah, this game's looking really interesting. That's one word for it. Very interesting. <laughs> That's one word for it. Interesting. I, uh, it's okay. All right. I think oh, it's, okay. So we healed one, and then did we get the zero cost event off there too? I think we did because we're back up. To okay. Yeah, we did. Now we're back at the two, which is super annoying. You know, in all facets. Uh, or. Wow. It's just salt to the wound at that point, I think, right? Sometimes you're just you're just the Anel player. I mean, you had to be that good to to win Nats too, so I guess we're Yeah, and just like Rage is like the deck that lets you go wide anyways, which is usually Anel's greatest nightmare, but if you keep getting the the playoff life like there, that's crazy. Yeah. Alright, we go down to zero. Uh, they have no more attacks on board, but we could use four for another... Oh, we do not. We are using the queen. We're going to cycle one, and, uh, yeah, and we still had the blocker Momo on board. Um, yeah, that's crazy. I, and I think they're saving it because I think they probably have another five-drop Momo to put back into life. Yeah. And we're also just doing Reiju things. This is, like, giving me 
red, green, law, black flashbacks type thing, you know? Yeah. Just pressing all the buttons. Really just trying to set up their... Uh, this is the one class event. I forget the name of it. But maybe they're saying you're supposed to bottom deck something? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think or that's fixing what it the is. bottom deck, yeah. Yeah, I think that's what this all is what's going on. The Jeremy 66. Looking at the top five, getting a German. Oh, and my bad. We can't we can't put Momo back in life with Momo. You're correct. I don't I don't know why we weren't using more blockers then, but I guess it's just for like a just in case. But if I was at one life, it, it must mean that they have a way to heal right off of this. Yeah. Yeah, because the the Momo only does the Wanos. Yeah, Wanos, but except for Momo. If you could use one drop, self. if you could use one drop green Momo, and then cool. it would be very cool for for Arlong and as well as uh, Yamato. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I guess it's just one of those things of like you are playing the two Ks, you can play it for two, and now it has that control, and then you can use these guys to uh, uh, put you right back at one. So yeah, I, I totally agree and totally see why they do it. All right, couple a couple quick things. One, this is our this is table two. This is our backup match for the round, so that's why we jumped into it kind of late. Correct. Uh, second thing, uh, he only looked top three for the German 66 event, thinking it was the stage because that looks three and this looks at five. So yes. they corrected it off that real quick. Uh, three cards in hand, three cards in life, and I think there was like under ten cards left in the deck, right? Yeah, there's like eight or eight or nine, I think, after they found it out. So, yeah. All right, and uh, and is reading the Momo, which I should have probably done uh, <laughs> before this. Yeah, here I'll pull it up for you, just for you, honestly. And uh, yeah, so because we need, we need a a heal. Are we go? I mean, we could go for game. We have enough attacks on board, and three cards in hand is real small, but with blocker on board. I don't know. I do not know. I mean, yeah, we have the queen. Um, we have a pretty decent board, right? We have the the big mom, and as well as Katakuri. Mm -hmm. We still have the six K swing, which is nothing to scoff at, right? A couple of non on that thing, and it's looking pretty good. Um, but I think the queen does make it a little harder for for now. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's hard to also pivot if you don't have somewhere to heal. If you mm -hmm. have something to heal, like a Yamato or something, you can maybe... I don't think there's anything to pop, but, like... Yeah, that would make it a lot easier for the following turns, and as well as you could do some damage to their uh, their their field, or their uh, character cards. Yeah, and again, our Nell player has a pretty wide hand. It looks like 8-ish cards in hand. Yeah, pretty... something like that. I mean, if we have another 8-cost uh, category... That'd be a perfect target to heal up, go to for the Shirahoshi, and just we just swing out, clear the board, and and hope for the best for our life. Uh, I don't think that's what's the case. Yeah, it looks like we're just going. Uh, you know what, five at lead and see what happens. I don't know. Eight. All right, so eight into the Niji. Yeah. All right, there goes the Niji. All right. Five and maybe the Reiju, because then three. they can just block it. Uh, This might be a Yamato play. If I take a guess, it's probably just Yamato. It's very apprehensive, though. Yes. Because if you swing six here, uh, the queen just blocks. Because you know that the only other attack is going to be... Uh... Never mind. Yeah, so... Okay. Or swing five here, sorry. Swing five, yeah. All right, we save. We're going nine into each G, or, uh, yeah, each G, which we're going to get the block with queen, it seems. Yep. That goes to the trash as well. And, and then, then we're just going to play out the Yamato. Yamato. Yeah, yeah. Which, That's what I'm saying. Like, I, I think if, I mean, I don't think you have much choice because you're not taking game. You're just not taking game with the queen there. Uh, I think I think we should have blocked and kept at one because if we were able to, we'd be at two life right now. We'd be able to get rid of the Raju with the Yamato. Oh, you effect. mean last turn? Yeah, I think that yeah. would be more important than having that blocker on board right now. I agree. Uh, are there ways to remove that blocker too? 
Uh, the ra There's one, right? No, not unless they play the the. I think it's called Liter Black Bug. Oh, I was gonna say like literally any blue card. Yeah, because <laughs> that's the weird part of these multicolor leaders. They're they're so archetypal. You, you know, you have so there, much access to. Other there stuff. are so many cards, but yeah. they are generally not run. But some I've I've played against a Raja who who played Red Rock and that like wrecked me. Uh, yeah, you know, three thousand worlds can also do the same thing. I just sure. don't know if they have the the flexibility to play those cards. Um, yeah, I mean, you're using a lot of your dawn to to play out these cards and draw and stuff like that, so it makes sense. I think like, I think up to red rock is fine. And mm -hmm. honestly, that's six dawn. You still have four to to draw cards and do other stuff. So I, I don't know. Yeah. So we have three attacks on board. Four with leader. We need to do. Uh, one, two, three, four attacks with uh, the quote-unquote two life that Anel has, the one blocker we have and one for game. So uh, we can attach some Dawn. We can play each G to get another attack if we need to. Yeah. But Do we uh, live on the stage? I did not pay attention outright. I didn't. I, didn't I looked away literally the time that he did it. Yeah, but we're going, uh, we're going 7K with the each G and... Uh, we could block this, or we can take it and then use the Anel effect to heal, but we'll see. And I'll, uh, for those who are wondering, this is evil too. Jump it in this game halfway through. Shoutouts to, uh, to Brian, by the way, for bringing the extra camera for this. Otherwise, we'd just be doing nothing. Or on a be right back screen, because you guys love that, right? That that is, we, I spent a lot of time on that screen. All right, so I made it, so yeah, I, also I, did. I told you to do it. So what? <laughs> what? Core did. You wish you told me. I, I told Core to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I told Core. Never mind. All right, we uh, <laughs> we got Shira Hoshi off of our life, so draw three, trash two, and then we trash a third card to get. Uh, another heal, so this will help us get more counter power. Honestly, like Yamato is like, uh, or not Yamato, but Shirohoshi is like one of the scariest cards that they can find because then I'm like, oh, they have so many counters in hand now. There's like, they get so much extra filter. Yeah, I don't know. So I'm trying to figure out like, what are you really doing right now? Uh, especially with Anel having now five cards in hand. You know, still have a pretty healthy hand. That's the actually that's the actual crazy part, right? They still have five or six cards in hand, and uh, we're running out of attacks. Yeah, and we're running out of time as well. We gotta we gotta kick it into gear just a little bit here. Also, what are these two cards at the bottom left or bottom right there? Is that his hand? That's his hand, right? Uh, two cards. Yeah, those, that that is his hand. Yeah, he's playing with the cards. Uh, his dawn. His right dawn, now. right? Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Who won the uh, category Gecko matchup? It was Gecko Moria. Yeah, it was Gecko. Barely. Barely. That, yeah, that was a weird one because there was such a crazy line at the end. Yeah, the double, double Maru reject almost got there. Yeah. But we are countering out of all of these attacks, not using any of the Dawn. Yeah, we used double 2k to get out of this 8k. Looks like four cards in hand for our uh, for our now player. Which seems like to be plenty. Still have the blocker up. We're still at one life, which means we're at two. And now we're swinging at the category. Which uh, we're hoping for a brick, but I don't think that's happening. I I guess so. Well, he knows that, like, if we swing at life, it's probably either going to get blocked or taken. Yeah. And then blocked. Yeah, I think it's it's fair to say that, yeah, we just can't win this turn. No. It's just not going to happen. This is this is the resilience of an L. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the thing. Like, we're talking about Katakori and, and stuff like that, but, like, an L just doesn't lose sometimes. Mm -hmm. He just sort of sits there and just laughs at you as he plays his third Yamato. Yeah, and we're just okay with that. And uh, oh, we're going a big nine into the big mom, and uh, we are going to get the block for there. Finally blocking with that thing, which all is right. all right. Yeah, all right. If we have another Yamato here, I think that's about game. We get to heal up to two. We get rid of the Raju for free, uh -huh. and uh, we can just hit everything into into life. And I don't think we will get punished for it. 
Um, very likely not. No. Uh, yeah. probably about ten cards. Yeah, with uh, with us just about hit time. Yeah, not enough for it to be impactful. No. The issue too is that we did trash a Yamato earlier with the Shirahoshi, which right. again I think would have been a would be a really good play right here, right? Sure. With two cards in hand, we get rid of the Reiju. Our other Yamato attacks into the Ichiji, and then probably go even like five eight into into life. Mm -hmm. But uh, if they don't hurry up, they are uh, they are It'll in be trouble. Into overtime, and it's going to get a little complicated from there. Oh, you have a stream judge there yes. as well, and there you go. We, we're going to go ahead and heal one, pop the raise you, and I think from here we just go for board. Yeah. So this this should be turn zero in time. I mean, we could go for face if we're if we're thinking that like time is a factor, which it is. Yeah. And that's not the case. We're going to go and swing 9 into the 7. I think that's the Yamato we just played, but... It's, it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah. Technically, it doesn't matter. All right. Looks like we're going 9 into the Judge. Sure. Then we're probably going to swing 5 into a face. Yeah. So if they don't have a 2K, like double 1K here to save it feels real bad. Yeah, and you can tell they're nervous. You gotta, you gotta make a decision though, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, that one can't attack. So two K saves it. Judge is still around. Probably have to go. Yeah, five with a Nell there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we could get out of this if we wanted to. Yeah, we could. I mean, he may as well because you are in time, but because this is turn zero, he's going to get a turn and it goes right back to him and we're going to be in the same predicament. Yeah, he does need to make a decision, though. Like, Yeah, we're, we're going to take it. All right, there it is. And uh, no pass is going to be turn one in time, two cars in hand. So his four and basically three life. Yeah, Raju. Unless it's like double Ichi, I don't like systematically. I don't think they can win here at this at this I turn, right? I don't think so either. Now, here's a Raju, I believe. Yep, we're gonna draw three cards. That sounds pretty good. That feels pretty good. One, two, and then one there. Three. We have about six cards left in deck. I don't think that's gonna matter unless they want to use their Kaya's to get there. Yep. And again, there is a stream judge there. Yeah, so we're going to look at top three. Uh, each G's there. Uh, and both both Niji's, I suppose. But Niji doesn't really do anything on this board besides just become a 1K. Probably not, no. Yeah, I think... Uh, I don't think there's really much they can do, right? There's, mm -hmm. there's, there's literally... Like, I'm trying to see what kind of plays they have, even with the Don that they have. The best they can do is maybe get rid of a Yamato or the Big Mom, mm -hmm. and then maybe take one life. And from there, he's just going to stay at one life. Yeah, so we're going to get the Niji 5 drop there. And I don't know, I think we have... Do we have 7 Don? We could maybe play the 7 drop uh, each G outright. Well, yeah, I guess. What's your goal here, though? Yeah. <laughs> All right, looks like we're going to add some Dawn somewhere. So we got, looking at two, I mean, we could try to have one of the judges hit. Yeah, into the big mom. So this is nine to eight. Every time you say judge from Reju, I always think of like an actual four judge coming <laughs> over and just like, like what are you doing? Mauling, yeah, doing something on the board. Yeah, all right. And then everything on of Dawn there into the other Yamato. That's going to have to clear it. And we're going to pass. Wrong IP. All everything. right. 
Uh, Technically, you can win this turn. You could. <laughs> you definitely could. It's not going to happen. I don't. I not don't gonna happen, dude. dislike the idea of just like putting everything, hit them down to zero with us in low time. Mm -hmm. That uh, that would get us there. So. Yeah, this is this is turn two. I'm not sure how many time how much time is left in uh in OT, but both at two life. Yeah. Uh, looks like we're gonna use Katakuri to put Yamato or the Shira Hoshi back. We're gonna go. Uh, what? It looks like oh, we're going into the judge. Okay, not not maybe understanding how end of time procedure could work out in his disfavor here if you do two damages rage you now and past turn you win sure you win if that ha oh but it looks like time was just called yeah time was just called i was trying to confirm it there but it looks like that's what the case was so hey yeah there you go we got um, there anyways got there anyways i don't think there was really much of not so much of a chance, but it was very difficult for our Ragey player to to go into uh, a, a winning turn there. Mm -hmm. it, was just, it was just too hard. Yeah. You got the Yamato, you got the Big Mom, you got the Katakori, and everything was just going to be swing at your face eventually anyway. So, yeah. yeah. Bit of a bummer. Bit it, of a bummer it, was, but... it was close. Um, I think if we were able to play out to fruition, Danielle yeah. would have won anyways. Sure. Uh, which is not an excuse for them winning in overtime. But sure. But uh, I, I think again, like that, that Anel had, you know, got enough resources. Uh, I think Raju was pretty much out. They only had a couple cards left in their deck, anyways. Sure. And uh, that was probably how the game was going to conclude, anyways. Yeah, totally. So. Um, but hey, that was table two. We only saw half of it, if that. Yeah. And table one was great, and I think we're we're trying to get ready for uh, round three. Yes, yes, we so are. Let's go go to break. We'll have uh, some data for oh, leader yes. breakdown since I uh, I have that set aside, so we'll get sure. that ready. And uh, we can we can get in early and talk about it a little bit before we get in there. For sure. So give us just a couple minutes. We'll be back with round number three, and we'll see you guys there. Yeah. All right, we are back with yes. round number three okay. of our nine round probably. One Piece Regionals for the first week of OP06 here in the English format. We've had a lot of events around the world. Most of them have finished, I think, already. But this is our first regional here in North America. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Tell me more. <laughs> you, um, you, you bought that, huh? You. <laughs> well, uh, yes. It's the first OP06 uh, North American Tournament uh, Regional, that is. Yeah. And uh, hosted by Cortese. So mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you. Didn't, Guys didn't notice here in the Santa Clara, San Francisco, Santa San Jose, Clear, Santa something area, Santa Northern San California, something sure where it is uh, sunny and rainy at the same time. Um, which is interesting. <laughs> yeah. Think about it, but I mean, I, I hear North Northern California is like that all the time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, not so northern where it's like Portland, but it's north enough to rain, I guess. Yes. Uh, and speaking of raining, it's raining re right right juice. I was cool trying to think of. <laughs> The right way to say uh, it. That's a great like, one. How how many times we've we seen uh, Raiju mm -hmm. uh, these last few rounds? Pretty much every single round we've seen it, and we're picking uh, table one and two. Yep. Pretty much for every single round. This one is Raiju versus uh, Category, and I think they're setting up right now. So we're gonna swing right over and see what's up. Um, this one's pretty interesting because it's a mixture of the stuff that we've seen before, but not this exact matchup, right? Mm -hmm. And I think the other match, just a real quick look. It's right. Gecko Mario Mirror. All right, Gecko going into round four undefeated, confirmed. Yes. <laughs> In all technicalities, yes. Uh, but we do have Jeffrey on the right and Alfredo on the left. Hopefully, I got got the names right. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if anything, yeah, I mean, this one's interesting because, like I said, we've seen so many Reju's. And uh, we already know that a lot of the room is category. And if you want to say the numbers, you can too, because yeah, yeah, we got we did the room real quick. Uh, there's just over 500 players, but Katakuri is the most popular with about 130 players, 100 Sakazuki players today, 79 Gekomorias, 46 Yamatos, 40 Reijus, despite them just keeping appearing at our top tables, 23 Peronas, 21 Utas, 15 Anals, 11 Starter Deck 10, uh, Starter Deck 10 Trafalgar Laws, and then about 40 additional uh, outside of that. So uh, a pretty good spread but it was i was not expecting katakuri to make the uh the biggest splash out of this leader breakdown yeah i mean 
I was calling it as uh, earlier before we even started, and as we start now opening up with the a pudding on category side going first, uh, that category is going to take the tournament. And, you know, a little controversial, not really. A lot of people who are on category believe it's the best deck. So, mm -hmm. you know, if they have that confidence and they have that skill, it makes sense that someone's going to end up uh, taking it all. So hopefully we'll see that. Yeah, well, I, I always say if there's 100 people in the room, one of them is going to see all the good cards in their life every time. And we've got 130 in the room. So we have that those better odds now. Yes, true and there's about 500 or so people uh playing these decks so it's uh no surprise that it might end up in the top i i will give it at least top four i think we will at least have a top four category x1 for sure i i think we'll have an x1 for sure and we are starting out with i believe the top five germa card we saw this last round um and uh unfortunate top three instead of top five and we're just we're reading cards now. We're reading cards. Yeah, there, there's a little bit of uh, specificity for how the uh, the Germa 66 looks for and what the uh, the Kingdom looks for and what their tags actually say, but you can find it off there, so being able to find a 2K off Germa 64. And then we found the stage on the second one, so uh, I think we'd rather have seen the stage and then play, uh, play it, but you know, being able to find it on our first turn I think is good enough. Yeah, I mean, it's not too bad. Uh, we are just kind of setting up for our future turns, and you don't really want to go buck wild too early with Reju, but at least sometimes you'll be able to get back that Dawn and as well as uh, uh, start drawing some cards. And we are taking that first one. We're just throwing all the Dawn that we can on this category. And what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Use three cards to get out of it? We're not going to do that. Yeah, so we're going to go down. We're going to use uh, our kingdom now. So again, a little bit of a slow start for Ofreya, but I think a little bit of a slow start from uh, from Jeffrey. No no uh, three drop of the Pero Sparrow is a little bit rough, but uh, being that hit them down to three means any of the Kiko Nojos in life will be able to play themselves for free. So not not terrible. Yeah, I mean, it's it's all right. I mean, we're I think we're both setting up for something spectacular. We know we have the, uh, the Sanji... From the pudding, so at least we know that's something playable, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, that's coming up in this next turn, but you know, I, I think it's fine. Uh, a lot of the category stuff is probably going to be four, five, six, or more. Um, so no surprise there. And I think uh, for Reju, we're drawing a lot of cards. We're swinging, I think, seven or eight, maybe. Here. Yeah, eight. So it just means we didn't find our two costs that we want to be finding. And uh, we know that the Satori was there, so we played it off of our our life by discarding the zero cost event, whose name I uh, I don't even refuse to remember. It. I just simply can't. Uh, it's it's something to do with uh, Sky Island. Yeah, right? I think it's like you cannot return. You're, you're the one who should disappear. You are the one who should disappear. Yes. That's what I tell you most of the time. I've not heard that, you know, zero times. I've heard that very often in I your presence. I think I'm gonna tell you that for the rest of the weekend. Okay. You're the one who should disappear. <laughs> Count them. <laughs> Count them now. I think uh, it's interesting that, uh, you know, these triggers all have different kinds of things, too. Mm -hmm. Just like we were talking about before, you know, the zero cost is usually the one that goes right to the bottom because it's uh, it's the trigger of zero life. It's I think one of the only only ones that specify zero life. There's only, like, a, like two in the game, I think. There's some for an L that's upcoming and as well as, like, now, but... And I know that there's sure. some with, uh, uh, what's the, there's a new yellow guy who starts with two life. I forget oh, his name. yeah, he's a little stubby looking dude. Yeah. I always forget the name. He, I'm sure chat will let us know right now. Yeah, the, the name is escaping me right now, but he, he has like some of those specificities. But yes. honestly, the, the idea I think was for, you know, Yamato, the idea, oh, I have double strike. Any leader I can hit from five to three or four to two, which then lets yes. me have this three or less life condition. But, uh, you know, Katakuri could take advantage of that pretty easy, too. Yes, I do agree. And yes, it is Vegapunk. Yes. Uh, and just like I was saying before, at least we had that Sanji to have something playable. So we got the uh, Satori and as well as the Sanji out, uh, along with that 7K swing. We did get out of it. However, uh, we are contemplating life with our Dawn here. Mm -hmm. And not not talking about the card life. Yeah, because we have, I believe, six cards. Because we went, uh, we haven't used any Dawn minus effects. Turn one was uh, using uh, the double Derma sixty six. Turn two was playing the stage and then attacking with eight. And uh, yeah, we we kind of need to start using our effects, right? 
Um, if we can. If we can. Yeah, because I think this is a four cost. Yeah, looks like a four cost. We're going to go into the seven. I'll leave you to say the actual names. Yeah, so we're going into the Vince Smoke HG. We're going to use the, uh, oh, the effect I I was, to give a... I thought I was doing something there, yeah. but I guess you actually know. I do, I do. Unfortunately. Yeah, it's it's. Yeah, I don't know any... Oh, man, you're the one who should disappear, but uh, I do I, know well, the Vince Smokes. I should be telling you that. No, I think, yeah, the, Vin, <laughs> the Vince Smokes... It's interesting because the Vince Smokes are... There's only, like, three or four of them, right? Like, Correct. At, at the end of the day, there's literally only three or four of them, so it makes sense. And this... Um, I believe that's the alt art, right? Yeah. And yeah, that's the alt art. And what you're saying, there's four, but sometimes people only play three, right? Because Yonji, uh, Yonji yeah. is the one that people sometimes don't three play. Three or four of them. Yeah. Yes. Three or four of them. I think uh, we're coming down with the the rush here. Um, we gave we that. swing that? that yeah. That? I'm surprised because I think we just swing with the leader instead, right? I guess we just don't have anything to play after, maybe. Yeah. Well, so we, we made that a 3K. So we went there, and then we went seven again to put Sanji uh, into block position, into the trash position, and we're going to pass back. Silliest way to... Okay. We got there. <laughs> I've recovered. <laughs> I just don't think there's... Never mind. <laughs> we're going to right back over to category. Uh, going to decide what we want to do with our hand. We've been trying to, like, you know set up for something right Cause yes we, we really haven't been using our dawn we had the satori we had the uh the sanji which really aren't really impactful and obviously as we can see they're gone so <laughs> you know it's uh yeah it's not too surprising so we can probably set up for our bigger cards which includes on the seven dawn that uh, seven seven drop big mom but i think we're not doing that like, i think we're trying to search for more things because maybe our hand is not the greatest yeah seven drop big mom i think would have been a fantastic card right there uh to play out uh but we're getting into this later game and we're not getting the wide board that rage is usually known for and because of that i think uh there's a better chance for katakuri to, to stabilize get to greater dawn amounts and be able to start dropping 10 drop uh big moms yeah, I mean, you know, for three life, those those are kind of the ranges that a uh, category wants to be when we start dropping those big moms. So maybe that's what the idea is as well for Jeffrey. Like, hey, I want to I want to just like not use too many things, poke here and there, keep their board clear, and then start playing these big moms because there there aren't really many answers, if any, in Reju. Right? Mm -hmm. There's literally nothing they can do about that big mom outside of just maybe reducing costs or if they play uh, red rock or not cost but uh power i think we're swinging nine to this uh each g each probably e. yeah <laughs> and just deciding if we want to pitch two cards for it you know always a uh, always the decision always the the tough decision for it we have three left as far as our done, that could be a 5k swing for one of these puddings. And I think, oh, we're actually oh, we taking to life. life. Okay, interesting. And it's just going to be a paro. Okay. Cool. <coughs> All right, so we have now eight, uh, well, eight Don minus one, so seven Don for Alfredo here. That's cool. Yeah, so if you do, like, only one minus, then we're able to next turn play Judge if we want to. But there's also, like, this weird thing. Like, if you brick with Reiju, uh, you just kind of end up with, like, more cards in hand than you want. And if you do that, then it means that you can't use, like, your four-drop Reiju to draw because you have too many cards in hand. And, like, sure, you just, you just start feeling like your deck's just not working anymore. Right. I mean... You know, we, we saw earlier in the uh, the previous rounds where Rager was on camera, right, that uh, we kind of did a lot of stuff, and then it just didn't go come into fruition. Mm -hmm. Albeit, like, you know, one of those matches, uh, we didn't see a Judge or ECG Ishi until later on. Um, so, I mean, we do have uh, one of those, a 7-drop on the board now, which we can do a little bit of damage, which is nice. Um, but honestly, you have all this Dawn, you have a few cards in hand. I can't imagine there's nothing in your hand that you can't play in order to get to a different chain, which is going to su subsequently help you draw cards to play more things. Yeah. So we're going to start with a 7k attack there and go from there. 
So it's going to go seven to five. We are, we are going to take it. No trigger out of life. I think we already know which one that is. Mm hmm. Which is fine. Maybe uh, something that we're, we're going to be playing. For the I think we turn. know the bottom card of our life. I didn't. I don't think we knew oh, that. Oh, did we one. just did we just put put it back down? I guess. Yeah, I think we did. Okay. It's probably that zero cost. Yeah, if we did know what it was, we looked at it and we we're like, we need that. It's not the best card, but the bottom card's still better. I'm going to say it again. I think you should disappear. That one hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. All right. So another seven here. And again, I think they should have five Dawn open right now. So playing an HG, uh, sorry, an EG, uh, either for or the, the leader effect. Or like the, the, the two drop into or the three drop into it is good, or even just doing uh playing it outright and getting rid of the Paro Sparrow. I think yeah. either of those plays feels good. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. I think uh again, you know, you really want to start playing stuff. So mm -hmm. that way you use your looter effect, you go into other things, you start cycling through your deck and then uh again, it, it's just that again, the thing that I was saying about flow, the flow of things. And this is kind of what that is, right? You, it's kind of, yeah. You get to do the queen effect, and I think the leader effect does trigger off of it, right? So you're effectively getting through a bunch of cards, and uh, if you are bricking or if you are doing stuff that is not the greatest or looking at stuff in your hand that's not the greatest, this is going to help a lot. Basically playing uh, the four costs just with a six-cost blocker. And it looks like we're just passing the category. No more Dawn to use, so it makes a little sense. Not something that they can really interact outside of, I think, Reject, right? Reject can uh, interact with the Fight Draw Queen. E but yeah, that's that's our, our best card. Our maybe Yamato? Our 8-drop? Uh, but e ne neither of those feel great, right? Uh, yeah. And we're going to see if we can do something on our category end, but I think our judge might be saying a few things now. Uh, maybe? I'm not sure, actually. I will double check. Yeah, there might be some discussion as far as uh, if you drew an extra card or not for the leader effect. So we'll double check. For those who don't know, though, if you're uninitiated, if you're uninitiated about Raiju, I'll read it for you. It is uh, once per turn when you, one of your Dawn cards from the field is returned to your Dawn deck, get the draw card. Yeah, but you have to... Um, you have to use the queen effect first, right? Yes, yeah, so you can't just draw three and discard one. You have to just uh, draw two, discard one, and then draw one. I think that's where, where the issue goes. Mm -hmm. Well, that's probably what they're discussing or at least uh, trying to do right now. And I'll, Like I said, I'll double check. Uh, okay. Yeah, I don't think it's it's a game loss, though. I think it's a warning. Yeah, but, it's a warning, for sure. Uh, I wonder if they're just discussing if there's a, a way to, to quote-unquote, fix it, though, you know? Yeah. I confirmed with the judge. He was saying that uh, they use leader effect first before queen resolves. And he yeah. said that you can't do that. Yeah. You have to resolve queen first. Yeah. So, I mean, it's something that could get to the end, the same end state, but... Uh, obviously, knowing all the cards you're going to draw first and then discarding from that is the better one. One entire card, that is the difference. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so my guess is they're probably heading to the to the head judge to see... How they want to handle it? Yeah. Uh, R, R is just a warning and Jeffrey is just like, it's fine. It, probably yeah. that. Probably Jeffrey's like, it's fine. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it was just a warning mm -hmm. uh, for the judge. And then also uh, just letting him know how to use the effect properly all right we do get out of the 8k mm. 
I mean, it's kind of just, I wonder what's in Katakori's hand is kind of where I am right now with this. Yeah. Like, it, it, does he really only have, like, 10 drop big moms or something? Uh, I mean, I hope he has one next turn. All right. And that'll explain a lot of things, right? Mm hmm. But, uh, you know, the board for Rage is finally starting to get a little bit wider. Uh, we only have three cards left in life for, for Katakuri, which is not too, this is pretty big. And having, like, a copy of, like, the, the blocker. I think we're in a good spot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, you swing into the, the peril, I'm probably drawing a pretty good card from that. And uh, if my hand is full of 10 drops, um, that's what's going to happen for the next few turns, for sure. Uh, and our Sanji is going to help with that. Um, you know, there's not too many threats on board. The 7 cost is a little annoying, sure. Um, uh, but this Rage you really needs to start making some plays. You know, they really need to start putting some stuff on the board. Because I, I think the biggest part of this matchup is having those swings, right? Those 5k swings, the 7k swings over and over again against Katakori. Uh, so that way they just can't, you know, roll, roll their way into a, uh, a repeated 10 drop over and over again. All right, so we're going to use a 1k to get out. We're going to go 7k with our each G. We're going to take the block there. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah, this definitely reads as like, I'm going to play a really big 10 drop, but we're going to play our own uh, large card here. It is going to be the 8 drop Vin Smoke Judge here. So discarding two cards from hand, being able to then play up to four unique 4K bodies or less. So we have the... Uh, the three drop copy of each G. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah. I always thought this was a uh, a pretty interesting card. You know, it reads interesting because uh, there's not very many cards that do this. I think there's only one other one that specify power. Mm -hmm. You can play stuff from power. But this is minus one. You trash two cards from your hand. You get to play up to four uh, Germa 66 cards or 4K power or less from your trash of different names. This kind of sets you up. For all the, like the two costs and the four costs, etc. Well, I think the four costs is a five k, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So usually just the two costs that you can play. Yeah, the two, the two and three costs. Yeah, but we, uh, we were able to get like the full one without any Yonjis, which I don't think he plays. Sure. And you know, it does ha also have an interesting activate main effect where you can rest their dawn. Not really applicable here. There's not very many like counter um, specific like dawn usage. That people play nowadays there's, there's always been the punk gibson sometimes the uh, the arrow you know that type of thing but i don't see that happening anytime soon here mm -hmm. and i think the judge is just uh directing as far as effects you guys also have to realize that these are brand new let me say it again brand new decks right yeah this so, is this is day one so yes. uh i think i think there's some leniency for it just for for reju reju has like some of the the more unique effects for this game too so yeah uh it, sure. it makes sense yeah totally i uh i do agree with that and uh that is uh one of the reasons why we do have a judge obviously for the stream but you know just making sure that all these effects are going off correctly and we do have a board now you know i was complaining for a little while that uh, reju is not building board and now we have a uh, five character cards <laughs> that all do something mm-hmm all right, so and it, this is like the issue. Like Katakuri doesn't really have a way to to get rid of a wide board like this. The and and the fact that the queen was played earlier, so that's a blocker that is also difficult for for the deck to get rid of. Yeah, for sure. It's just in a good spot. Yeah, I mean this is good. Like against Katakuri, this is kind of what you want to do. Like even if they do play their ten drops, like what does that even matter mm -hmm. when I have a bunch of attacks 8k 7k 7k 6k probably another 5k coming right um that's a lot that's a lot to deal with and it's not going to change anytime soon yeah and i i could be wrong i don't think jeffrey's really had any impactful triggers outside of the satori turn one which uh, just died yes just which did just uh it just leave gone. the game yes checked out no overtime We're gonna go ahead and pass over. Uh, can't swing with any of the ones that we uh, we did end up doing, or uh, uh, putting out with the judge there. But um, yeah, five uh, k uh, easy block with queen, and then yep, and we're just gonna big mom it up. 
I mean, why not? Because right. like we, this is probably what we had in our hand this mm -hmm. entire time. We probably have multiple of these, like, like we said before. And we're just going to leave it up to the RNG gods at this point to uh, get some triggers that actually am, are impactful. Yeah, so so Freighter doesn't have a lot of cards in hand. It doesn't have a, a lot of Dawn either comparatively, but uh, just having five cards on board, each one of them, uh, is just fantastic. Um, I would say, you know, one of the, one of the things, though, um, was interesting. I, I know this is like, I don't know, this is blasphemy for, for me to mention Digimon. Uh, probably not. Jeffrey is a accomplished Digimon player. He's okay. been playing it, that's so uh, we can we can say that for sure. That's one of the things that you know. Obviously, if you if you guys followed Jeffrey before Digimon, you know, obviously he had some uh, success there. And Judge reminds me of a Digimon like card. Like hmm. it, it feels like a Digimon card. I don't know why. Maybe it's just the art or the way that it plays and affects stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Definitely much of a Digimon card. That, that's just a random thought that I had. Yeah. Yeah, Judge. I mean, it's definitely like a lore card, and that's that's what I like about this game in general is that it uh it kind of makes effects that you know make it feel like you're in the lore, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's uh yeah, it makes it really cool. Yeah, I totally agree. You know, it's interesting. Um, I also almost feel like the opposite, but then again, I uh, also, to be honest, don't know much of the lore. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> So right now though we have uh it's one life for for Alfredo so I think I think Reject could try to help finish this game real quick we could use Reject to either get rid of the queen or take the last life whatever whichever one makes more sense I don't know what it is on the fly and then we have a 12k and then a uh, two 12k attacks coming in on a uh, on one life so I I think that would that would help out for sure so Jeffrey has like a way to win next turn. Yeah, there's definitely a way to win. Um, Reject is just one of those cards that, you know, you know it exists. And because of that, there, there's only so many ways you can play against uh, around it. So yeah, maybe and, playing another queen and there's three play. cards in life. If we hit an Onami, we get rid of the queen. If we hit something like a uh, Kiko Nojo, we have another body on board. Uh, especially since we've missed so many hits off life already. There's just such a potential for Jeffrey to have good cards. Well, we know the last two. Right, as yes. Jeffrey. So, uh, you know, that's a, that's a big up. Uh, maybe this is the type of thing that you know, for the zero cost, is going to be the last card, or maybe it's a beige for one of them. We don't know what this card is because this is what uh, Big Mom was. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to get into the point where this is going to run right into something like a Onami that's going to pop the the queen. Yeah. So we know two of these cards. Uh, so and we knew that card wasn't a great card. It was not good. Was not a great card. Uh, we might be swinging with the last card here, which is the Judge, I believe, right? So, Yeah, and we can swing with Queen as well. Yes. Do you think we should swing with Queen first? Because there's so many triggers that interact with it, it doesn't interact If, with if it. we feel like we can go for game, yeah. Because then, if this is Onami, then we're, we're in a bad spot. But I think it's probably the zero cost. Oh, it is the Amaru. Oh, interesting. I mean, that, that is something to just keep at the bottom of the life, because this basically says that I'm very likely not losing this turn. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's still a way, right? We can oh, still yeah. play uh, Ishiji. And if his hand is a brick after our, our, our queen swing, you know, that, that might be uh, one of the things to consider. Yeah, but Jeff Jeffrey's uh, definitely not not feeling the the luck part uh, at least the good luck part of the, the sure. category build right oh we're going seven though going oh my I, i'm pretty sure this is an ichiji Ooh. okay we have to play like another queen then because otherwise i think yeah that's a throw if not right I, it it definitely is yeah oh no i, I mean think... still reject reject into swing swing probably still gets there right reject into one swing gets there Oh, oh, I thought he was playing a blocker. My fault. Oh, no. He's yeah. ETG. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, that was basically what I was thinking. You know, it's uh, that's what I was basically what I, was, what I was thinking. And you already see from the body language of Alfredo that was like, wow. Yeah, there's really, reject. Really, yeah. We really got there. We really got there. Yeah. And uh, didn't. Yeah, there's. Our, our, our boy inactive but we're just gonna go ahead and uh swing anyway and then put everything on big mom yeah one two three four five six yeah not a not a shot and there it is i think reject would have gone there anyways if queen was standing 
because it would have been two 12k's attacks and the reject to get rid of the life. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that because that I think exactly what we were saying. Like we we know that reject exists, mm -hmm. and the only way to get out of it is if you have another blocker. Yeah, that's I literally the only thing you, you could have done. I think I think Alfredo probably made that decision that you know what there's a good chance that if they have reject I lose anyways yeah so let's just try to push for game if we can yeah it did not work out but I don't say I, I disagree with the play yeah I think we we just kind of got lucky with the uh, category actually having cards and of course Jeffrey did really well to keep that Amara at the bottom to make sure we have an extra life and it just worked out for him yeah right. yeah but I think I think they, they did the math you know oh and the Mac Morgan's cave still going <laughs> so, I'm kind of not surprised I guess I, I guess not I, if I had to be real honest honest uh, I'm kind of not surprised this is table two for those who don't know uh, that was table one uh, with Jeffrey winning with category reject is a very powerful card and now this is uh gecko Maria gecko Maria mirror on table two and uh, one life with uh, one dude who has three life <laughs> on our left uh, who has a bit of an advantage. But we're trying to do some pe pressure. Trying to make some pressure uh, on our Geku who has three. Yeah, I mean, we have eight Dawn and a lot of cards in hand. So uh, another Gecko is not unheard of, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think, uh, I think that's probably what's happening here. We only use two Dawn. And we have our uh, our gecko swing here, which is probably just going to be blocked. Oh, we're just taking it. Okay. Yeah, I'm surprised I'm not having the block. Uh, I think we block here because if you have another gecko, you can just get it right back, right? Yeah, yeah, we are. Okay, we are going with the block. Yeah, I didn't think that was that big of a deal. And we're gonna play our own gecko. This is the alt art this time. Yep. And uh, getting the alt art Rebecca, and then the currently standard art brand new, but you can get a, an alt art copy of that with this regional now uh, now live. They look pretty good. I will admit. All right, we're going to get a Kuzan off the brand new. Uh, not the card we'd want to, but... Uh, and then we're going to get, a, I believe, a 2K Perona off the Rebecca. And are we going to play... Yeah, we're not going to play anything from it, so... Turn is done. We're going to pass it back. We've got like a minute left in round, so not a lot of time. And uh, yeah, it seems like this Gecko Mirror match has gone on quite a, ba a bit back and forth. Gotcha. We have, let's see, four or five. There's, yeah, about a minute. I think we're only about 20 or 30 seconds off the real timer. Uh, so our overtime timer is going to start pretty soon here. And honestly, you know, the board could be worse for our left side gecko, right? Mm -hmm. It very much could be worse for st uh, staring down one life. Um, let's see. We could, we could ice age swing gecko, uh, Absalom, right? Yeah, yeah. Probably Fork. is the or even great eruption. Yeah, yeah. Rebecca doesn't do a lot in this matchup. It just means like not. I have to like you use a dawn or two, but I still get my attack in. So sure. Uh, yeah, ice age. Yeah, on the uh, Rebecca. You know, I was thinking Great Eruption. You said Ice Age. You were right. Hate yep. to say it. Well, I hate it. Generally right. <laughs> Believe it or not, generally right. Big upset. <laughs> I think you're the one who should disappear. <laughs> oh, we're going to play the Rob Lucci. Okay. Uh, it's probably the only piece of removal that we have. Yeah, we, we're a little bit late. We don't know what's in that, that uh, trash right now, but... Yeah. I know. Five Dawn to get rid of... Uh, one uh, Rebecca. Rebecca. And I guess the brand new. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Okay, so that means we have about five or six Dawn. I think five Dawn to play with. Uh, I think with a lot of cards, actually. I didn't realize how many cards he actually had. Yeah. A lot of cards in hand. Um, this is going to be a little tough for our right side player, uh, Gecko Mario. Yeah, one card in hand right now, which is... Not great. Not great. You have to win this turn. Mm, you I think, I think, have to. I think you do. I think you do. The, the most you can do is maybe Borsalino. It'd be great if you won this turn. <laughs> I, I think you have to win this turn. Yeah. All right. Yep. Taking it going down to zero. All right. Do we just go? I think you just go seven, seven, seven. 
Right? No. Uh, oh, you don't have enough for that. No, we just yeah, played we that row up, Lucci. Yeah, you can't play that. Yeah, just five and then ten. Yeah, five and ten. You don't have anything else. All right. A 1K. Oh, ha head and hands. I, th I know. The, I think the last last card in this hand is probably a blocker. Uh, maybe, but I think you still lose. Um, yeah, because just like how we remove the Rebecca, like, what is it going to do? The only card that you're going to really have some hope for is Borsalino. Mm-hmm. Because that's the only that's the only card that they can't really interact with. So if you have a Borsalino, I think you just swing five and then oh six and then um, play the Borsalino pass. I mean, if they wanted to be safe, they should have just done. They should have attacked the Rob Lucci first. I think that would have been. Oh sure. Attack into it maybe like a ten with Gecko Moria. You can still attack six into it. Oh, this is a Sabo. Uh, oh, they're going they're going the safe way. I I think they're they're splitting the difference here, and I think that's going to be. Not in their benefit. It's a Sabo, right? Yeah, it has to be with five. Yeah, it's a Sabo. And you basically just... Tra you trash two. You just... Yeah, you don't draw anything. One, two, why and you, I'm going to choose these two. <laughs> yeah, I was like, why'd you look at them? <laughs> you know, you know what they're it's, it's the rules processing. They did it right. Sure. But you take it out the deck, which is the draw, so... Yeah. But it does protect all these from being, you know, KO'd outside of battle. So Sabo's a pretty strong blocker in this deck. Yeah, but there's four attacks. Yeah, but they have two life. But zero cards in hand, yeah, so just... There's four attacks. Okay, all right. <laughs> I've noted. <laughs> that's a lot of attacks. Yeah, because you can go five, seven, nine, nine. Sure. And that's already without any Dawn Invest... With one Dawn Investment? Yes. Yeah, I think... Yeah. You lost. Okay. <laughs> It's I think I think you should have gone for game 100. Yeah, percent well, Don't, don't get me wrong. That, that's what I was saying. I mean, you have to. Okay, so now you're seeing what I'm saying before. We I said he has to win this turn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was absolutely. I just didn't think it was going to happen. But like, you you have to go for it. Yes, you have to win. You have to win that turn. All right. Uh, yeah. Block here. You okay. All right, yep, we can't do anything. Nine, can't do anything. And then a uh, sweet 19. Wow, that's yeah. a lot. Yeah, without even any cards being played. Are they going to reveal the cards? No, they just immediately put it at the bottom. I saw at least a Suru in there. Those just don't matter. Yeah, but uh, 10, 10 for game would have given you a shot. I think you were dead on board, though. Uh, Yeah, I mean, you had, like, what, six cards in hand? That was a lot, so... Yeah, but, like, with an average of them being 1Ks... And also knowing that the deck has a lot of, like, I think one card was known to be Kuzan, so that has no counter. Um, oh, yeah, there's a Kuzan, there's Rebe uh, uh, Rob Lucci, there's Gekko Moria. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't have counter, so. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was better than just losing on the spot. I this, think I think we'd agree on that. This is true. You know, also, again, we went in halfway, so it was a little little uh, difficult to, to know what the full extent was for, for yeah. that game. And, uh yeah, just uh, ended up being the way of uh, I kind of outvalued you, and I had more stuff on board, and you couldn't protect yourself. So, um, pretty cool games that we've seen so far. That was round three. Yes. Uh, along with another category win, mm -hmm. and uh, people now playing side events in front of us. So they they are. It is it is getting roomier by the minute. Yes. Before we go, we'll take a look at the character or leader breakdown, really. Um, if you want to go through it one more time. Yeah, can I can go real quick. So uh, this is the, the leader breakdown right now. We have just over 500 players today, 130 Katakuris, 100 Sakazuki, 79 Gekko Moria, 46 Yamato, 40 Rin uh, Vince Book Reiju, 23 copies of Perona, 21 of the Star Deck, 11 Uta, 15 copies of Anel, and 11 copies of Trafalgar Law, with about 40 additionals after that. So yeah, uh, pretty diverse. Uh, you knew the category was going to be the most represented deck today. I did not know that until I looked at the numbers. I, I didn't know either. I said it was going to win. Oh, okay. So it's going to win. Maybe. I don't know. Who yes. Knows? We'll find out. Yeah. It's going to be close. I think it's going to be close. This uh, representation is pretty, pretty, pretty expected. Yeah, nothing too crazy. I think uh, Katakuri, Sakazuki, and Moria taking over 50% is pretty understood. Yeah. Uh, and then the decks that we do see at like some capacity are uh, are definitely the ones, like the Tier 2 ones that a lot of people are, are trying to grind on. For sure, for sure. And I think 
But I will ask, as we get into the fourth round, uh, that uh, take a look at the character break or the uh, leader breakdown. Let us know in the comments what you guys do want to see. Maybe we can take a look at what's undefeated still. Yeah. And uh, we'll post it in the chat. And yeah, when we I say we, that is all you. Mm, That's what you're going for. Maybe you have to turn. There's, there's like. Eggmedevents.com. There's like 64 people undefeated. Yep. That's like one a second for two minutes. Like we'll see you guys in a little bit. We'll see. We are back into another round. So if you haven't caught the last few rounds, there's been a ride you everywhere. Except and, for this uh, round. Not this round, yet. yeah. Yeah, this, this time we finally break the Raiju curse. There's only about 40 of them in uh, the meta today uh, of our, our 500 or so, but... Okay, uh, never mind. I was going to say the other table might have that, so... Like, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually going to be Sakazuki versus Uta, Green Uta. And two decks we haven't seen on stream just yet. Yep. Um, two decks are that are... Uh, I was gonna say, I was gonna say fan favorite. It's yeah. more Uta. I think yeah. people who play Uta really like people Uta, who like right? Wen like Sakazuki, and people who like okay. Uta play Uta. Right? Don't it's shade just easy. People, uh, th yes, I would say Sakazuki is more of a successful deck. We did see some success with Uta, getting a lot of top placings in the last like. Uh, the last format, literally, yeah. when she came out, right? Yeah, and so, uh, yeah. it's it's been popular. It did end up winning the last Japan regional equivalent before yes. Worlds, so that it was a different card pool. It had EBO one legal, but mm -hmm. it's been a uh, it's been a really good uh, deck. I think a really strong star deck, even though it's. It started it's really just the leader and a couple cards, uh, but yeah. the the film engine is just really good. It's really uh, it's interesting because like, you know, we have been using kind of the same green cards for a while. Mm -hmm. when yeah. You really think about it. This, it's it re honestly yeah, like a drop film package, um, Wano Country stuff. That's literally that's it. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. really don't use anything else, and it's not really much different in this Uta deck, where we are playing a lot of the film package. We are playing a lot of the archetypal stuff that comes out of the quote unquote starter deck, mm -hmm. and that really just supports the leader, not so much of the deck itself. Yeah, but it's like I can't believe we're in set six, and so the supernova package is still the best package that Green has, right? Yeah, correct. Outside of film. Yes, right? but film and and supernova have this cross section, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So you're still playing. You know, you're tempted to play your copies of Bonnie. You're still tempted to play Eight Drop. Like it's uh, there's just so much overlap and uh, and then they stopped playing printing supernova cards, and then uh, Green stopped you know, topping very, very often. Yes, yeah, so it was really the era of Green Kid, right? Green Kid was everywhere. It won a couple of events, excuse me, and then, you know, that's it. Like, <laughs> we just had uh, Green Purple Dofi having that in, that in the weird sort of format too, but now it is the time of Sakazuki. And, you know, did they really need some more support? Did Sakazuki, before its inevitable ban, did it really need more support? Uh, in this one drop. No, that Tashiki is... Th the fact they can find brand new and then they can, brand new can find it, like, they sh if, if they made another one drop, it should have just been named brand new, right? Yes. Like that that would have at least fixed it. But being named Tashiki, the only bad thing about it is that people aren't playing the three-cost Tashiki anymore, but that's fine. True, true. Yeah. Um, you know, I guess it all depends. This Tashiki doesn't have 2k for a counter, so hey, that's a bit of a trade-off if you are replacing something with it, but... Um, I would replace it like that every day of the week. Yeah, it's, it's a <laughs> you're, you're gonna do it. It's it's already a pretty consistent deck, and now you're making it even more consistent. So don't blame them. All uh, right, and uh, uh, Borsalino. Borsalino. I don't know if that's like the best play because we are playing against Green. There's like 10, 10 million different ways to rest that thing, but mm -hmm. at least we're not playing against Perona, which is just itself on on its face. All right, so we have five Dawn for Uta. Not really playing anything yet, uh, but you're saying, you know what? Let's just do it. Seven K. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, finds that Nami, so they should have done six and then play the Nami to draw one. But correct. That's okay. That's fine, I guess. Seven is a good number, and it's never not going to be a good number going uh, straight into leader. So. If you guys didn't know, by the way, if you're new or uninitiated to Green Uta, she has a pretty cool effect where you put one Don underneath. That's why we're saying could have been six. And then reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a film card, you add it to your hand. If not, you get the bottom deck it. 
He basically did an extra draw. All right, yeah, and there's the Nami for three. Yeah, unfortunately, he yeah, missed out on a card draw, but uh, a potential card draw. Yeah, yeah. It was 2020. But I will say, yeah, you, you could have just uh, just swing six for, for that. But we are at two life. That is an upside, right? That yeah. is an upside. Going against Sakazuki, they're probably going to stay like this for a little bit. It's it's, it's really hard to say that they're not going to try to uh, you know protect themselves, put some more Borsalino blockers or whatever it may be, maybe even Sabo, uh, and, and defense up. But really, because we're not really playing too many things on uh, uh, Micahs, hopefully I'm saying his name or their name right, um, as Uta just yet, you know, best thing to do here is just swing with leader and then maybe a, a little bit of a hound blaze uh, uh, after that. But we'll see. Yeah, again, like, part of the reason that also makes the Shigi good is that it's a 2K. So if you use hound blaze, it becomes a 5K, and that means it's usable. It's usable after you play it, which most searchers don't usually have that luxury. You get that extra benefit from it. So Yeah, and I think that might be what's happening here. Uh, it doesn't look like it, but we did separate two of those Dawn. Uh, from there, so we're probably going to see that 5k swing. Uh, and honestly, 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 I was swinging the Borsalino. Truthfully? Yeah, I was swinging the Borsalino. <laughs> Borsalino. <laughs> Borsalino is interesting because it is just a, a simple 5k swing. And if you want to kind of reduce their hand, which Uta, I think you want to do, because there's two reasons. One, they're going to keep drawing cards. Mm -hmm. Two, uh, at a certain point, they're going to put eight drop kit. And the less cards that they have, the better, for sure. So mm -hmm. I think swinging early with the Borsalino is pretty important. And on their turn, it's still a 6K. So if they want to go into it, then be my guess. Yeah, I think the... Yeah, I, you really want to kind of prioritize removing this Nami because, yeah, that extra card draw from them can be pretty rough. Uh, so with 6 Dawn, you could do, like, Hound Blaze, get rid of it. You could also, like, Rob Lucci if you find the value from it. But it looks like our Sakazuki player... Uh, we definitely have Hound Blazing hit. I see on the far left there. Yeah, so. we're definitely Hound Blazing. There, I mean, there's just no world we just don't Hound Blaze. Sure, there might be better targets later on, but... Oh, we're going to Great uh, Eruption. Uh, okay. All right. Maybe we just want an extra draw, but we still can't Hound Blaze if we really wanted to. Yeah, and it's costing zero now. Yeah, which... I mean, there's not really much benefit between, you know, being a two cost and a zero cost, I think. For most cards that they may play or may not play, but yeah. um, you know, I, I it's really hard to say what we're trying to do with Sakazuki. All right, and, yeah, there's okay, the there Hound is. Blaze. Yeah, gave it to the Tashigi. Yep. So we're gonna probably swing that good old five. Like I said, I, I I'm more than happy to see him. Oh, we're going, we're going big eight. Never mind. We're saying Borsalino's only for blocking. And I think I would have been agreeing with you, like having like a seven and a like a six and a seven or something like that swing. Yeah, Borsalino does need to be a blocker right now. Right, and when you think about it, like the the worst they can do is rest it, which if you know again you're playing against green is possible. Then you may as well just keep it rested and get some value out of it anyway. So mm -hmm. like, and they can't pop it. So like even if they play like, something like X Drake, which you know Perona does, not not so much of Uta. Um, you know, it's still protected by that. So, very interesting to see that. We're going to see the free block, though, into the 7-drop. Wow. 7-drop Brook into... 3-drop Uta. Uta. So, yeah, that is the, the quote-unquote full combo there, uh, being able to get three bodies on the board and pretty rough to remove, uh, especially since we do see that we've already used, like, a copy of Ice Age, or we've put it into our trash, rather, and a Great Eruption last turn. Uh, that Luffy's a little bit tricky to get rid of right now. Yeah, I do agree with that. You know what's funny? Um, this came out set two. Yes. Why did I feel like this came out like set three or four? No, it was. It's it's like a year old at this point. Isn't that crazy that we were able to do that back then? With literally all these cards, like the Uta's the only new card, but yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like broken to a three drop. I, don't, I mean, kind of crazy. Yeah, and I think the issue. I mean, people started using the film engine and and used this kit eventually, but uh, the fact that it didn't really have a leader, or the fact that it was kind of like. Oh, Sanji's supposed to be a leader because instead of that Uta, if it was a three drop Usopp, like, you get two Dawn uh -huh. back. Like, yeah, that's cool, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, having having a, a dedicated uh, leader now to an archetype that was already pretty good, uh, I think has made this deck pretty relevant. Yeah. I mean, like we said, it's the interchangeability with uh, Supernovas and as well as the film package. We are going to see an Ice Age, yeah. which, hey, hey, you're, you're playing against Sakazuki. Don't expect any of your stuff to stay there.
And okay, and they're going to give the minus cost to the brook, which just means uh, Rob Lucci is coming. Rob Lucci is probably coming. We still have to swing with our leader if we want to reduce, right? Yeah, we should. I think we should have reduced the Uta, right? I think so too. I think so too. But I think his thought process was like, it's just a blocker, and if they don't block here, I'm going to remove it pretty easily later on. Yeah. So with the minus three from Helmeppo to make the Brook cost one, and the Ice Age minus five to make the Luffy cost two, that is two and one. Uh, I I guess the Brook getting rid of it is fine. I I probably would have gotten rid of the Uta, but. Uta can be removed easier later on, too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's a... Uh, it's one of those things of... Like, this is what Sakazuki wants to do and how, what it's always done. Mm -hmm. um, it's no surprise that we are now staring down uh, two 6K... Well, Borsalino 6K and a pretty much empty board after we played literally three cards on our turn. Uh, so it is a bit of a, uh, a downside for our Utsu player, but it doesn't mean we can't get back to exactly what we had before, because it only takes a couple cards to do that. I think that's what we're trying to decide, what is the most important card or the way to go about this. It's not really like super good removal as Uta. Uh, versus this board so like you know that's something to consider but if we play something like uh the seven drop into brook again don't really need a, an amazing target we just need a, a board back up and running get out of the 5k swing no free block there And, you know, sure, we're at 10 Dawn. Uh, we're going to use it for our 8-cost kid. So one of the things that we were talking about before, or I was talking about, I don't know about you, but I was talking about it. You were and, you? Yes. Okay. And um, uh, no Dofi just yet because nothing nothing is rested. So there's no, there's no reason to play Dofi. You just don't get any value out of it outside of having a big attacker. So you may as well just go into the kid and start making... Uh, our Sakazuki player spent a lot of Dawn to remove it or a lot of uh, silliness to swing into it. Yeah, and so we've already seen two Ice Ages being used. One was discarded and one was bomb decked for Rob Lucci. Uh, so normally two is where people start cutting it off. Sometimes three. Four is obviously the max, but I'd be pretty safe that there's not another Ice Age around, uh, at least inherently for this. And uh, maybe this uses kids a little bit safer, but we're gonna trash the brand new off our leader effect We have 10 Dawn to work with and uh, with one blocker for Uta uh, To be able to help save that Usa's kid. Uh, you're probably in a good spot Yeah, I mean the, the Ultra blocker can be removed pretty easily, right? I mm -hmm. mean, that's, that's uh, of course one of the thoughts that uh, our Uta player is gonna have um, And we also didn't play anything off the kit now that I remember that, right? yeah, we really didn't play anything off the kid, which is also a bummer. Mm -hmm. Could have been another Ucha blocker. Could have been uh, Killer if you play that as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a, a bunch of stuff that you could have done. So it's it's a bit of a bit of a bummer there that we're not getting the max value. And honestly, we're pretty susceptible to what, like whatever Suzuki Suzuki <laughs> Sakazuki throws at us. Yeah. So I mean. Empty swing with leader, hound blaze around, uh, to get the Uta minus one, make it cost two, and then how, do a big hound blaze to get rid of the eight drop. Yes. Do not, do not think it's a terrible play. I don't think so either, especially if we already use a couple of our ice ages. So mm -hmm. if we have another ice age, sure, ice age Borsalino, you know, bing bang boom, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, I, you know, sometimes life is just not that easy. Sometimes. <laughs> yes. Change that to an often, and then <laughs> I yes. am on board. Yes, yes, that too. I mean, we are separating our Dawn like we are going to do that. Uh, this is the 8 Dawn, I believe, so... Oh, wait, hold on, what? Hold on. Wait a second. Ah, right, Gecko. How did I forget about that card? Uh, it, it's everywhere. <laughs> yes. Uh, what are we doing, though, with our Gecko? Uh, they seem to be asking the same question. Like, I, I mean, these are the things you gotta 
think about before paying. No offense to our Sox Ziggy player. I'm very surprised that th this is uh, the line that we're taking, though. Because, yes, we're going to uh, replace our Habempo and as well as our Tashigi in order to draw basically two cards. Going to use our brand new effect first, so that way we can mill. And then we're going to go ahead and see what we can get from our uh, Rebecca. And I think this is where... I think the idea behind this is that, like, pretty much most of our cards in our hand are um, not too useful. And I think the biggest threat that we can put out is our Gecko. Uh, and it's just, we're just have to wait another turn for it to be useful. Yeah, and I, I think there's just, like, making sure the ordering is correct on the Gecko Mori effect. So we play the brand new, we're going to look at the top three, and then uh, add a Navy card, trash the rest, and then Rebecca will add from there. Sure. Which, uh, yeah, getting the Great Eruption, discarding another one. Yep. And then the Rebecca effect uh, lets us look. Mm. Hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. Okay, yep. There you go. All Definitely. Right. Maybe. S uh, Sabo? Probably. Just double checking our hand. We already have a Great Eruption in our hand. Obviously, we can't get that from Rebecca, but it's nice to note for later. Yeah, and we'll get a Sabo. Ooh, a Sabo. Okay. Yep. That's usually the target, especially with these kind of board states. Uh, we're going to play another brand new. Yeah, yeah. that's the alt art brand new. Yeah, so that's the that's the alt art that we get as uh, regional promos now. So Correct. Uh, legal today. That's and, interesting. And, uh, and then we can go, I guess, what, 8K with Rob Lucci just to get a knock on the door? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. We have just enough. You have just enough. We have a pretty healthy hand on both ends, right? We have a uh, pretty decent, probably about seven cards, six to seven cards in Sakazuki. About the same for Green and Uta. And that's really good for us that, one, uh, we haven't got our kid removed, which means if we are swinging here, um, our 10 drop Dofi is probably coming down. Which means if we have like like one one big threat for Sakazuki is relatively okay to handle. Mm -hmm. Two big threats and continuation of those are sometimes not that great. But thankfully for our Sakazuki player, we're not staring down a tight drop Dolphy this time. Alright. Well, we have nine additional dawn since we already attached one to our useless kid. If we did play 10 drop to I don't think this would be the board we'd want to play it. No, but it is, like I said, a lot harder for two different big threats uh, for Sakazuki to handle, which mm -hmm. is why you kind of want to do that. Because they're always going to be a turn behind trying to remove those, and you're going to be a turn ahead as long as you don't like lose the game through life um, by swinging with them. So, I, you know, relying on this 8-drop kid is nice and all, but uh, I don't know. And sometimes you kind of don't want to play the Dofi because you won't have that extra Dawn underneath anyway. So, yeah, it, it, it makes sense. It's just really depending on what uh, our Green Ninja player is going to be doing for the rest of this turn. Really just deciding... Yeah, all right. So a five. Which could be an easy Borsalino block, believe it or not. Yeah, and then you attack with Useless Kid into the wherever. You block with Rebecca. And then we play another Useless Kid. Uh, That's the Andrew DeWall special. I, I, I guess. you guys were back back then in uh, the Miami Regional. Uh, but uh, it was a crazy match between Red Green Law and uh, two back-to-back -back as we see it kids right? yeah i called it so it's it's obnoxious for sure you can only attack into the, the eight drops so luckily it's not like a hard lockout right yes but with a blocker out there very obnoxious yes also still no targets e to play yes afterwards yeah i Which mean three feels... Puta is like the one but and we know that we have Great Eruption for a Sakazuki player, so Great Eruption into like a Houndblaze or a Rob Lucci will get rid of the Uta. Houndblaze is obviously the better target for that. Yeah. 
for sure. Yeah, we don't have Otomo Jet Pistol anymore in this deck. Yeah. And, uh, pretty much every other deck that we've seen. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure every other deck that we've seen cannot play Otomo Jet Pistol. So no easy way out outside of all the things that Sakazuki can use to reduce, which, again, already saw some great eruptions, already saw some uh, Ice Ages. So... Uh, either we're going to try to draw into them, or uh, we're just going to have to stare at these guys and hope for the best. Yeah, so we discard the Sabo that we knew was in hand already to cycle one. And our, our Sakasuki player, yeah, definitely thinking we don't have a lot of time. We're going to Great Eruption, draw one, and give probably minus cost to, oh, one of the, one of the Eustace kids. I mean, it's six now, which is nice. Yeah. So but... that means Borsalino. Wait, no. Nope, not even Borsalino. Yeah, actually. Borsalino, yeah. You is... still need two more. And you can't get the one more with the Sakazuki, so... I mean, that's something. Yeah. Yeah, we've we've seen two Ice Ages already. One was discarded and one was used. Yeah. It was just bottom deck for Robucci effect. I mean, my thing is that, like, you still have another kid to worry about. Yes. <laughs> you know? Uh, it, like, you're, the baseline stat right now is 8. And that's a lot. I don't know. Uh, newsflash. I don't know if you knew that. But that's a lot. <laughs> it's, it's really. Let me let me take a note. Yeah, go ahead and just. Is the, a lot. Apple Notes. Whatever you do. You know? Yeah, I'd say... Kuzan would be cool. And in fact, two Kuzans will be crazy, actually. If you play like back to back Kuzan here, that would be pretty stellar. Because you're pretty much setting up for uh, a pretty big turn the following turn. And I don't think you're losing anytime soon with the Borsalino on board. Um, I mean, there is a there's a world where we can threaten these uh, green kids as well using our Gecko and our uh, Rob Lucci. Still have a leader swing as well. We're surely not going to do too much. You're going to be focusing on the, the cards you have on field. Uh, and, I mean, we have a pretty, like I said, healthy hand at Sakazuki, so there's going to be a lot of decisions to be made. Yeah, but he's got to start making some of them. He's been staring at these cards for, like, two minutes at this point, right? You've got to... It's only you've... been a minute and 52. Uh, okay, all right. I'll give him the extra. I, I rounded up the extra eight. Gotcha. Which has now expired. <laughs> right. <laughs> Unfortunate. Oh, there's Hina. All right, so Hina will now make this cost what? Two? Uh, minus, yeah, it's going to be two, right? It's minus four. Mm hmm. Yeah, so cost two now, so there's a Hound Blaze. Cool. We're going to Hound Blaze with maybe Leader? Uh huh. All right, we're going to Hound Blaze there. So one has been removed. We have four Dawn to work with. We still have the Uta blocker hanging out. All right. Looks like we're going 10 into the 8 drop. Which is expected because we're probably going to go 10 again. Yeah. Well, we can go a, a full 12, 12 with the Gecko. Sure. But that's going to be blocked. Yeah. I can probably tell you it's going to be blocked. Yeah. Big 12. Uta's probably say uh, again, the block there. Yep. You know, if you want to keep one of the kids here, I mean, that's one of the, the things you kind of expect. If you if they got it, they got it. And more, more often than not, Sakazuki does have the, the options to get rid of one of them. So that's what we did. Uh, we have now pretty much a full board, another 5K as well. And it's uh, not too surprising. Not too surprising of where we are right now. Yeah. All right. So down to one eight drop. If we had 10 drop Dofi now, this would be a very... Uh, maybe not very, but a definitely pretty, a little bit more. Turn. Yeah. Here's a uh, Borsalino 2K. Probably swing into the Borsalino if you really wanted to. Yeah. Oh, oh, swing into life. life. Wow. Oh, do do we have? Oh, the restand. Do we have the double restand? 
Uh, no. No, just the Luffy. We might see that, though. Yeah. We, we got to realize that we haven't had, like, good targets for our A-drop. And because of that, it's most likely, you know, some of the stuff. we. I think I saw a Brook there, right? Oh, okay. I thought yeah. he was passing. I thought he was passing. There, there are definitely targets in hand. They're just curious if it's worth being played or if they're just going to get removed anyways. Yes. But that is Dawn usage for those things. And if you don't, that's most likely Dawn usage for attacks. So I think you, you do play it because it is free. And the worst it is is just a minus minus 1k out of your hand. Yeah. And if you, if you believe that your hand is that bad where you need a 1k, then yeah, definitely don't do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we're deciding to play the Usopp out. Just another attack target, which usually with Sakazuki, it's it's the amount of attacks you can get, not necessarily how big they are. Yeah. And, uh, and just having him out there. He can be easily removed, but... I don't think they're going to try to uh, prioritize that removal on the Usopp, right? Right. I think we drew into a Suru. I think so, yeah. So there's some more cost reduction for removal. While we're moving our brand new to do that. Got to be a little careful. We're at five right now. Uh, which is also... I don't know if I would call it an outside. But one of the things to consider when... Uh, you are playing Gekamori in your in your deck, is that you need like I don't know three open spaces <laughs> in order to play one Gecko Maria. Yeah. So it's pretty funny. Otherwise, they're just kind of just sitting there in your hand. I guess it would be at the end of the world to swing with the Hina and then play it, but we're gonna have to take care of this A cost kid first. And to be honest, honest, uh, I think you just swing big if you don't have removal, right? Like, we're really uh, we're really making sure that we have all the cards in the world in order to do everything. And uh, we're going to have to make some plays here. Yeah, we, we have to start, start, you know, doing something. We've been just looking at the cards in hand, making sure we have 10 Dawn, but... Uh, yeah, this this eight drop kid has just been or at least these eight drop kids. Yeah, he needs to start making some moves. Yeah, I mean that's uh, I understand that Sakazuki is a little bit bit of a um, a harder deck to play than others, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, things to consider for uh, cost removal or, or cost reduction removal. Energy or uh, Dawn usage, things like that. Um, and there's some pressure here to be on the stream, too. All right, they, uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of factors for it. Uh, but definitely, we do have a stream judge on deck. They are fully aware. Don't yeah. you guys worry about it. Yeah, so we just used Suru there to give... Uh, I'm going to guess... Yeah. Okay, the double minus two here. Yeah, so this, is, uh, this now costs four. No, okay, it's a two and two. Okay, this is minus three. And this is a Borsalino? Oh, okay. oh it's a Moria. Okay, I see. So Gekko will remove uh, Hina to play... Yeah, the Helmeppo and... Meppo first. Yeah. And then Rob Lucci. Yeah, over the other Rob Lucci. Sure. Yeah, so give that minus three. Rob Lucci will get rid of... Bo okay, we're... Yeah, you have to. I think we're just making sure that we are playing and processing things. Yeah. Oh, because it has to resolve the same way. Mm -hmm. You can't. You can't. You ha I understand. I understand. It resolves at the same time, so you have to remove something else. Yeah. So we got rid of both of those, and uh, this is you know finally got rid of all the the useless kids on board. They're in a really good spot, and uh, only only issue is that we took a lot of cards out of hand to do so. We have. Looks like four or five, and uh, oh, we decide, okay, uh, and there it is. But with only one blocker, I think Uta can go for game right now. I think he loses, yeah. I, th I, think, I think Uta think, has the shot. I think Sakazuki loses simply because, <laughs> well, that's yeah. one, one reason. Yeah, there's a 7k attack, 2k, 1k, and then, I mean, four, four on Uta. Yes, uh, and then we go, I'm invincible, Yeah. right? Sure, card draw, yeah, and then another one, and yeah, and there it is. Yeah, 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 okay, there it is. Uta had it in his hand, uh, and we we got there. 
we yeah. absolutely got there. You know, the double kid, it was the second kid. Honestly, it was yeah. the second kid that mm -hmm. really that really did it because the first kid, sure, like I said, it was it was an easy, not really easy, but like it was a doable thing to do. It was a doable goal. And now as soon as the second kid got out, it was there. It was able to uh, help take game. And uh, also, Uta did Uta things. It, it really cool. sure did. And uh, so, yeah, I, I think that would just kind of show like how... Uh, yeah, just being able to have multiple swings with Uta with I'm Invincible is yep. very strong for the deck. Uh, and being able to rest that uh, Borsalino as well. Mm -hmm. Major, mm -hmm. major, major key to success, and that's blank. So that's table two. Yeah, that is table two. We uh, right, well, do not know who won that one. Oh, yeah. right. We could figure it out pretty quickly. I, yeah, I'll go back to us. Um, um, let's see, table two. Oh, sorry, table three. Table three, yeah. Yeah, uh, because that was table two. We had both players before, but it was Andy. Andy won on table three. Oh, they played Perona. No, I wanted to see that. Yeah. Well, you you had the power. Ah, uh, it's okay. It's okay. We'll see another Perona. We'll see another Perona. We will. Sure. Well, that was round four. That was. That was round four. We have uh, round five coming up. Yeah, we're about. Close to the halfway mark, we have expected nine rounds. There's a chance of eight today, but I'd expect nine rounds. Pretty sure it's nine. Um, do you have the, the leader breakdown real quick just to look at real quick again? <laughs> no. No, you, you destroyed it. Uh, yes, but on the bright side, I could fix it. Oh, you can fix it. Wow. Uh, well, let's look at the one that is our tournament here. All right, we are back, and it was a little bit of an extended break, so thank you guys for hanging in with us. But we have our fifth round, fifth round. of our first OP06 regional in person here in now sunny Northern California. It's not too bad. Not too bad. It's actually nice and cloudy with a little bit of rain. A little probably. overcast. Overcast, yeah. Overcast, a little bit of sunny. It's California, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I do. I do. So, it's, yeah. We are uh, we are entering the fifth round, so we're about halfway through this tournament. Expected nine undefeated since we have 31 going into this round. And in between this round and next, we'll make sure to know who and what is undefeated. But right now, we do have a special match. It's going to be what's at table four, our world, our, our North American champion from this past year. It's going to be Jonas. Whoa versus our uh, not world <laughs> Alexander. Alexander, Alexander on Katakuri. Mm, on Katakuri, yeah. So uh, Jonas uh, switching to Sakazuki, right? Known for winning North American finals with Anel, but uh, deciding that this is the leader for him in this meta, and it looks like they are good to go. So I don't think we've seen this matchup before. We've seen a lot of combinations of it, but not this one specifically. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, we've seen bits and pieces of both of these leaders. Um, however, if you're going to be, well, I should say, since OPO5 has released and now, if you are going to be playing either one of these leaders, you're going to be playing this matchup and testing this matchup. This, it, it is a definite, 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 um, what's the word, negative, uh, I don't know, what's the word we have like a, it's like a negative outcome... You're doing a dis disservice to yourself. A disservice to yourself. Yes. Okay, okay. Disservice to yourself if you don't test this matchup. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, you know, if we're both 4 0, and obviously we know who Jonas is, one of the best players, if not literally the best player in North America, uh, they will know exactly what to do on these, uh, or in this matchup. So, one of the things to know, I would say, as category, is that um hey you know what our our game plan kind of remains the same we pretty much need to know when to play what and mm -hmm. just be a little aggressive than we usually are um when it comes down to our leader swings and per, uh like so stuff like paro might have a little less value because of hound blaze and we also need to make sure that if we're playing stuff like okiku um that we are paying attention to both of our lives mm-hmm yeah, so it looks like we're just going to do a quick 5k attack into Katakuri, thinking about using it. What could this be? Uh, if it's something that's played for free, it's probably a quick one, but yeah, Satori. This is like the third Satori, Satori that we've seen the at the top life. of our life. Yeah. yeah. Now, is it really worth it? We did um, pitch a Okiku, so like it's not... 
you know, it's not like too crazy as far as that goes. We do see a Houndblaze, Rebecca, uh, Great Eruption. We're going to definitely take that Houndblaze. I think Houndblaze is going to be the move for that one. Yeah, and so additionally, we discard the Kiko Nojo because it's a little bit worse in this matchup when, with, you know, Houndblaze and our the new Amara uh, event, or Ama event, rather, uh, to bottom deck instead of KOing stuff for the removal. Mm -hmm. So uh, unless you play it out for free, Kiko Nojo is not fantastic. Still good, but just not not as good as it would be in other matchups. Yeah, totally. Yeah, you know, I think it's the the thing of um, just like I said, understanding what to play and when, and um, you're gonna you know that things are just not gonna stay on the board. So uh, knowing that, you just have to be a little bit careful and uh, procedural with your with your uh, character cards. And we're actually gonna go swing seven. Gonna take a really good hard look at our top life here, and then place it at the bottom. Must be a zero cost. Uh, and we're thinking about swinging with a Satori, which isn't a terrible idea. We already took him down to three, so um, our uh, four drop is now live. Wouldn't be a terrible idea to, to play after this as well. I think we have, what, three or four done open? Uh, yeah, I think we have four Don. We haven't played anything yet. Uh, no, we, we, we have three because we put one on our, on our leader, so. Gotcha. Another five there going down to two for Jonas. I think this is where we're going to sit tight for a little while, too. You know, it might be a peril, but you know that he does have a hound blaze. So if you put this peril down, it's mainly just bait. And you probably don't have any other, like, thing to use. Sure, you can probably, I think that's a, that's a pudding, right? Or yeah, there's a pudding, yeah. So oh, we okay, could yeah, yeah. we could put three Dawn and attack five with pudding as well if we we find value in that. Yeah. I mean the pair was also burning uh in your hand, right? The, yes. I mean, literally it's either get bottom decked by uh Houndblaze and you get one out of their hand, which is good. You know, really, really think about it. Or you can swing with it with this uh pudding, get a card out of their hand, and then just keep the peril for a trigger to pitch. And that's, yeah. that's exactly what's going to happen here. I, I I have a sense of deja vu. I think we've seen this like almost exact turn two. Yeah. What, turn one, turn two for Katakuri already today. It's because of the Satori, man. Mm -hmm. That's what it starts at. And we're going down to one. Yeah. Which, by the way, I think is correct. I think it's correct. You just have to be a little careful. Um, and you, it, it just really depends on what these next few turns look like as far as setup goes. Mm hmm it is it is a little scary though right i mean if you yeah. play if they play a seven drop lin lin you kind of have to give them a life at that point yes uh which is pretty scary i think the, the thing is that like we we know Jonas, and i think Jonas plays quite a lot shameless plug moderately played our podcast and you're real stretching for it, but I, I, it's fine. Get for it. We talked about we did uh, with Jonas with Jonas on the podcast on the podcast saying that he literally plays so much. Yeah, he <laughs> he does, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm in the Arizona scene, um, and there there there's almost always someone playing a game of One Piece at any point of the day. Just they they grind this game so much. Jonas is definitely part of that, and. Uh, they're just, yeah, there's a lot of One Piece in that zip code. So right. we're going to attack brand new into Pudding. That should be a pretty quick clear there. Yep. And I'll only mention this because, you know, okay. it should be obvious, or uh, it's not obvious, but it might not be obvious now why he went down to one. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's probably a reason for it and something that he's play tested for. But we'll see. Could be, you know, one of those things of, well, I just wanted to, to get some more cards and. We're gonna see what happens after, but uh, I, th I think with this uh, leader draw, uh, this Hina, and right into Houndblaze, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and bottom deck this uh, Satori. Yeah, so a little like just unfortunate with uh, what that kind of looked like. Um, I mean, I, I, maybe that's just kind of what it. he wanted though, because you could have done Hina and then like Brand Houndblaze new. the. Uh, the Sakazuki, then attack 8k, but yeah, I uh, maybe he's just like respecting what could be in life right now, or it finds more value of just like not hitting an Onami to get rid of the, the Hina, but... Right. I mean, there's a lot of triggers. Obviously, our category player knows one or two of them, and uh, you know, I... It's hard to say. It's hard to say. I think uh, it's a bunch of cards, uh, including something like the Reject, uh, that, that might... Uh, do some damage later on. So I mean, he's got a lot of cards right now. I mean, 
You could reject right now, right? Or uh, yes. You, I, I can't remember. Well, I, he, I think he needs to be at one, right? He, let me, let me double check. I can't remember. I'm pull it up. I'm pulling it up. I'm pulling it up. I'm pulling it up. Yeah, if your opponent has one life, deal one damage to him, and then you take the top card. Yeah, yeah. So you can be at like seven life and still use it. So I mean. Yeah, reject is. Yeah, reject is. Uh, pretty silly. Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> reject and swing it. Yeah, I. Don't hate it. I do not hate it in I this board. Like they have to like be real worried all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's what I'm saying. Oh, like, but he 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 went down. Oh, does he just have bricks in hand right now? Is he the bricks in hand? Which, I, I guess those dice are bad luck. Uh, uh, <laughs> maybe. Or or he just has a bit of confidence of, I'm going to set up board next turn or start setting a board. I and, uh, one one of those things to do it is probably Sabo. Like if you have multiple Sabos in hand. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a pretty decent way to do that. We're going to go ahead and minus one with uh, leader effect going five into five. Uh, we saw the Hound Blaze be in his hand as well. So that's going to be one of the things. I think the most impactful thing you could do here is just Hound Blaze go into brand new. Uh, and then uh, Sabo protect the them both and then swing into life and see what kind of damage you can do. Yeah, and so we know what this is. We do know what this is, right? And we're just gonna take it. All right, we're gonna go five into leader. All right, life three. Oh, they're thinking about something. Yeah, interesting that we're going down to two though right yeah because we don't want to give him five we don't want to put him down to one because that just puts like 200 million volts but sure another satori though spells a little trouble yeah because that's just a second body to start attacking with yeah, i'm we... guessing they wanted like hound blaze or like rob Lucci or something sure but we do have a we did pitch a 10 drop big mom uh which you know that as well as uh seven cost Big Mom are less effective, I would say. Not nothing, you know, nothing too crazy. But that or it still has some effect, and it's big, bigger board or bigger uh, characters, but less effective because he went down to zero. So there is merit to go down to going down to zero, especially with the reject. You can't get rejected uh, anymore. So I mean, that's something. But uh, there's a there's a number of ways, including reject, and as well as. Uh, uh, what should we call it? Uh, Amaru to get around blockers that he might be able to play. <laughs> yeah, we play another Hina and then maybe uh, Hound Rebecca Blazing. Here. Oh, Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca into Rob Lucci. And then we're going to play another Hina into Hound Blaze. Uh, maybe uh, if, if they have the Ama. They do. Oh, they okay. do. Okay, 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 okay. All right. Okay. That makes much yeah. more sense. So this is a new card out of the new set, which again, why did they give more support to this? It's a uh, it's a searchable Rob Lucci four drop on a on an event card essentially. Yes. So you get to return one of your opponent's two or less um, uh, cards and one of your opponent's one or less lower cards to the bottom of the deck in any order. Uh, so they're probably going to go and return the Pero. If I had to take a guess, and then mm -hmm. bottom deck the, the Satori, because you don't want to give them a 2k. Yeah. But, uh, there's... There's a thin line that Jonas is skating on right now, right? Yeah, this is tough. Uh, I don't know how he's going to pull through. Honestly, I really don't. Like, I have faith. I have full faith in Jonas. He is obviously undefeated. One of the best players ever. We all like him. However, for this specific game, <laughs> in this, this situation... It's, it's very it uphill. Is, it is getting a little tougher and tougher each time that someone uh, rests one of their dons. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Reject gets there. Amaro doesn't get there just yet, but it is something. Uh, seven Drop Big Mom kind of doesn't do anything anymore, which is good. And we sort of have to wait until 10 Drop in order to start putting some threats out. Yeah, I, I think, like, what, like... If we have a Sabo next turn, which is yellow does not have a way to answer that naturally, that helps us a lot. But, I don't know. If, and, you know, Jonas is doing the smart thing, keeping them at two life. Yeah. Uh, so they can't Amaru, which I'm pretty sure Alexander has in hand right now. 
Uh, yeah, I'm sure they do as well. So he's kind of denying literally all the things that he could do and as well as the bigger threats they can put out. Um, there is a world that if this particular category player uh, does play, they can play uh, Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt will bring you down to one. You can Amar you can Thunderbolt like Akina and then Amaro the uh, the Rebecca, give the boost, and then start uh, doing some damage to the leader. Um, but it looks like this is a 7k swing. We can um, block this, but I highly doubt that. We took a lot of life, so we're going to be using that as counter power. Uh, I actually would be tempted to block here because it just means, like, this card is, like, worthless if we hit them down to one. Yeah. So we want to get, like, something there. Um, I don't know. I mean, yeah. If we do block here, yeah, that's what I say. It's like, if we do block here, then we're going to see a Sobble next turn. That's like the only other thing I can think of because as soon as we get to one, it's going to start getting a little scary. And Sabo is going to be a good attacker and also pr protect uh, against most of the triggers that they can put out. Yeah, but and uh, so same thing like Jonas, like it's it is a thin line, but we are starting to have a good amount of attackers on board. And if we're able to like restrict what they are able to do next turn, we can be good, but. We'll see. Right. Next turn, Alexander's going to tend on, which is potentially Big Mom, but yeah, okay, yeah. Big Mom, you get to choose your own life because, you know, you're at zero. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this spells a little bit of trouble, even if we do uh, see or play a, a Sabo, because, mm -hmm. like, Sabo only protects you against really one attack. Um, and we're going to, how much Dawn? Are we going to nine? Yeah, we're going to nine Dawn, so. I mean, there is a world where we can play two blockers, including Sabo. Um, but as soon as we get to, to, to one, the other blocker is going to be susceptible to the Maru that we have at hand. So, yeah, there is also a world that we just take game. Yeah, so we're going to do a quick five. Which, uh, you know, I don't know if I... Full hall that you agree with, but we'll see. Another five. Yeah. It's probably gonna be the same thing for the rest of this turn here. We did separate our, our Dawn as well, so like I said, five drop or four drop into Sabo is a big possibility. Alright, they're getting out of it, which is peculiar to me. We only have three cards in hand. We know that one of them is a big mom. The other one's an Amaro. So we're really just coming down on resources here. Uh, this might be Rebecca into Rob Lucci. Yeah. Rebecca, Hina, maybe. Probably adding, yeah. Rob yeah, Lucci. Rob Lucci back to hand. Maybe playing brand new if we have one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Don't okay. have one. Right, yeah, and so again, I I don't know, I I don't know why they are so hesitant to taking that life because if they did, two hundred million volts would win you here for you immediately, yeah. right? We, we take those all day. Plus, we know what the trigger is, right? Or mm -hmm. no, I don't think we know this one. We know the next one because we bottom decked it or bottom lifed it. Right, kid three. All right, so we are at 10 Dawn. Jonas is at, like, how many cards do you think in hand? I think six. Six or seven, yeah. Good, sure good six. grip. If we're able to get rid of that that uh, Rebecca with Reject, I mean, we are attacking with a 12k uh, Katakuri, so not, not unlikely that will be enough for you. Yeah... Um, Reject is also still alive. Yeah. And Reject can basically just ruin Jonas's day. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Four for Reject, and yeah. then you put six down on leader, it might be enough. It's Eleven. Yeah, I mean, I... Um, and then twelve, yeah. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> yeah? I would say this because, like, Jonas Hanna was not great. I, I took a peek for where I could take a peek. Yeah. It's mostly event cards. Hmm. If we... Hopefully we can see him. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I see a sewer... Okay. Yep. Oh. Just walk over there. Okay, hold on. I might. Oh, he only swung five. Wow. 
five. Uh, he didn't do this to Shigi, by the way. He didn't pitch this to Shigi, which is interesting. Mm. Super interesting, actually. Yeah, so, I mean, three life. Uh, Alexander has, I think, three cards in hand. We're discarding yes. here. Um, three cards. One of them is Amaru. The other one was a big mom, but we played it. And the other, other two are probably just ones that we drew. Five key swings are going to do... Or go, or will probably go pretty far, honestly, just because of this low hand count. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to have to play the roulette game for triggers, unfortunately. I mean, if we have a Sabo, I think Sabo, again, goes pretty far. I've mm -hmm. been saying this, but if you're not going to... Uh, if you haven't done it now, it's uh, very possible you just don't have one. Yeah. I mean, you can establish, like, three or four more blockers, I suppose, of of having, like, uh, like a Borsalino, another Rebecca, what have you. Yeah. Oh, we're hitting them down to one. Oh, wow. Are we, are we really trying to get rid of this big mom? Uh, How? How do we do it? Yeah, I'm unsure. Um, I guess Ice Age. We had we saw Suru as well. Um, I mean, uh, there's like two great eruptions in trash, so it's less likely he has one. Um, Borsalino basically loses you the game because you need another blocker on this board. Yeah, Borsalino Sabo, I think, can't be beat. Right. Um, yes. I think that's probably what we're going to do, too, by the way. I think the, the minus was just the minus. I don't think there's a, a plan to get rid of this big mom. No, just, just to notify it. Yeah. And if he does, like, Borsalino Sabo, I think that will be exactly what oh, you need. Oh, are we... Oh, if we have to take this? Oh. I don't think they, they have to. I think he, he knows what that is. Mm. And if it's, like, an Onami, he, it just makes your, your life so much easier. Yeah, but then you... I mean... Nine with Rebecca can get there, and then additional with Houndblaze. What do we got? What do we got? Beige? Oh. Ah. Okay, so Okay, but are... but do we do... How many cards are in that hand? And... I think, there's like, I think there's like four or five. I I would definitely consider Houndblaze nine non-Rebecca. 100%. Uh, I don't think so. Okay, well, are you, let's let's. Uh, you are oh, no. not the North American champion. Oh no! If you win this, I will go over there. No way. Okay, let's see. Ten. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. Jonas. Oh, I think there's way. There's so many not good cards in that hand. There's no way. He has just enough. I think. I, I think he gets. It. He I think it's. K, he has two Ks. One K. Yeah, I think it's two K. Two K. Jonas, get over here. Get over here, Jonas. <laughs> oh, <laughs> get over he here. got no, it. Ridic this, that's ridiculous. That's he gets. That's it. ridiculous. Jonas, get over here immediately. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's ridiculous. No, that's ridiculous. No, that's dumb. That's just dumb. <laughs> Yonas, get over here immediately. We're not even going to... Let's look. Okay, here, that's well, a cool I'll, game. You, you go talk to him. Right. I'll, I'll watch the other game real quick, all right? All right, all right. All right, hold on. All right. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jonas did win, though. It was 2K, 2K, 1K to tie at 10. And uh, with Houndblaze, a 9 Don. Yeah, 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 because we Houndblazed. We Houndblazed, right? And that, that was exactly enough. That was it. I'm gonna I'm having Brian go over there to confirm, right? He uh the last card in life was beige, so brand new got the uh the beige treatment. So okay. If you didn't use beige, the brand new could have gone up to thirteen. So yeah, it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because nine with Rebecca would have would have uh, he had exactly ten k. Yeah, the Houndblaze, which I think they've played. Uh, Jonas played at least two, if not three, Houndblazes already. So I think that's fine to not, you know, play around it. But man, that game was super close. All right, Brian, what's the update? Uh, okay, so I know that uh, they just finished the, the second game. Oh, the other game on the, the other, other side, game, too? Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they just finished. Uh, no, this, you, didn't, you didn't switch it. <laughs> oh, I thought you switched it. No, they just finished. They just finished. Sorry about that, guys. Um, that was Katakuri? Yeah, I think it was, it was the same versus Gecko, yeah. Okay, Gecko. Okay, cool. 
Um, well, Jonas had um, a few cards that just didn't make sense. So uh, basically, the what happened, which I think he's gonna come by. He might, he might talk. You can talk to him if you want. Yeah, you, um, you can talk to him. I talked to him enough. Okay. Well, that's don't fair. tell him I say it like that. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna tell him immediately. No, uh, no, 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 no. Basically, what happened was that he had uh, three Tashigi, the one drop, mm. uh, one. 2k and then one brand new which he pitched i think and then mm. there was like another card but basically he had zero blockers he had literally nothing else outside of that hound blaze and um that's pretty much it yeah so he just had to go for it right yeah he was like well my hand wasn't any blockers so <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that immediately makes it so yes and he was just like i'm just gonna go ahead and go for the hound blaze and to put everything on the rebecca and literally literally went 10 to his well yeah, ten to his counterpower that had ten. Yeah. Um. So he was just like, I just had it. I had to go f go for it, and uh, he was completely right. Uh, yeah. I think the Sh Tashigi probably could have found a Borsalino. Um. Mm, right. I could have, but I don't think but it was worth it at that point. Right. It was not only worth it because he was already already at one, and uh, reject reject tomorrow can kind of get there too. Yeah. Plus, he had too many attacks. Like the big mom was just going to sit there the entire time. So, um, pretty crazy as far as that goes. Uh, yeah, he's coming over right now. Oh, yeah, okay. Here he yeah, is. We can, we can, you want to talk? You want to talk real quick? Yeah, here. I'll have I'll have him talk to him. Yeah, he'll, he'll sit down right now. Let me, uh, let me okay, see if I can... Oh, yeah. Jonas, Jonas Ibrahim. Hey, one guys. Second. Hey, Jonas. Uh, one second, I'll update your thing. What's your Twitter again? Um, Jonas OPTCG. Gotcha, gotcha. Alright, I think I got it right. Okay, so I went over there. <laughs> so, <laughs> wow, I messed that up completely. <laughs> I got it, hold on. Yep. I think I got it right, though. Is that right? Wow. Looks I, good. Yep. Okay, well, we're just going to move that over here. There you go. Now, uh, <laughs> I told chat. Because when we were, I was watching it, I was like, no, you're not going to do that. Because he called it. He was like, he's going to hound blaze the, the Rebecca and uh, swing the rest uh, for the rest of the dawn, right? Yep. And I came over there. I was like, D that was ridiculous. <laughs> and tell me tell me what, you, well, tell the chat what you told me. And what was your hand? Yeah, so at that point, my hand was triple Tashigi, triple 2K, and a Hound Blaze, I believe. Yeah. Um, I did not find a Sabo on that turn. If I find a Sabo, like, the game's, like, very, very comfortable. Yeah. Um, I did not, but I really wanted my opponent to think I was Saboing. Right. So what I was planning on doing that turn was just try to make him want to take fives so his Amaru is all of a sudden live. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what ended up happening. He ended up countering out of the first, taking the other two. Yeah. And I was able to squeeze in that last seven. Yeah. Um, I was hoping his hand would have less counter than it actually did happen, but yeah. he ended up just taking it because if you hit a trigger there, it's a lot easier to go for lethal. Yeah, because um, I, I think he knew that beige was there. He knew that beige. I, I assume it's like a beige or an Amaru yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of the time, but I can't beat the Amaru. Let's just hope it's a beige. Yes. Um, and when he, even Onami, right? Onami is the same as old. Uh, I mean, like, I still have two attackers. I still have the Tashigi, and I still have the yeah, Rebecca, yeah, yeah. but, like, as long as one thing gets dealt with, I don't really care. But yeah. if it's an Amaru, it's, like, worst-case scenario. Yeah. But when I um, saw the beige, for the most part, you probably should keep the beige in your hand if you're trying to, like, not die. Yes. Um, so I'm assuming his hand's, like, very, like, has a lot of bricks in it because mm -hmm. the fact that he used the beige, or he's either trying to mentally kind of mess with me. I mean, when, you, when you're staring down a Rebecca as the only <laughs> attacker, <laughs> like, you generally don't expect or really fear it, right? It's a zero cost attack or a zero K attacker and it's just like you're not it's whatever. Yeah. So maybe he's just like expecting me to go twelve or eleven with this Shishiki and doesn't yeah. have enough counter. Mm -hmm. Um so my my thought process was I can't win no matter what. I assumed he had a Maru, it was the reason why I didn't attack with my leader the turn prior. I left oh, him sure. at two. Yeah. Um so I was assuming his hand probably has in the Maru, let's just hope one of them's a brick and maybe two of them is like a non counter, so I can yeah. just like try to go for a game that way. Yeah. Um ended up being exactly enough, which was like so mind boggling. It, it was ten to ten, right? <laughs> yeah, it was ten okay, to ten. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um so the fact that he had two two Ks in his hand and it hit the last one K was right. just like best case. Ridiculous. That's what I'm saying. I think that was the most ridiculous part. It wasn't ridiculous that you went for the re for the Rebecca. It, re it was ridiculous that it worked. <laughs> Sometimes <laughs> you know? it does. That, that, that's, that's what it was. Um, yeah, dude. Uh, that was crazy. I, I think uh, one of the best matches uh, that we've seen all day. Literally so much uh, Raiju 
all day. Oh, I'm jealous. I want to be in the Raid Juke Gauntlet. <laughs> yeah. Um, a lot of Katakori, of course. Um, some Sakazuki. I think it's 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 definitely coming up into the undefeated matches. Uh, I think Egg is uh, working on it right now. Ooh, um, but uh, a lot of undefeated Sakazuki for sure this, this round. Um, so anything that you're not wanting to see or is everything pretty much like anything Sorry. rogue that yeah. i mean i've tested against a lot of like the sakazuki the moria the katakuri but i haven't really put in as much time as i want to against reiju or yamato yeah um it's only like the first week of the format so i can't like master everything but i spent a lot of my time just like on the big three decks and yeah. if i play against anything else i'm kind of just like free balling yeah so if that happens i'm gonna hope my intuition gets me there but more often than not it doesn't so got, got you there this <laughs> round that's for sure you know it's funny uh i, I think the the thing about it is that um you know, Sakazuki is a very versatile deck. It's a lot of tools, especially in this set that you got. Uh, the new Tashigi and the, the two cost that we saw earlier. Yeah, as that well. Murakuma was sick. Yep. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a little ridiculous that uh, you have so many tools and it only gets better. But uh, yeah, man, I, I think you'll be fine. Uh, all these Raiju players, or Raiju players, whatever you want to say, um, uh, have been very entertaining at the very least, and uh, I, I think you'd be fine. But uh, anything else before we get to the next round? Um, not at all. Uh, I know a couple of the really good players that I know, like Thomas Wynn, are ended up playing Reju, so I hope to like see him sometime in the sure, tournament. Yeah. And a bunch of people are playing Moria, we, Sakazuki, oh, we actually had him on, on stream. Oh, okay, uh, I think makes it was sense. Round two or three or something like that. Right. Let's but hope yeah, he's still winning. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I hope they get to be in a few more future matches, and maybe yeah. there be a top eight uh, interview in the future. But yeah, other than that, yeah, I'm yeah. just looking forward to playing more games. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure we'll. we'll We'll see you again. I'm sure. I'm sure. There's no doubt about Knock that. Knock on but. wood. <laughs> <laughs> Anything, Hayden, before we get out of here. Okay, bye. Okay. All right. <laughs> we'll be right back uh, with the next round. Thank you, Jonas, again. Uh, it was a sick game. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, we'll see you. Thank around. you. Yeah, I mean, it's cool to see a purple Luffy in the undefeated right now anyway, right? We're around 6, 5-0. Oh. Uh, I don't so... think at its peak I could go 5-0 oh with purple Luffy. So uh, it's yeah. uh, it's an impressive feat. And we're in OP of 6 where, again, most people wrote it off as just not viable. So we're going to see what this looks like. And uh, we're going to start off with Brian going first, which is also great because... Uh, Oh, no, never mind. Sorry. They they are. Yeah. Gecko's got no turn one Sindri. So instead, turn two, we're going to. <laughs> oh, he's just he's just he's like, uh, I'm going to do a 2K. We got we got a couple minutes left in the round. You can you can be a little bit faster. But yeah, I think uh, it's interesting. <laughs> there it is. Maybe, maybe, maybe we both know what we're trying to what we're trying to do as these players. But uh, I think, uh, yeah, super interesting, super funny so far. We're probably going to take a life here to use a leader effect. But we did already get the, I believe that's Absalom. But there's a little bit of glare there, so it's kind of hard to see. All right, and so it looks like we are considering what we're we uh, we can do. We're just going to do a, a quick 5K, and we are going to. Uh, to take that there, we're going to use our purple Luffy ability, which in case you've forgotten, you can take one card from your life to ramp up a Dawn, and we're going to use a Magellan on curve. I was going to tell you, I was like, how does Gekamoria handle a Magellan? Uh, not not as good as perhaps a Sakazuki can. So puts them down one extra Dawn, so they are at four, uh, and uh, going to pass back there. I mean, the cool thing about Gekamoria is that like most Dawn usage, you can still get some value out of it right as long as you have um a thrill of Bart's, uh target so like here you can swing seven and then still play something pretty decent and he is he is I, making I sure that. you see the I entire card love that <laughs> there's no no uh question about it yeah you got that 1k for sure <laughs> what are we playing for four okay borsalino that makes sense you know we're already <laughs> purple loopy has that effect on you honestly um mm -hmm. to feel like you're behind so being able to put a, Bor a Borsalino out to protect against, against yourself against this Magellan, Morgellan, um, is uh, pretty important. So yep. going to six Dawn already, we could take one from our leader. But it looks like we're just going to go ahead and swing six because of this Borsalino anyway, and probably to face. And like I said, it you know it's it's one of those things as Purple Luffy, we're going against Purple Luffy really, is that, uh, again, 
it, it, it just feels like you're behind because they're already play, playing this Magellan and they're probably going to play another one or something similar and it feels pretty bad. Yeah, another one would be pretty nasty. And uh, we're doing a 6k attack into... Do you think this is going into leader or into Absalom? I'm guessing it's probably... probably leader. Yeah. Probably leader. I think... Uh, yeah, probably leader. I think um, a lot of it, uh, I don't know. Like, the Absalom can come right back, right? So, yeah, it, but it's, it just depends. It just means, like, one less attack. So we're going to take one extra Dawn there. We're going to ramp up again. And we have six Dawn to work with right now. Uh, seven total. So we're going to go 7K with uh, with our um, with our Magellan. And we're we'll just going to take right, right into it. No 2K and block just yet. And we're going to play the, I think it's the Alt Art Kid. Yes, that is the five drop one. So uh, any additional Dawn minus effects, you do get that ramped Dawn back active, which is really nice. And uh, a pretty good board. Again, like Sakazuki, uh, or sorry, yeah, Sakazuki has an okay time dealing with five drops, especially Magellan, because you can use Great Eruption, Leader Effect, and then the, the uh, Hound Blaze to get rid of it. Sure. Uh, with these five drops in Gecko Moria, though, you have to get a little bit extra... Uh, removal there, and uh, you have to get some just more removal because Absalom only hits two, and then Rob Lucci only hits twos as well. Yeah, it's a little bit of a little bit of a tough situation, or at least tougher situation than you would be any other leader. But um, you know, Gekamoria, you know, they got they got some stuff. They still can play Great Eruption. They can still play Ice Age, and having a a, a two or less beat stick or two or less removal beat stick is also super useful. So I think. Uh, I think Gecko probably would like to remove this kid. You know, I, I'm probably a little apprehensive to remove this uh, Magellan right now. Mm -hmm. But we'll get there. Yeah, but this is, uh, this is a pretty good opening, I'd say, for, for Brian here. Uh, he's able to get the curve that I think he wanted, and Gecko's not really doing much of anything. Yeah, it's um, super interesting. This is probably what Brian did throughout the entire day, too, right? And uh, this is also what or Bolivi wants to do, right? Yeah, but looks like we do have our answer. So we have this Helmepo here, which we're going to be able to uh, use it to get a minus three cost on the Eustace, uh, making it a two cost. And then we have to use the uh, the effect of our leader to play the Absalom that we put in the trash and, and get rid of it for, for quote unquote free. So discarding a card from a Helmepo, trashing top two of our deck, which I think we got a hog back and a Sindri there, and then Absalom for two, putting two to the bottom of our deck to get rid of that useless kid. Yeah, pretty annoying, but uh, I mentioned it before that Gecko Mario still has tools, you know. Black, as it as it came out with uh, all these other decks like Smoker and things like that, you know, it, it really did position itself as something that um, or decks that remove things, uh, you know, and that's no different in this black deck. Uh, mm -hmm. Still has a lot of things like uh, Suru and, like I said, Great Eruption, things like that in its back pocket. And um, this is going to be good, right? Uh, where we're not ramping with Dawn with our kid every time we play Magellan now or uh, anything else. I think mean, there's a couple other things like Seven Cost Kid that we can play, uh, and that is going to be a little less good. Just deciding what we want to do for the rest of the turn here. I think the only thing we can do is... Oh, okay. Yeah, we're swinging with the Borsalino and probably the Absalom, because I think that didn't... That didn't swing, right? No, or we played that, it. We just oh, played oh, it. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I know that one of them went to the trash previous turn. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. So that was, the, that was when we got back. Gotcha. Uh, gets out of there with a Trafalgar Law, which I doubt there's going to be more than that. You know, I don't think he's ever going to get his, his effect off in this matchup anyways. Right. And uh, passing it back to Luffy. So... I think we have nine Dawn right now. Yes. So uh, if we have Kaido, that means we can play the Kaido. Uh, and we might, because we literally went ahead and said, hey, I don't really care about this blocker anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so this one, Magellan, Magellan, it's going to swing probably into this uh, Borsalino. I could be wrong, though. Uh, Night Dawn is quite a lot. Uh, we could still play Seven Cost Kid. You know, that's one of the things I like doing because uh, when you do end up using your Kaido, you're quite behind, 
right? And it takes a couple turns to get back where you were. So uh, it's possible that we might do that, but I've seen lists that don't even play the seven cost kid anymore. Okay. Uh, another really. another five cost kid here. Might be a uh, oh okay. That's a queen, which is also pretty dang good to be honest. Yeah. Because now we can draw two minus uh well draw two trash one minus the dawn get it right back in active use that active one to swing six right back into that uh, Borsalino if you wanted to. Yeah. The only issue with this is that did make us have to go down to one life, which is kind of scary. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have two blockers, and that's also a very good setup. This is like that's all I was saying. Like you can't just uh, uh, slam down the Kaido uh, and, and expect things to go well, because uh, you kind of need this little usage of Dawn before we do that. So I think we we got the two blockers out. Uh, they're really good. Uh, if we do play nine cost Kaido, the kid will uh, be a really good tool to go with it. And we have some protection, so that's not too bad. Yeah, because it looks like we're, I think we're at 8 Dawn now, so we could Gecko Moria. Uh, we, I don't know if that's Hogback or Absalon. I keep getting those two, their arts, but. It's definitely a, a Gecko Moria, and that's Absalon in the, in the drop. It is, right. no, it's Hogback, it is Hogback. Okay, there, oh no, there it is. Well, the, yeah, yeah, that was There's Absalon. One. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so this will let us clear one of these five drops with the Helmeppo once again. So we're going to get rid of the Useless Kid, because that one still has an effect. Man, you know, I, I started this round and I said, oh, these five drops, they're so tricky to get rid of. And no. uh, I've got Great Eruption on the mind. Helmeppo has been quite the good tech card for, <laughs> for Black with conjunction Gecko Moria. Uh, really getting that, that extra little cost reduction for these removals. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. It does minus uh, quite well. It is also a 3K. You know, yes. We mentioned it before that, like, uh, we don't have the benefits of these lower costed uh, characters to swing and uh it's doing pretty good and it will do pretty good if it does survive so minus three not as good as hina but it does get there for this five drop in order to play the absalom so uh all very good things for andy and really showing the powerful uh tools that gecko moria has to offer all right so i thought a little bit but he ended up using that extra 2k instead of a 1k for the khalifa and uh we're going back up to 10 dawn uh, you kind of need Kaido or something similar to it right now, um, if you want to have a, a shot in my mind, but, uh, I don't know, like, Andy's got three life, not a lot of cars in hand, you technically can get four swings in, but, I don't know, Brian, Brian's almost, uh, he's gotta be careful. I don't know, I, it's, it's one, it's one step forward, two steps back, that's yeah. what it seems like for this matchup, and, uh, you know, one of the things that we have to, you know, keep in mind is that, again, as soon as you throw down Kaido, you're going to be uh, uh, behind uh, uh, throughout the next couple turns. And I think the only upside to this is that Gecko Moria really doesn't have much of a hand, right? It, yeah. only, it only has, like, one or two cards in hand. Um, and because of that, you, we can definitely take advantage, and we can kind of plan out what we're going to be doing. Because uh, uh, it's going to be a lot easier to try to... Uh, uh, get rid of the board here because I think yeah going seven here swinging with leader into the Helmeppo might be pretty good but I don't think that's or one of the things that's that's happening here yeah it's with using yeah with using these two dons uh yeah immediately takes it out of contention there and we're we're keeping at three life what do we do then what's the play uh well that Trafalgar law is gonna see uh see us just be a blocker and then another one. Uh, ooh. Oh, okay. Okay, a page one out of the ulti. Oh, that's a lot of cards out of hand, though. Huh? That's a lot of cards out of hand, and there's a lot of. There's, there's a world we can get this queen off the board too. A pretty easy world, just the way that we that we got rid of the um, the five cost kid. It's oh yeah, going to be the same. Yep, there it is. With oh ice age and great eruption, that would and be able to uh, get rid of Rob both Lucci. blockers with a Rob Lucci. Yeah. Yeah, that's Robucci. that's pretty good. That's very good. It's probably the best play that you could have done. And well. we have Yeah, probably save oh, the nine K. Yeah, no. No, 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 we swing. Okay, we swing. yeah, we swing. It's just, just it's just a lot easier. Like after they take the nine nine K swing, it's just a lot easier to understand what we have to do for the rest of the dawn. 
And we have a lot of 5k. Oh, you don't have to do that. No, we don't. Nothing to consider for Andy. He knows. Okay. I thought I was like, okay. Yeah, that is it. All right. Well, dang, Andy. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that game goes to Andy with Gekko Moria taking down the only purple Luffy that we had in und the undefeated uh, realm. Yes. And uh, that was a quick game, too. So... <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, I don't, yeah, uh, what do you guys think? Um, what do you guys think? Uh, what do you guys think about that match? What do you guys think? Yeah, that, so, yeah, only five people sleeved up uh, Purple Luffy for this, but still, 4 one's is really five. good. Wow, that's good. Yeah, yeah, so less than, uh, what, less than 1%. Yes. Um, but, yeah, Brian, Brian's still in a good spot, though. If he wins out, he can definitely get that top eight position really good. Yeah, X1 will get there for sure. What's our other match looking like right now? Let's take a look. That one oh. is the Akekamoria versus Katakuri. So, I mean, we talk about this matchup uh, a good amount of times, you know, and, and uh, this is no different. Uh, this is table four, right? This is table four. This is table four, yes. Yeah, this is two undefeated. We still have a bunch of them. We already went through them beforehand, and these are two of them with uh, one of the Probably he's getting taken down. Yeah, we have Dale Spence on Katakuri versus our uh, versus Ka win on the the uh, Gekko Moria. Is that a manga Sabo? It is. It sure is, and that's right. a top placing uh, Borsalino and a standard art Moria. <laughs> I should put this guy's <laughs> name on just so I can put some respect on him because <laughs> there's a that's a lot. Uh, that is a lot. Yeah, let me, let me update these names. <laughs> Do you believe that is Kyle Vo? Yeah. On uh. On uh, Kekko Moria. Oh, did I? I might have look, been looking at the wrong. I think you might be looking at the wrong round. Mm, no. Oh, I was looking at the wrong table. I was looking at the wrong table. My oh, apologies. Oh, you're the one. Who... I am the wrong. Whoa. It's it happens. All the time. All the time. Yeah, so Kyle Vo is on Moria, and Brian Co is on Get the, the Katakuri. Katakuri. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, this is pretty pretty interesting, because uh, we are at one. We have a big mom out. We're also taking the last life, and we're also passing. So two Sabos, one of them being a manga. Are they both mangas? Oh my god, is that a... Are they both monsters? No, one's just the alt art. Yeah, I thought that was the alt yeah, art. Yeah, only the alt art. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Very cool. Yeah, it's it's uh pretty cool to see. Not that I <laughs> the uh maxed rarity decks when they do appear. I've seen a lot of like yellow decks that are like that, but. Uh, I guess this is one of them, as far as the black deck goes. Yeah, shouts to uh, to my my locals in Arizona, Olympus. There's a lot of full art. They they like to blind the stream on that. They're just like, this is a this is a 20 man locals. You're like, yeah, I gotta. Well, my Borsalinos just can't be gathering dust. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, we don't do that over here in Vegas. We we get an alt art leader and call it a day. Mm -hmm. We we're we're good, man. The, they haven't raised minimum wage. What do you want me to tell us? <laughs> what do you want me to tell you? All right. So, uh, yeah, those two Sabos are pretty rough to deal with for yellow, right? You can't reject them because they used to use the effect. You can't use, uh, like, 10 drop Big Mom means they just block both your attacks. I don't I don't know how Brian can can really answer this scenario with zero cards left in life. Uh, Yeah, me neither. Yeah, that's um, rough. But we'll watch. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll totally watch. I mean, there's a reject here, right? Reject is good to remove. Yeah, uh, you get rid of one life. But uh, then you need something else in order to swing with it. If you have, like, four drop rush Katakuri, and then you reject. That is pretty much the only way. That, that, is, that is it. Okay, another ten drop. And we swing into one of the characters yeah this gets five drop block and then you swing into probably the luchi don't probably the the rob it doesn't matter it doesn't matter wherever you go yeah sabo sabo blocks oh we oh, no oh we no come on oh, no, don't no, do this no, no, don't no, do it no, to no, the boy no 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 no
I think the okay. Yeah. All right. So zero cost event twice. Yeah. Beige. There, yes. There are maybe outs. No, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just putting. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Right. He, he sees the writing on the wall. And uh, it's only out is physical violence. Okay. <laughs> I somehow don't agree with you. Uh, that is not not for this one. <laughs> not for this one. But end yeah. up Kyle taking this one with uh, Gecko Moria. Uh, yeah, that was a interesting half of a game or fourth of a game. How much, however much we saw, but uh, um, very interesting. A lot to see. A lot to see as far as their uh, the max rarity deck basically, and almost max rarity at least, and. Um, yeah, that was round. Uh, that was round six. That was table four, and Kyle got that one with Moria. Correct. So, two Moria wins and Purple Luffy and Katakuri losses so far. Yes, and um, yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot, pretty stark difference. Uh, no surprise, honestly. Not uh, no surprise from the first like two to three rounds that we we're all watching with all that variety, and now. We're right back to what the, the format is representative, yeah. which is uh, Gekamoria, Katsukuri, and Sakazuki. And yeah. uh, no, I don't think there's any undefeated that is like a dark horse now, right? Uh, I not not in my book. Uh, we, we have like Reiju. Do we have yeah, Yamato? And uh, we have Reiju, Yamato, and Star Deck Uta. Uh, Purple Luffy is they... Purple Luffy's out. Did they win, though? That's, that's the real question. Uh, let's see. Let's see. So Purple Luffy lost. We saw Brian get second with Katakuri. And we have our Yamato player lose to Amori as well. So Unlucky. Uh, yeah, we chose the two fastest matches for that round, unfortunately. So well, we have uh, some unavoidable downtime. We also have Table 8 just finished. Kyle took it with uh, Sakazuki. There is still one Raiju, right? Yeah, there's still a Raiju. They're still playing right now. Yeah, I see that. And then there's one Anel. There's one Anel, correct. So and those, are, those are kind of the two. Oh, wait, they're going against each other. Let's see. Jonas won on table one with of Sakazuki. Of course. I see the Uta. Okay. So and the three decks. Well, two decks are going against each other that are, like, out of the normal realm, kind of. It's funny to think that Enel might be one of that. How many Enel did we have? We had one left. Uh, no, 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 total. For the day, I think we had 15. Oh, okay. So I think that's, like, 3%. I don't know why I thought it was, like, 40. Mm, no, yeah. If only there was a graphic that we could bring up to show everyone what that looked like, Brian. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we should probably look at that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, where is it? There we go. So 130 category. Uh, 100 uh, Sakazuki. 79 Gekamoria. 46 Yamato. Only one of them. One of them uh, was uh, undefeated, which we're going to find out if that's the case right now. Uh, 40 Reiju. Uh, 23 Perona, which it sucks that we, uh, we dodged so many of them. And 21 Uta. 15 and now 11 starter deck. Law, so um, pretty much what we thought was representative. Not great conversion rates for a lot of these decks. Pretty much everything below the top three, and that's uh, you know two things. A little bit of bias of okay, these are the top three decks. That's what I'm going to play. And the other two, the other side of it is that these three decks are very good, and you know uh, the the decks below it are good, just not as versatile and probably not as tournament ready when it comes down to trying to make it undefeated throughout the entire day. Yeah. I also want to say that Justin, uh, Justin, who's been the winner of the last two core TCG in-person regionals, is currently 5-0 as well. He's playing Moria. Uh, just won on table five. So nice. he's in a, a really good spot. I I've, I told people today this weekend too. Like whatever he's playing, if he's here and he's, whatever he's playing, that's going to win. Like he's got, sure. he's got the 2-0. He's got the three-peat down uh you know close close in uh in heart so maybe he can get there yeah how many uh categories do we have undefeated uh we started this round with i believe like four right yeah like four or five and so uh but we can no we only had i think like two we oh. had two yeah gecko mori and sakazuki i think were nine oh. and then two categories so oh. we uh one of them lost as we saw and then another one 
is fighting for their life against, I believe, also Moria. Huh, okay. No, against Sakazuki, so... Gotcha. A little bit more of a shot, maybe. Interesting. Okay, well, I mean, bummer. My prediction's not there, so Gekamori is my second prediction. I'll gladly take that. I don't know... I mean, Sakazuki, with, with Yonis on it, eh, Sakazuki is definitely an option as well. But uh, I like Gekamori more than Sakazuki, so I'm going to go with that. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, interesting character breakdown. We are just finishing round six and we're gonna go into round seven pretty soon here i'm gonna go back to us where um i think we still have about six or seven minutes in regulation and then it's gonna be overtime so we might have a might have to take a bit of an extended break yeah Maybe get some I, food walk around a little bit i, I think, think they just reported all of our undefeateds into this one so right. of, of our eight we have one two three sakazuki one, two, three, four, Moria, and one copy of Anel. I think that's what's left. I think, yeah, our, our so Reiji no player Katakuri? left, our Katakuri player uh, lost, and our Uta player also lost. Dang, that's crazy. Yeah, so seven, seven black decks and a single copy of Anel. All right. I Bummer. believe that is, I believe, yeah. So one, two, three Sakazuki and four Moria and a Nell. That is what we have left. Maybe we go for the Nell next turn, or next round. Y yes. I think that's, that's, I think that's yeah. And then we, we dodge the mirror matches. <laughs> yes, also. <laughs> Correct. I think that is the play. So uh, we are going to take that break. And unfortunately, it's going to be a little bit extended just because we just, we picked the two matches that finished first. But all of top eight is finished right now. Our top Mostly. eight tables of undefeateds yeah. are finished, rather. And we have, what, five minutes left in time, I think? Something like that. That's I mean, right. our, our timer is about six minutes right now, so I would imagine it's about five minutes over there. So in total, about ten minutes until the next uh, round is paired, most most likely. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it as the rounds are finishing and as well as we get towards the end of the tournament, uh, it's going to be a little bit faster because a lot of people have been dropping. A lot of people right now in front of us are, are doing side events. Yeah. And uh, that's not going to change. So, um, yeah, we can take a little bit of extended break. Let's see if we can get some food in us or something. Yeah. And uh, we'll have uh, three more rounds left with us. Uh, since we have the eight people, it's guaranteed at this point. So, yeah. Uh, we'll just see what that looks like. So, we're going to take our tiny break and we'll see you guys in, I'm going to say, 10, 15 minutes. Yes. And I'm going to press the buttons, Brian. All right. All right. Outro. Okay. All right, we are back with round number seven. I appreciate you guys being patient since we did have to end just a little bit early on that previous round. But we do have round number seven of eight. It's going to be uh, four copies of Gekko Moria, three copies of Sakazuki, and a single copy of Anel that's left undefeated today. Right. I thought we had nine rounds. Uh, what did I say? Eight. Two Eight? Yeah, sorry. Nine rounds. Three okay. more rounds from where we're at. My apologies. Three Nine rounds, rounds. Including this round. Yes, because yes, we have eight. So Correct. My apologies on that. Nine. So uh, there is no top cut either. It is Swiss until one undefeated. As far as we know. Yes. Yes. As far as we know. We did. There was the introduction of the new time rule of 30 minutes instead of 35. But as far as I know, there wasn't any top cut. We can. Yeah. I'll double check. We'll I double guess check. We, but uh, we have not heard anything. And most of the time, these are all always like Swiss only. Yeah. Yes. But so, it makes I sense guess, with the new 30 minutes if, if it does. Yeah, we can we can confirm on that. So. For sure. But for this round, we do have Kyle Vo on Gekko Moria. I think we've seen him one time before. Yes. And Kelvin on uh, Anel, which is the only Anel in the tournament that is undefeated. Yeah, left undefeated. And we had 15 Anel players enter the tournament today. So not that many, especially not compared it. to how it was in OP05. Yeah. I mean, there is a bit, definitely a shift. Uh, with all the Gekamoria and people also pushing themselves from an L to category, right? That's the other thing. So I, I think that's the two biggest factors, Gekamoria being um, the premier pick, uh, you know, getting away from Sakazuki, and as well as uh, category being, mm -hmm. uh, being the yellow pick instead of an L. So uh, yeah. we do have these guys set up, and uh, as soon as they get the go-ahead, I'm sure they're going to go ahead and start. Um, but, you know, we uh, we also, you know, when it comes down to it, this matchup is interesting uh, where, um, I'm distracted by the dog, uh, where Gekko Moria has a lot of attacks every single turn, right? Well, not so much a lot of attacks, but they have attacks pretty much every other turn. And because of how Enel is, um, 
you know, they kind of want attacks every yeah. single turn. They want the, their triggers. They want to get down to one eventually. Yeah. And uh, Gecko Mario kind of helps with that. Yeah, and uh, real quick, so there was there was a uh, Purple Luffy last round. It uh, lost to the Gekko Moria, uh, and it looks like we're just using the uh, leader effect to... Are we playing Absalom? We don't have to use the on play effect if we don't want to. Yeah, it's just a body. But we can we can pop the uh, do kit, do cost, right? Yeah, I don't think it's worth uh, losing the cards in our trash though. So. Oh sure, 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 sure. Uh, and then yeah, the Hiori would put the Shirahoshi to the top of our life, which is one of my favorite things to do with that deck. It helps you out so much. Gets your your starting hand. We're getting rid of a Shirahoshi, and I think it's an Onami. Uh, I can't. Uh, Chat will let me know. I'm that, sure. Yeah, that kind of looks like it. Does that help? Does that help? E yes. Your your reassurance is all the help that I need. Uh, you know, that kind of looks like it. Going back to Anel, uh, we do have uh, our four, first four costs on the board of probably very many. Uh, and we are swinging seven with Anel. Few cards already out of hand. None of them are going to be the Thula Bar targets. Um, that Helmepo, is that a 2k? Helmepo is a 2k. Uh, Helmepo is a 1k, so yeah, so gotcha, Suru okay. and Helmepo just means you've got a lot of 1 and 2 cost cost reduction cards to play off Moria, 8 drop later in the game, but we're going to use the Sindri to mill the top 5 off of our deck, which is quite nice, mm -hmm. and uh, since we ended up uh, having this done, we can still do like a 7k attack and then play something from our trash once again, so. Yeah, I mentioned this card before, you know, it's a 2k. And it's one of those things that are traded off as a 2k. Yeah, sure, you want them in hand to defend yourself with. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of very useful 2ks. And this is one of them where early in the game, if you really want to set up your trash, you can just get rid of this 2k out of your hand and get and get some targets, which we did. Yeah. And, uh, also very nice to get that, uh, that little 4 cost to, to get a 2k back or really anything else that you need. Yeah, Hogback is really good for getting some card advantage. I like using it too, like pitching a Gekko Moria from hand early if I have the chance to. Mm -hmm. And then uh, just get it back with Hogback. Yep. Just makes it so, uh, you know, my plays next turn, it, it just it gets Gekko out more consistently. For sure. There's another 6k swing. We're going to take it. I think we're going on a 4. Uh, didn't take the first 7k, so it makes sense. Kadatsu is going to immediately come down. Yes, yeah, definitely at 4 to use, due to Kadatsu getting that. Uh, that KO there and uh, passing it right back. Yep. All right. Got some more Dawn to uh, to play around with as Gecko. Gonna continue to use our leader effect. Have four up as well. Discard a. Didn't I miss that one? Unfortunately. Uh, Rob Lucci. Oh, it was a Rob Lucci's alt art. Yes. And then we're gonna play our Absalom to see if we can uh, maybe pop one of these two Ks. I mean, there's there's a few of them here. Or two cost, sorry. Yeah, so probably the the okay. Nami. Oh, okay. I guess that's to prevent that from getting put back into life with Momo, which makes sense. Yeah, I guess that that's something. I mean, Nami is uh, gonna be attacker, but like on the crackback, she's easily dealt with. Yeah. Right? The longer that the uh, the two cost, the other two costs on the on the field, it's it's a little worse. All right, and we're gonna play another Absalom. We're not gonna use the effect, which is fine. And uh, now this is kind of like where Anel tends to have issues, right? We have, you know, one life already, and we don't really uh, have a great way to get rid of all these 5k bodies. Yeah. We're also attacking, which means we don't have another Godatsu. Like, we can pop one of them with Godatsu and then swing, but it uh, doesn't look like that's the case. And we're going to go ahead and tap Oliver Dawn for a Shirohoshi into Katakori, mm -hmm. which is uh, pretty good. You know, that's, I mean, yeah. that pretty much accounts for one of the attacks. We're going to go ahead and cycle through our hand. And uh, the only downside of this, the only downside of this is that Gecko is now going to that, that A cost turn, right? Yeah. Uh, now, because now we're we're swinging fives, we're we're making them use the Sirihoshi. Uh We're gonna go ahead and discard two, and then we're gonna see what these other two five K attacks are gonna look like. And it looked like it was an Anel and maybe two Anel, at least one at seven drop. I'm not sure the other card. Yeah, it was one seven drop. And yeah, it's still at least two more attacks present. Three if you want to count the Sindri, and nine whole Dawn to play with. So. Oh, is that a... Oh, they just showed it. I looked away. Seven drop big bomb, maybe? Yeah, it was seven drop. Okay.
All right. And what else we got? Yeah. So like the issue here is that I don't think like what you can maybe get rid of Gadatsu. Uh, you're at three life is Kyle, one life is Kevin, which or Kelvin, which means Yamato next turn gets rid of a four cost very easily and gets your heal back. Yep. Uh, yeah. We're gonna use the gecko. Yeah. A few targets in here. Uh, Rob Lucci is a good one. We can reduce the uh, Gadatsu. Mm -hmm. We're going to get rid of two things. Yeah, so we're going to use the Helmeppo minus to get the uh, Gadatsu down to a three cost, I guess, and then just get rid of it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because... Well, no, two cost. Yeah, sorry, minus, minus three to make it a two cost. Yes, you're yeah. right. And then we can get... Oh, no, we can't. I was going to say, we can get rid of the Onami, but no, we can't. No. It's interesting that we did get rid of the Anel and 7 cost. I feel like we would have kept at least one of those. Yeah, it just might just dictate what's in their hand. I think Yamato is pretty clearly the best card to play next yeah. turn anyways, so... I do agree with that. We can get rid of one of these five, uh, four costs. We're going to swing into the rest and then uh, pass that turn and basically let the deck do the thing that it needs to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, just deciding what we're doing. Going to take a look at our trash because that is pretty important for gecko players. Uh, and you know, as their opponent, you're gonna have to figure out or you know pay attention to uh, what they've used and what they haven't used. Uh, just doing a little bit of Don Mass. And we're going to go ahead and swing with the good old Katakuri. He's going to take that one happily. Too bad the Rob Lucci is not in the rest, or else that would have been the next best thing. There's another 6k swing. Well, maybe not. Yeah. The Helmepo first. I don't know if... I'd have to see if they had another Helmepo in their, in their trash. If they didn't, I would maybe consider just leaving it there. Yeah. And smartly also not attacking before using the uh, Yamato. Because mm -hmm. now you can make sure you get a four or less for sure. Because I think he's at three, right? Yeah. He's at three, so. And we're, oh. we're just going to keep hanging out. And I, I think the reason for it is that we have another Yamato in hand. We make it so if they play another four drop, which they, you know, Gecko loves playing four drops. You get rid of it again sure. and get another nine drop Yamato out. Okay. Well, we were looking at a four cost leader and as well as uh, this Gecko. Mm-hmm. We're going to swing 10 to the category, which is a great number. Yeah, I believe that is where that's headed. And one sec. Hey. All right. Oh, oh, oh. That's right, Vision. All right. Stream is getting corrected on the, the camera side, but we do have, uh, we're going to use the effect there with the Sabo drawing to pitching to. And it uh, looks like we're going to attack Absalom into the Nami, unsurprising. They did get rid of the 8-drop Katakuri, which is a little rough. And also with the Sabo, even if we play Yamato next turn, we just simply can't get rid of it. Uh, yeah. That's one of the, the, the harder points of this. And, you know, just in general, there's just a lot to deal with when it comes down to the late game of an L. These Yamatos coming down over and over again is not going to help. Yeah, and then we play the hog back. We get a Absalom back into our hand. And uh, I think we're going to pass back from there. So this could be worse. Yeah, Yamato is still probably a pretty good play. Yeah. Uh, if I had eight, anything, right? so. Yeah, if I had eight drop Katakuri, I'd be real tempted to get rid of their Morio with it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would probably... It's hard to say. I mean, like, being at one life... Sure, 
that's kind of where you want to be, but at the same time, it's not like super, super safe. Mm -hmm. um, they play the hotback after the Sabo, right? Yeah, so we so could we can... play Yamato and, and get rid of it now. Yeah. I think you do swing five. You can swing six. I mean, you can swing six into uh, one of the Absalon. Mm -hmm. He only has, what, two or three cards in hand? He can block the Sabo if it really wants to, but that, I highly doubt that's going to happen. Uh, and this uh, Yamato can just match our um, Gecko as well, just to get another card out of hand. So, I mean, like, you don't have to swing at their face. Um, you know that the easiest way is to play the 9-cost Yamato and just pop the uh, Hodgeback. That's just going to be the big, the, the easiest play here. You don't have to really think about it too much. Yeah, so I think we're, yeah, we're swinging six into the Absalom. They're gladly going to take it. We're going to go another nine cost Yamato there to get rid of the hog back. Correct. Yeah, he get the heal there. And, and then, uh... He played it after. Yeah, he played it afterwards. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, confirming that with Judge. And then we have another nine cost, uh, 9k Yamato swing. Either at the 8 cost Moria, just to get a card out of hand, or the block, or at the leader, but then that kind of takes it away from doing another Yamato next turn to get rid of a 4 cost. Yeah, a bit of a hard place, because you don't have, really have the Dawn commitment to, to make sure that this Gecko is out. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's it's a bit of a bummer, because if you swing a life, just like you were saying, the, the next Yamato is not going to be as effective. No telling that there is going to be a next Yamato, so... Uh, maybe that's one of the reasons why you could. Uh, the other part of it is that, like, on the crackback, Kyle can just put a lot of non on, on their uh, gecko and just swing at the Yamato. So that's probably what uh, Kelvin was thinking about. You know, I, I don't want to be in that, that position, so I'm just going to go ahead and pass. All right. And, I, you know, I, I'm actually pretty okay with not doing that because it just means to me that I can start attacking with my Yamatos again next turn, and they, you know, they have the same kind of issue where they don't, really have great ways to attack me or, or pressure me if they have to hit my leader. By the way, did we not put a life? We did. He just took it immediately from that Sabo. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I thought the Sabo was uh, supposed to be active, but it looks like he just, yeah, he just took it out. All right, Kadatsu there. We're going to use Great Eruption, On make one, one of these cost uh, seven. Hello? Then probably Ice Age. No, okay, no, so... Give me the... the um, yeah, Rob Lucci with El Meppo, minus three. I don't think that really... I don't think that's a big enough, unless he... Did he do gr double great eruption? He uh, must have. Oh, uh, yeah, he, he did double. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, So that's four, plus the minus three. That makes it a two cost, and then Rob Lucci takes it out. Yeah. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I was, I was making another One Piece players don't use dice joke. Because I put those in the middle of the map, so mm. that way you can indicate yeah. <laughs> these, these cost reductions, and uh, all the players have placed them. Yeah, they've moved, they've moved the dice. You can see them in the back up there. Like, uh, You know what? I'm going to use this platform to make a PSA. Please use dice. Just use dice. I mean, just for, dice. Help out your fellow commentators Thank and your, you. your watchers and your viewers. It helps us. It helps you. It's just a good habit to have. Yeah. All right, 10 Dawn to work with. We've used two Yamatos already, so a third one is getting increasingly unlikely, but is possible. We can use it to uh, get rid of the 4-drop Lucci once again, and then we have like a 5 and a and a 9 swing, but oh, that's... Oh, they're thinking. All right, that's 8, 1, and 1. They, yeah, they probably don't have another Yamato, which is perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we... Uh, I mean, there's still Katakuri. We can put our Shirahoshi back into our life, too. That's a pretty good uh, pretty I'd, good trade-off. I'd be really tempted to Katakuri one of their Morias, though. Cause yeah, that's the other thing. That's definitely the other thing. Them having a two and us having... Like, they've had two Morias. We have two Yamatos, so... Yeah. I mean, that's nine there, though, so... I don't know. Right, six at lead. Uh, yes. There's a 2K. I mean, yeah. Okay, Shirahoshi. Yeah, okay. That's pretty much what I was thinking of, right? You know, I think what what the idea is is that like, hey, I'm at basically three life, and my hand is better than theirs as far as hand size. Um, and yeah, he's gonna do this, which we can defend pretty well. Yep. There's a Onami there. 
and uh, we have a category to uh, to do it on the cap quackback. Uh, maybe we have another category too. That's another thought for this wall in turn. Yeah, I just where we are in life. I can't believe they made Moria nine k. Like it's it's silly. It, it can yeah. trade with this nine drop Yamato, and it it bullies this eight drop Katakuri. And I mean, just nine is really good. Nine is really good. Yeah. If it, if it was eight, it would be a little more understandable. Yeah. But especially since like a lot of the time their their cost corresponds with their attack, so mm -hmm. like eight and eight k. But uh, not this time. Man, we're gonna take out that Yamato with that eleven uh, k swing. Yeah, I'd I'd still. Maybe it's the wrong play. If I was in this position, I, I would really highly consider using the eight drop for the for the one of the Morias though. Right. I think it would have been a good a good get. Is this a uh, Absalom play, or to discard one Absalom play one? Yeah, build the two. Uh, we're probably just playing Perona for the discard one. Or no, uh, for the minus three cost. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, uh, Rob Lucci then. Yeah. Because minus three, we Ice Age as well. So I think this is zero cost, right? Uh, which one? The category. Uh, and zero cost. Yes, yeah, because we we ice age too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Kyle's been getting the good, good cars, good numbers, and uh, is this having a great time at uh removing? Oh yeah, one less card. Yeah, yeah for the absolute. Yeah. Um, Thank you, yeah. Stream Judge. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Shout out to I uh, the the thing about it is that you know this is where it gets out of hand for a gecko. Yeah. Right. It's supposed to go the other way around for now. It is. You know, you have a lot of seven costs. There's a lot of eight eight costs on the board. A lot of Yamatos you have to deal with. Right. Sometimes it's seven costs an L, but it, it just isn't going that way because it, it like Gecko Moria because of its uh, leader effect it puts them so far ahead. And the fact that you can build a board, remove things, just like how Zakazuki does, just in a different way, um, makes it super, super viable. And, you know, we see here, we have two 8-cost 9Ks and two, well, one, uh, a 5K, 6K, and a Perona that just is there, you know? like <laughs> Yeah, I, you know, usually it's the other way around, and I was known for making these larger bodies. Oh, a 7-drop Linlin. I think you trash one. Uh, if you trash one, I think you can go for a game pretty easily. But... Yeah, I think you trash one. I think that's why you do it. But if they, if they are, if they are them, if they have the, the blessed, you know, you should disappear. You're the one who should disappear. You know, beige and stuff. Then yeah, that's what I'm saying. It could be very dangerous. But we're deciding. You know what? We can end this next turn. Let's see if that's true. You know, I would like is a, a Perona. A Perona play. Oh, Perona. beige off the top, getting the rat, uh, getting the uh, the stun on one of the other Morias. Unlucky. A little bit unlucky. Uh, also five, four cards in hand maybe. All right, so another nine here. We have one Dawn open for the potential Elthor. We're gonna get out of it with. Uh, I believe that's a. You're the one who should disappear in a two K. So that's five K to get out. Oh, my favorite card. 7k. Uh, it is reject, so we get to draw a card. Which doesn't mean much. 5k and no additional counter, and uh, Kyle is able to get that one. Yeah. <laughs> Taking out the only Anel who is undefeated. Yeah. Unfortunately. And with two more rounds to go. Uh, yeah, Kyle is taking it, and we're. Uh, we're just uh, we're just going through the the train of Gecko Moria Sakazuki, and a little bit of uh, well actually no no more category actually so it's yeah just Sakazuki and and, and Gecko Moria is the yeah. rest yeah and uh, I think our other game did finish and they and they they the they, they just they kick just, the they camera don't care about my stuff to the ground oh boy okay well hey well, we can go back to us yeah um, yeah I mean like I said it really just came down to the fact that. Uh, just kind of got out of hand, right? Yeah. Gekamoria played two different eight costs. That put out a lot of stuff. It also removed the things that uh, Anel perceives as threats for people, mm -hmm. for, for their opponent. Got rid of the nine drops. Uh, got rid of the eight cost category. Yeah. 
And Big Mom didn't do anything. Yeah, and and the fact you know? that again, like these these Morios are eight cost nine Ks, they can they can pressure those Yamatos. If they weren't if they were eight Ks, you would have to invest on, which means your yeah. your plays that turn were a little bit less. Yes. Um, you know there is a trade off. Moria had like one or two cards for most of the game, but when half the cards you play are from your trash anyways, it doesn't matter as much. For the most part. And uh, yeah, they were able to get it done. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Just like. I don't know. They're just staring down the the ridiculousness that was the uh, the stuff that Go Gekko Mario is putting out. Um, yeah. But yeah, no more now. No more now. As far as undefeated goes, there will probably be one or two of them, maybe in the top sixteen, depending on how these guys finish. But uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. if Kelvin wins out, he's definitely there. Uh, if he goes uh, one one in the next two rounds, I'm pretty sure he's there too because his losses would be in round seven or eight and nine. Oh sure. So just good tiebreakers there. Uh, I'm looking through the rest of it. It looks like we have two Morias and a Sakazuki uh, currently through to the other side to, okay. for undefeateds, and then our fourth is a match of either Sakazuki or more uh, Sakazuki or Moria. So gotcha. Two more is one Sakazuki for sure, and then maybe a third, a third or second for for that one. For Sakazuki? Yeah, yeah. Either a third copy of Moria or, or a second copy of Sakazuki. Oh, okay. So yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. So black decks. Yes, yes. We are we are in the meta. Yeah. We I have mean, figured it out. Honestly, fine because you know I always like black decks. I always like Rob Lucci and Smoker and um, uh, a bunch of other decks that are just you know have really cool black cards. In yeah. The e show right. Mm -hmm. Like it's uh it's nice to see some difference. Obviously, uh, Sakazuki has been terrorizing the meta since it came out in OPL five. And, yeah. Um, it's gonna be no different until it gets banned. Honestly, mm -hmm. you know, if you really want to do some damage, uh, take a look at Yunus, Right. He's, yeah. He's all, still undefeated going the last two rounds. Yeah. It? He's he seven zero. Our other players are uh, Kyle, who we just saw. Yeah. We have Spencer uh, from Table 2, who's undefeated. And then we have uh, Kyle Hendrickson and Justin Sayes uh, playing on Table 4. Justin's the the two-time back-to-back core, core TCG, TCG regional. offline regional winner. <laughs> uh, he won both the one in November and December last year. Uh, and this is the la the next one since then for in person for yeah. for core. So he's trying to go for the triple threat. He he is going for the, the triple back threat to back to back. And uh, he's still in the running for it. Just has to win three more games. That's pretty crazy. That's pretty crazy. I think overall it has been an interesting day. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I said, it's nice to see black uh, be on top. And um, yeah, I mean, it's it, I I still am a little flabbergasted to to, to know that there's so little. You know, but yeah. I guess after seeing this round, I, I think I think Katakuri is just just the better yellow deck of the two right now. Right now I think yes. it's yeah. Yes. But so uh, we'll, we'll uh, yeah, and also have a chance. I know that EBO one gives the deck some new life as well. Sure. Whether it needed it or not is up to uh, the, no. the beholder. There's but... so many complaints about the deck. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> now we can complain about the other decks. Yeah, yeah. Spencer, Spencer Shockness. Yes, that is great. If you guys want to see the pairings, you guys can see them right here in the Twitch chat. There, you guys yep. go. Sure, 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 sure. But uh, yeah, that was that was round seven. Yeah. So we have two more rounds after that. Do you want to go over any stats real quick? No, uh, I mean, we already went through most of the stuff that we talked about already. Yeah, because these are these are what uh, the leader breakdown was for the day. 130 Katakuri, 100 Sakazuki, 79 Gekamoria, 46 Yamato, 40 Reiju, 23 Perona, 21 Uta, 15 Anel, and 11 Trafalgar Law from Star Deck 10. Yes, and of course, the uh, I think I still have it here, the TAC Regional. Uh, and its top 16 was very interesting. A lot of diverse decks. I'd imagine it's going to be pretty similar. Maybe a little bit more Gecko. Maybe a little bit more Sakazuki. Maybe a little bit less Whitebeard. Yeah. Less Whitebeard for sure. Although the one of here, but the three Gecko Moria, three Katakuri, two Sardek Law, uh, two Reju, two Sakazuki, two Yamato, which uh, we haven't really seen too many of those in this top tables here. Yeah. Uh, one Whitebeard, one Perona, and of course, da 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 da. Whitebeard won the entire thing. Uh, I would love to see that in the coming format, but we will see. I mean, like, like I said, I, I said it earlier. Red is in this perfect state to uh, basically uh, be the premier rogue color, mm -hmm. and uh, 
it's interesting again from going all white beard all day or half the day half the charts right yeah to uh now it's a it's a rogue color and it's it's just just there it, it is just there so we'll we'll see what we look like for this one uh if you guys want any of those deck lists they're going to be on my website eggman events uh and it should be updated i'm going to say i'm going to say tomorrow for this top 16 when we get it oh i know it's crazy brian's rolling his eyes at me you know but tomorrow is tomorrow is sunday <clears throat> yeah for dropping for dropping deck list yeah okay in the next 48 hours <laughs> uh, it's probably better yes right, we'll see okay. we'll see what that looks like but sure. uh Let's see. Do you have in the next two hours? Uh, probably not. I will. I will say probably not on that one. Probably like, not on that. The one. Next two hours. You're yeah, crazy, that, that that one's add a add a crazy. four in front of that. We're done. I don't even do these. Or behind that, yeah. Oh, I, I guess I did do the one for my event last week. Or but it, it the uh, I, I don't even do these things on this scale. No. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're yeah. crazy for that. You're it crazy. Is. You know we're still working, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know we're still here, right? Well, how how do you think the the Oceana events got on the website? I don't want to think about yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> that ended yeah. like six hours ago. This has been a six-hour stream. Yeah, do you the should, math. You should, you should take a nap, nap or something. The hardest working on the uh, Well, I guess so. I don't know about that. I guess so. I guess so. The most tired man. Actually, I don't know. Orange Samurai works really hard, too. There are a lot of other content creators. Man. Yeah, he does. I need to... He, he's, got the, he's got the Twitter game. I don't got that. No, I don't either. I'm like the laziest, honestly, when it comes yep. to that kind of stuff. I would like to contribute, but this is my... My version of contributing. Yeah. So hopefully be entertaining and be around for what I can do. Yeah, but there's a lot of content creators here as well. I know uh, Michael E. Cross is here. I know uh, Strongest Wizard is here. Yep. There's there's probably others. We just we've been stuck in this Awaken. these chairs. Awaken. Yes. Yep. Ernesto is here as well. Yeah. Yep. And uh, All good guys. Yeah. A lot of a lot of good players. Yep. So, yeah, anyways, cool. it's getting loud now. So. It is, it is. So we're gonna take a break. Uh, round number eight, which is our second to last round for the day, is upcoming. Uh, again, we have one last check before. Yeah, table four is still playing, but two Morias, one Sakazuki, and then either a Sakazuki or Moria on table four is gonna get the W there. So, right. Give us a minute, and uh, we'll see you guys in round number eight. For sure. Two more rounds. Two more rounds. Press one. the button, Brian. You said one. Two said, more, two more one rounds. Round. One more round after round, round eight. Please press more. the button. You Please get more. me out of here. A little bit of uh, technical difficulty. If you're tuning in again. Please refresh if you can. This is round eight. Round eight, yes. The Core TCG Santa Clara, uh, California, one piece, offline, official regional for OPO6, the first one in NA. And we're going to right into it with Jonas. And uh, Justin yep. is playing Sakazuki in Gekamoria. We're going to actually just go right into it. Yeah. As soon as someone does refresh the page, they'll see that we're starting. Yeah, yeah. So we are uh, into this, uh, you know, quote-unquote top four. We have four undefeats left. Three Gekko Morias and Jonas as the lone Sakazuki. Uh, Jonas was our North American champion during this last year. And Justin is our Core TCG offline regional champion, winning the last two ones back-to-back. -back. So, uh, honestly, both really solid players. Yeah, like, this is like the Clash of Titans at this point. Um, and uh, we're starting out, I believe, with the Tashigi one drop, two of them. Mm -hmm. oh, very, little, very good. It's a little crazy now. We're getting a little crazy. Yeah. And uh, getting a 2K Virgo, uh, pretty much the new add to the deck, just because we can't get Tashigi off Tashigi. So, uh, luckily, Navy has no uh, no shortage of targets. Yes, for for these 2Ks off of uh, Navy searches. So, for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, it's pretty broken. <laughs> in the way of uh, Saki Kazuki just getting more and more support. Uh, I keep saying it throughout the day, and I'm still not believing it until I see it every single time Saki Kazuki's on the camera. But we're right back to Justin's turn uh, and playing his own uh, four costs. Uh, the good old four cost Honga, Honga back. I always get his name wrong, so we'll see uh, what else we got. We're going to go down to four as Gecko with this simple 5k swing, and then a Kuzan. Most likely getting prepped for the eight costs that are coming down later on, or just trying to cycle. Who knows? 
Yeah, probably just cycle. We know that uh, Justin has the Absalom in the trash already, so uh, we could use like a, a Helmeppo or like a any cost reduction to get rid of that Kuzan if we we're worried about it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this is definitely a matchup where there's a lot of grinding for advantage. Uh, Gecko technically gets more cards because it's a five life leader compared to four, but Jonas gets a little bit more consistency with the discard draw effect from Sakazuki, so uh you know a lot of like mini advantage in, in both sides yeah totally yeah there's that great eruption probably already trying to get rid of this uh kuzan it's gonna be a 7k swing using the rest to ditch a card and then playing absalom and then uh yeah we're just gonna go and get rid of that uh kuzan uh literally was just there for a half episode yeah looking pretty yeah, and so we're going to take the damage as well, go down to three, and uh, we're going to pass right back. So six Dawn for Jonas here, two Tashigis still comfortably on board. And, uh, you know, a couple couple options we can do here. We could play like a three drop uh, Hina and Houndblaze to get rid of the Absalom and bottom deck at two, which means it doesn't get into rotation from trash. And uh, you can also like then use the Houndblaze on one of the Tashigis to, you know, try to push down this uh this hog back and looks like we're playing four uh maybe maybe for like a borsalina or something we're gonna see uh what we have in our book of uh of tricks i think we have an ice age and great eruption i was trying to take a look at what his what his hand was uh showing us but I think it was definitely Ice Age, Great Eruption. I'm sure there's a Hound Blaze somewhere, somewhere in the uh, nether region of his hand. But we got uh, Hogback right back into the trash. Probably coming right back. I think this is now a one cost. Is that right? Yeah, one cost with the yes. Back. Yeah. And the Great Eruption. Yep. And then, uh, yeah, Rob Lucci to, to clear it. So why not? Why not? Getting rid of three, yeah. It is uh, pretty interesting that Rob Lucci says any three, right? I'm pretty pretty sure. So like, the fact that he says any three is. I will say, outside of Sakazuki, it's you know putting three into your trash is not super easy to do because Sakazuki true. gets a free one every turn. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Moria gets it a lot easier than most now and takes advantage of Rob Lucci. In the same way. Yeah, I mean, if they keep designing black leaders like that, too, uh, you know, Rob Lucci probably will only get better. I guess Rebecca could do it, too, huh? Yes. We always forget about Rebecca. Yeah, Rebecca's honestly, you know, it was a bit of a menace going into OPO, uh, OPO5, but it's just been just a solid card in OPO6. I don't think it's been too busted. I think there's ways to get rid of it. Uh, it can attack for, for game, though, which is uh, surprising in a meta like this. But Four drop? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I was talking about the leader. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> it can't, it can't go. I could talk about the four cost whenever I want. I sure. want a game. A whole game. <laughs> right. All right, well, we're going to use our hog back, putting two back, and we're going to get the eight drop there. I do love being able to do this. It just means that, you know, next turn, uh, I get to guarantee see my uh, my best card on curve. Yes, it doesn't help. Uh, well, yeah, go ahead and ditch one. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, and one of the, uh, the best decks to start ditching cards doesn't even care about it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's... Uh, not too bad, not too bad at all. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get rid of a Siru, I do believe, from that Rob Lucci swing. Now I'm just kind of deciding what we want to do from there. Still at three life. This is a, a leader swing for 5k, so it's not too bad. Just need one card out of hand. Oh, and uh, maybe a Borsalina, no, our own Gecko Moria, so. Yeah. Um, no no removal is pretty rough, but we are going to get two yeah, such, draws. Yeah, two more draws. So one draw off Kuzan and then Toshigi look at top three, four, five. What? Oh. <laughs> that was on purpose. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you I, I thought you thought it was top I, three. Yeah, I and I, then you fix yourself in saying four or five. You know, if I did do that, 
I would have hope that my co-commentator would have the insight to let me play it off. <laughs> oh, I was, but you looked at me and then you looked back at me. Okay, whatever. <laughs> We're going right back to Gecko Moria's turn. That was a pretty cool turn on uh, Jonas's end, right? I mean, there's it's, it's very interesting to see, again, the versatility of Sakazuki into the versatility of Gecko Moria, right? Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of different combinations of 8-drop uh, uh, Gecko Moria, mm -hmm. and this was a new one. I, we haven't seen this one today, where we just do a simple draw to yeah. uh, Kuzan to set up his... Um, the, 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 what's the What's the word? Uh, well, I guess the crackback of um, him playing his Gecko Moria, because we know that Justin got his. So... Uh, sure, we we uh, got rid of it early on, but we didn't really care about that because we had our 8-drop to get it back. Yeah, so we're going in 5k swings. We're using brand new to get out of it. Swing with a leader as well. You gotta. You also got to realize, like, this, this Kuzan is probably not going to, you know, stay around or stick around anytime soon because the combinations that we were talking about before also include using uh, Gekamoria along with... Um, Excuse me, Ice Age, uh, in order to get rid of the, their own A cost. Yeah, so it looks like we're going to use a combination of Suru and Absalom, so that will make it cost one, so Absalom gets the removal of it. No Luchi, which would have been able to get rid of an additional copy of Tashiki, but uh, yeah, with the one life to three life difference, the fact that the board is a lot wider for Justin is looking in his favor. Only advantage I think Jonas has is uh, just cards in hand. I mean, these are just like some major swings, right? It's, yeah. That that's the thing about this matchup is that they, it keeps becoming very swingy, and it's not letting up at all. Yeah, but luckily we do have this four drop Kuzan who was able to survive the turn, which means we get some great removal potential, attacking into the Perona, but also going to be able to give a minus four cost to anything on board, and uh, that again just helps the removal so much. Yeah. This is uh, it's gonna get a little tougher uh, for Jonas in this uh, the next couple turns. I mean, there might not even be a couple next turns because he is at one life, so it, it's getting a little sketchy, definitely. All right, so there goes the Prona, and so like yeah, the the only thing about Mori is like his trade off is you get so many cards to to hit board consistently, but your hand size is always like three cards, like you know plus or minus two more times. We're also seeing like the difference between the two decks where uh, sure, we have the versatility of our, our leader and as well as using a cost uh, gecko in Sakazuki with a bunch of stuff that were, it's possible to use like the, the Shigi. But, you know, the, the other fact of uh, Gekomori leader being able to get back things uh, from their trash and be able to play those. So it, it is uh, pretty interesting. I would say, you know, the the biggest thing that Jonas needs to do is get rid of the stuff that's on board yeah. as he can. And uh, from there, we can kind of focus on the leader, hopefully, or their, their face or their life, right? I mean, they're at three life, and then it's been like that for the last, I don't know, four or five turns at this point. Yeah. And it has not moved. I don't think it will be moving anytime soon. Yeah, so it looks like leader swing into... The, the hog back making the Gekko Moria cost five or cost three with a five reduction. Which is nice, I guess. Man, if they're playing your favorite card, Soap Sheep, right? Uh, Soap Sheep would be cool. Soap Sheep is, is really dope. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, it is super handy in the ways of trying to get rid of multiple threats. I don't know if Sakazuki plays it. I don't know if Yona, Jonas plays it. Uh, but it is uh, it's a pretty cool card. I usually just play it for the trigger because I just like hand structure stuff. Yeah, so it ends up saving the hog back using a 2k Sindri. Well, which is cool. It's not too bad, I guess. We're going to go 6k. I'm going to guess into the hog back once again. Why not? Able to get rid of it. Uh, 5k attack with the Tashigi. Um, all right. All right, and we took that one. Okay. Uh, four for a copy of Rebecca. Mm-hmm. And then minus uh, four cost there, and then 
What are we doing with this three dawn? Uh, I don't know. Oh, Ice Age and two. Oh, Ama. Oh. Yeah. Oh, there okay. Gotcha, okay. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Just as good, if not better. Yeah, especially because those, again, like putting the cards to the bottom of the deck makes a big difference in uh, in this matchup because that means that Gecko Mori doesn't have that in the trash. It's less resources there. It's stuff you can't bring back. Sure. It's very good for this matchup. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool when you really think about it. Uh, and one of the perfect cards outside of like Houndblaze uh, in this matchup. And, you know, that's one of the things that you have to kind of think about uh, when it comes down to that, that kind of thing. Uh, there's a lot of Dawn to be used here. And, you know, step one, when it came down to uh what Jonas needs to do has been completed mm -hmm. and that is their board yeah justin's board is now cleared and now we have to decide how justin's gonna approach this this uh this turn which by the way his hand is not looking too hot no nope. or too big um and then we have to decide how we want to end the game yeah and, uh, it's gonna be pretty tough for justin to uh get around Jonas's uh onslaught i'm sure yeah, so we just do a quick uh, 7k uh, attack. We block with that, and then we use the Gecko to play an Absalom and a Suru to get rid of the 4-drop Kuzan, which uh, you know would make it easier for that Gecko removal. But we're uh, we're still in a good spot. I don't think either player's won or lost yet, but Jonas is on the play. 10 Dawn to work with. If we can get rid of this 8-drop Moria, I think we, we have a good chance to win. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Great Eruption to start us off, giving two cost there. Yeah. Um, here's a Houndblaze. Where is it going? To the Absalom? Uh, whatever. Absalom, yeah. Absalom. Absalom. That's going to boost up this Tashigi we talked about before, where not all one cost and other cards have the benefit of having a power enough to attack with. But with Houndblaze, it makes it a lot easier. And I think this is 7k? 7k to leader, probably? Better take a guess. <clears throat> I mean, we could we could go for game, right? Yes. I mean, I think that's what we're trying to do, believe it or not. I think, uh, you know, with the 7K swing, we're just trying to decide if it's going to be worth, you know, pitching two cards as Justin. Uh, and, you know, uh, it looks like it's not worth pitching those two cards. We're gonna swing another seven onto uh, Justin's life. You know, sure, it's a little scary for uh, Jonas with this uh, eight cost still out there. Have to deal with it next turn. Uh, it's a, p a big possibility we have enough for a Borsalino, but I don't think Jonas cares. Never mind. Yeah, I don't know if Jonas is gonna with one life, no blockers, and uh, it looks like about six cards in hand. It's gonna be real tough to. To finish this out so justin's gonna go seven uh, he's, he's looking at the seven he's got three or four cars in hand Houndblade is gonna make this last attack an eight which is probably what's gonna happen okay uh, yeah well it doesn't even matter so we're just gonna go ahead and hound blaze and make him take that life anyway yeah okay. and uh if that's a great eruption you use it right Shh. yeah wow man. that is so good Dang. take a 1k out of hand Dang. and I, I think, think your numbers it. are are great. So we have. I think that's it. Twenty four. So I think it's like eleven and thirteen are the best numbers. We can do two twelve. Like yeah, we're gonna start off with eleven, thirteen. Can't get there, and wow, wow. Justin gets there. Justin, the 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 back to back to back. Is, Maybe. Is, that's what he's that's what he's trying to do. Yes. He had to take down the national champion. And uh, it is no surprise for both of them in how this uh, went about. You know? Yeah. Such a back and forth. And I don't know. I didn't. I wasn't able to see enough of Jonas's hand to see how much that great eruption counted. Obviously, he pitched a 1K, which I think he had like two 2Ks at least. So 
I think he yeah. could have gone to 10. I don't know if he could have gone out of 11, but very close. I mean, it, I mean, he definitely had two Ks. I think he had a 1K, and then plus the other 1K, he had 6K in hand. So, uh, or yeah, 6K in hand at the very least. Yeah. Uh, but uh, sometimes it, it just goes that way. So shout out to Justin. He's going to be in the, the final round as undefeated. And on the other, nice. Nice. On the other table, they're already done. So yeah, uh, it's uh, it's Kyle Vo. Nice. So okay. Arizona had uh, two spots in the top four, nice. and uh, they uh, they're both X ones right now. But love that. Going back to us. Um, if anything, you know, I think what we're gonna do is uh, find out how long the rest of the round is for one. Yeah. Because I think we have about 13 minutes left on our stream timer, mm -hmm. but it might be a little bit different in general. Yeah. And I know the the internet has been pretty bad right now, but at least we're recording. Uh, should be should be good enough for that. And you know, it's getting a, a lot more busier in this room, so that's probably what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Because now that we're we're more in a common room, so now that people are uh, leaving the the venue or are just kind of hanging out outside, it's I think that's what's going on with it. So. Yep. So we're gonna see if we're gonna figure that out. Um, let's just go to break for now. Yep. Got finals coming up. It's going to be one final round. Uh, Justin versus Kyle. Moria versus Moria. We'll have to see what it looks like. Nice. So, see you guys in a minute. We're muted, by the way. Oh, we're muted. Sick. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Okay, Thank let's you. Go right back to the beginning. All right. Oh, man. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. We're back. Yes. Actually, can you do the whole swishy thing just to make it uh, feel real? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here, here. here. We'll, we'll do it. All right, we're back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> please, yes. please. Yes. Checking good, level. Okay, awesome, 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 awesome. Okay, got it. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. All right. Uh, thank you. You guys are great. It's going to be re-uploaded as a VOD with yes. sound, without lag, hopefully. Uh, in the next week, so appreciate Hopefully. that. Uh, internet from a convention center is never, can, you know, easy to deal with. Yes. So, um, but we are doing our best with that one, and I appreciate you guys being understanding and patient on that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a finals of Moria. It's going to be Justin versus Kyle. And yes, this is uh, Gecko Moramir. We were saying that uh, whatever Justin's going to be playing, because he's the back-to-back, -back, potentially back One Piece regional. The, the royal we are we yes really because uh, i remember saying i don't remember you saying this. i said goku mario is gonna win if, if category doesn't <laughs> <laughs> you were there yeah and if that doesn't win then like sakazuki and then sakazuki options. doesn't win I stopped I, it there mm, sakazuki that's a slippery too. slope that is a slippery slippery we slope slip into this next round the finals the finals uh again with justin versus kyle a gecko moria mirror and uh i think they are just finishing getting set up and just waiting so we'll take a look at them uh and uh they're gonna start it out with uh kyle going second yeah yeah so no uh no cindery from from justin kyle gets to go second uh i think in general you want to go first in this match just because you get to use your leader effect first but uh you know, being able to be reactive with it too is nice, but just to discarding the Perona, which is the best one in this early game, especially with another Perona in the trash because they won't be able to probably get rid of this one. Yeah, it's uh, going to be a little devastating. The Great Eruption co going into the trash from it. And, um, you know, that's probably the best thing you could do. Although you do lose the 2K, uh, both from hand and now in trash, but you can get those back with the Hogback. And as well as um, it's going to be most most effective against the mirror, only because you know you're already minusing cards every single turn. So mm -hmm. uh, this Kuzan coming down to try to replace that and try to get a body, uh, make it a little bit easier for our uh, Absalom to get these things back. But this uh, brand new, a little bit of glare there, but that brand new grabbing something from the top three. Yeah, and then this lets you still use the uh, the leader effect and to play something off, which could be another Perona. I'm not sure how many cards are in Kyle's hand, but mm -hmm. um, looks like there are around five. So Perona would be another good hit. But looks like we're going to discard the uh, the coups on there. We're going to play the uh, Perona once again, uh, making him discard a f second card. Mm, yeah, which is going to be again pretty. 
pretty good in the mirror. Again, just uh, pitching these cards to play their leader effect. Two of these cards that we would have all the otherwise kept in our hand, Greater Eruption and now our own Perona, um, is uh, it's going to be a little detrimental. And I think we're, it's hard to tell with these white sleeves. Are we at three already? I believe we are at three life. And uh, yeah, this is, you know, Justin's got, I think, the early lead here. Uh, just a lot of pressure being able to get those discards with the Peronas, being able to get like the additional cards and trash with the brand new. A lot of things going his way. Yeah, and you know, the other th part of this is that Justin's going to take this one, but it's still not going to be enough for our own Perona on uh, Kyle's end. And it looks like we're going to go ahead and use Kuzan's effects minus uh, the Perona and then um, uh, Great Eruption. Yeah. Great Eruption into Rob Lucci is going to do the trick. Yeah, and we just barely got three cars into our trash yes. uh, for that one. So uh, without having uh, time to really use our leader effect as much, mm -hmm. it's a little bit rougher for us. But we're going to use our own Great Eruption. Okay. Looks like on the... Uh, it looks like on the Rob Lucci, and we'll see how big of an attack we're going to go with this. We know that uh, Absalom is in trash for Justin right now to get rid of the uh, whatever he decided to put the minus two on. I think you just go nine. Just get rid of that Kuzan. Make sure make sure he doesn't get any more value out of it, and then pop the, uh, the Rob Lucci. I don't think there's any other two Don plays that are going to be more beneficial to that. Yeah. So just checking our trash out, getting our options together, and making sure that these, uh, that the things in, in the Dawn that we're using is going to be worth it. But I guess we're going the seven, which is okay. Um, do we have five? I do believe so. Yeah, so we're going to use it to uh, play the Absalom once again, mm -hmm. put two cards to the bottom of our deck to pay the cost for it. And uh, yeah, I believe this is... Seven into, yeah, seven to Kuzan, I believe. Yes, yeah, seven to Kuzan. We played the Absalom to pop the Rob Lucci. We got both of them out, and now we're going to use two for the brand new swing. Yeah, and I like I like this from Justin. It kind of says, like, I don't think you want to spend two cards to save it. And then if you do, I can still put two on brand new to try to pressure it one more time. Yeah. Just gets more cards out of hand. Yep, and we're immediately taking that leader swing 5K. Uh, our hand size isn't the best, so it makes sense. And, hey, remember that Kuzan that you swung into? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's back. It is back, but uh, fortunately Kyle has like no cards left in trash, so he could have done like a really nice Lucci play if he had a couple more to clear board, but uh, it's just not in the cards for him, and Justin still has some value, but he does need to kind of play his own more yet to answer, or he'll kind of fall behind. Hmm. I mean, Pekamoria, uh, a drop of his own could be that. Um, but it's kind of hard to say, right? It's kind of hard to say that, you know, if I get my own 8-drop and somehow remove maybe the other 8-drop or uh, the Kuzan, because the Kuzan is just going to do a lot of work, right? Yeah. It's going to it's gonna keep reducing uh, uh, any 8-drops that they play, uh, Justin plays, that is. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he just gonna, I mean, it, it's, it's a bummer to try to get rid of it again because you can just 8-drop and get it back, right? Yeah. And uh, Justin doesn't seem like he has his own, so... Yeah, Justin's seen most of everything but uh, in this early game, but not having 8-drop uh, you know, hurts you quite a bit, because I don't think there's hogback and 8-drop in Trash either if you wanted to try to set out for next turn. Mm. Looks like we're going to just start with a simple 5. We're going to get a brand new out of their hand. Another... Thinking of another 5. Yeah. Yeah, end up going to be another 5 into Kyle going down to 2 life right now. And looks like we're going to use Ice Age. Which is pretty good. And to Shigi. Yeah, 3 drop 1, so get the additional reduction. So that's a reduction of 7. And then with the... Oh, another Ice Age. Oh, my goodness. So, Rob Luch is going to clear board, but that took so many cards out of hand to do so. Yeah, but, like, when you think about it, this was the only thing that Kyle really had to his name, right? Mm -hmm. He only has... Never mind. No, he's got quite a few more cards in hand at this point. He has a pretty good... Yeah, he is pretty good. Never mind, never mind. This is where, you know, uh, for instance, 
you know, Sakizuki, that the one that we were talking about before, or the matches that we were talking about before with Sakizuki, takes a little less than what uh, Gekamoria is doing right now. But we did get both of them out. Uh, Kyle has to play another eight, eight cost to get that Kuzan back if if needed, or just play one from hand. But it's going to be a little more susceptible to uh, the things that Justin wants to do. And, but only two cards in hand with Justin, right? Yeah. All right, so no cards on board. We got 10 hold Dawn to work with as Kyle. And uh, yeah, Justin not, not finding a Gekomori is, is pretty rough. Yeah, I mean, we might see one uh, upcoming. You know, we're going to be able to mill some cards out. Oh, yeah, and uh, being able to have access to two geckos like justin had like such an early advantage from all the the peronas and everything but yeah without being able to like convert those into those geckos mm -hmm. he's in a he's in a just far behind spot bit of a pickle bit of a pickle all right so we're going to use the minus three and then rob lucci to get rid of both of them off the the suru so keeping the uh the Rob Lucci rested, and uh, Kyle, again, like, narrowly having enough cards to uh, to put to the bottom of the deck, only having the one 8-drop Moria left. Mm. And that uh, that brand new has seen things. <laughs> it's been around. <laughs> it has been around. It has done its job, though. You know, grabbed the, the Navy target from the top three, uh, swung into something. All these memories. Yeah. All of his comrades, though, just continually uh, finding the trash one way or the other. Yeah. And I'm trying to think, like, what what is the best play for Justin here again? Like, no eight drop at this point. I don't. Again, no. Hasn't seen it in the trash. Hasn't seen a hog back to get it back, as far as we know. Because I think that would be near the top of the plays. And uh, I think like the one balance with Gecko Mori is that like you uh, you at least can't. Uh, you know, hog back and play eight drop in the same turn, right? Sure. Yeah, but we're going with the, the hand destruction once again. This is the Perona, of course, making him have that hard decision. This is the life, it looks like. Interesting. All right, and just everything on brand new. Putting him down to zero. Okay, so this is kind of a weird spot. So... They they have to either play a blocker or a clear board, or if not, then they uh, they just lose to a big 15 potentially next turn. That's true. That's probably exactly what Justin wants. Mm -hmm. He knew that, uh, hey, I'm not going to get any A costs. I'm not really building a board. But what I can do is start swinging, put you down at zero, and pretty much just set me up for uh, some sort of victory. Because, uh, I mean, if I'm not going to be handed to it i'm going to create the opportunity for sure yeah and with no cards in trash for kyle uh it's going to be asking a lot but you have you have a pretty wide hand looks like seven or eight cards at this point right yeah it's very interesting the, the dichotomy here the 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 correlation the something whatever word that makes sense to compare these two guys and you're trying yeah i was, I was looking through the vocabulary it wasn't just really getting there but the the comparison of trashes um and as well as uh the uses of our hands and it looks like we're just gonna take these which makes sense oh yeah borsalino fantastic and then another borsalino probably yes e no. even worse sabo it's a sabo yeah that's gonna be that might be gg that that might be gg that is i think i think that's actually gg because like justin could do the same thing right yes but these are likely going to be 6k and 5k swings one of them just are or is not going to count neither are going to count right or i guess well, yeah, yeah i'm yeah. more of a saying like you know you only get one free block out of it uh yeah, I, I think Justin. Is this. I, I think yeah. Without without hearing them, but looking at the vote, the uh, yeah. What do you? What well, I'm supposed to do? <laughs> you can like double Borsalino and then swing sixes. Uh, you can't remove anything because of the Sabo effect. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just really well played from Kyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fact that the entire board is safe. Um, For the most part, yeah. Yeah, it's it's in a good spot, and it's it's just kind of all these this time that Kyle's been able to buy by playing these eight drop Morias, 
and uh, and just having strength from it. I can't I can't think of a, an easy way out, but yeah, just going there using the effect, pitching an ice age, milling two, still no Moria's. I guess you couldn't get a hog back just to have some more cards. Yeah, I guess. Do you think you're attacking in Delucci or? I don't think it matters at this point. Yeah, I think we attack in Delucci, right? Oh boy. We're just countering out no matter what. Yeah, <laughs> and then this is this is gonna get a block, right? But I think it was the life of both of them. It, it don't matter at this it point, really right? I don't know. You yep. swing into swing six Ks no matter what with those blockers out. Simple nine. Yeah. Taking it. Six, yeah, and uh, Kyle is our winner. Wow. At a blazing rate, too. Yes. Absolutely blazing rate. Both of them uh, know the deck back and forth, and Justin's deck just didn't really agree with them when it came down to the eight costs. And, man, Kyle played it really well from the Kuzans to the... Okay. Oh, whoa, whoa, well, whoa. All right, guys. <laughs> the, the Kuzans to the uh, to the everything uh, in between, mm -hmm. right? He may have not had things into his trash. He may have not had things um, uh, in a very straight line, but he really got there when it came down to it where he had a borsalino he had to uh, uh sabo and it it's just the right amount of timing for everything and uh yeah congratulations to him yeah for no, sure no back to back to back but no it is all good very close though very yes. close uh, back yes. to back to almost back is very commendable yes <laughs> And that is uh that is it. That's the end of our finals. Yep. Kyle winning it. Uh Moria taking our first one. Wow. And uh in the in the first OPO six regional in yeah. North America, mm -hmm. Gecko Mario takes it. Yeah. So uh not quite Whitebeard. Uh but it is it is still pretty cool uh as a new OPO six leader. And uh yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't know if we're gonna be interviewing them. Yeah, I'm is not that, sure. That's something that we're trying to do. That's what I'm trying to do, yeah. See yeah. if we did they want get... an interview? Yeah, I mean, you can interview them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, give us, can... give us one second. Let us get it set up, and uh, we'll do a quick interview with them. Okay, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. All right, we are back. We have Kyle right off his 9-0 run with uh, with Gekamor. I also don't know. Justin's won the last two regionals yeah. for for core, so you uh, you dethroned his streak. How are you feeling? I actually feel honestly amazing. And then the whole time I've been talking about it, like because I'm come from California, mm -hmm. everyone knows Justin. And then I was like, oh, I can't let him win a third one back to back to back. <laughs> so I got to win it. And yeah. here I am, and I'm just happy to win it. Yeah, and he tried his best. That early game was pretty disgusting from him, right? Getting the yeah. Peronas and, uh, and a lot of pressure for you. How did how did those first couple turns feel? Yeah, so in the Gecko, or mainly in most black matchups, it's all resource management. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to get as many cards out of his hand like i'm fine keeping him like high up because my gecko and my bodies will just take all the life at the end anyways mm -hmm. but the prona really like put in work because then i wasn't plussing any cards i have to discard a card and i do gain a card but it's just net neutral yeah so. yeah felt pretty bad yeah and your trash had like five cards max in it yeah. for most of it right like that was very very close yeah it was funny i wasn't able to play down any sentries but i did uh i was that the one where i played brand new i don't think i had Right. Yeah, I don't think you had brand new either. Yeah, you had to pitch him later. Uh, I know you had to bottom deck some. You had you played like your first gecko. It had uh, Helmeppo, but it had Kuzan, right? Because yeah, you, you had Luchi, Helmepo, yeah. but you didn't have enough for in trash. Yeah, I wish I could have got a brand new in the trash. I only run three brand new, so that that probably contributes to it. Mm -hmm. But I just brought back the body just so, to bait his swing because I didn't want him to put Dawn on brand new to mm -hmm. get cards out of my hand. Sure. So yeah, I just I just wanted to play the Kuzan because one of the strongest things you can do in the mirror is uh first of all i like going second in the mirror and then when you go second you really want to do eight dawn you want to drop the gecko you want to get kuzan back mm. specifically because gecko is in soccer they ice age plus gecko on their turn can only get rid of one body gotcha. so you want to put them on that spot gotcha gotcha yeah because i you know normally you want to go first right i'd say in yeah. more matchups yep, but most of the time yeah uh I, I just don't play enough to know if uh if you just if seconds to play just because of the the extra card draw the resource management and yeah, it seems like it there's a lot of uh, advantages to going second in the mirror. Mainly, uh, when you go first, you get that extra body. It really helps, like, versus yellow, let's say, because you want to swarm the board as soon as possible. But in the mirror, you're fine if they put the body, because 
uh, if the, the first one's to put it down, then the first one's to swing with it, mm -hmm. and then you can abuse that by attacking the character. Yeah, so that just means they have more cards left in their life, you give them less resources, and uh, yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. In yeah, there. especially if they play Sinji down, that's minus one card, and then uh, if on my Fordon, I can also establish Borsalino. Uh, most of the time, Borsalino has been pretty fake recently because of Sakazuki. Mm -hmm. Like, he's unkillable, but he's very bottom deckable. He is. Yeah, but um, in the mirror, he's like, he's just there forever and ever. Yeah, yeah. And Borsalino Sabo is such a strong, like, yeah. he, he did he tell you, like, I can't do anything? Or, or Well, I just knew. Uh, I, I could see his lines. I was like, if he doesn't, if for, he didn't play Gekko last turn, so mm -hmm. he could top deck Gekko. His best play would be, like, Great Eruption. Ice Age, Gecko me back, but I knew he didn't have it, so the thing he could do is just obviously put me to zero, hope I don't have a blocker, and I knew that's what he was doing, so I just took all my life and just played my blockers. Mm -hmm. And so he had to play that line, and then he had the answer to yeah, it, right? Exactly. Definitely. Well, uh, I think that that was it for uh, for that. Any any shout outs uh, for, your, for your W today? Yeah, uh, shout out to my sponsor, Project CCG in SoCal, mm -hmm. and then shout out to my whole group, Dylan, Nikki, Jackie. I, I have huge support i think the scene in socal is actually honestly amazing yeah the practice i get there is actually better than probably we can get anywhere else maybe like in arizona obviously those guys are cracked yeah i'm i'm a little biased for arizona yeah, yeah but but just the whole pacific uh north uh, southwest right that's yeah. the, that's the whole yeah, area shout outs to those guys cool well thank you very much uh we do appreciate congratulations on your win yep thank you i uh your friends are very <laughs> yeah, supportive for sure thank right you. off camera yeah and uh, let's let's get Brian up back real quick just to close it out. But thank yep. you very much. And thank congratulations. You, man. All right. All right. I unplugged uh, something. You. OK. <laughs> uh, we're that, fine. That's fine. It's fine. Probably. Um, we're at the end. Yes. So, somehow. Uh, yeah. I think it's been a really good event. Yeah. Um, a lot of uh, expected things has happened. And. Some unexpected, but really, honestly, the last like uh, two, three rounds has been pretty expected, right? Yeah. So, yeah. But overall, it was a fun time. It was really nice to see all of the OPO six decks. Yeah. Um, I think we saw every of, of the four viable ones in my mind. We saw each one of them. Yes. Yes. W Yamato. Uh, we didn't see Prone actually. Oh yes. That's what yeah. We well, we may or may not be able to see that tomorrow. Let's put it that way. Yeah. 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 So we'll we'll see if we can uh, go through the next week and see if we can uh, find a Perona somewhere. Yes. You know? Yes. But we we will have top sixteen posted as soon as we can. Uh, it will be on Eggman events. And uh, I'm going to say, I want to say tomorrow morning, but uh, maybe Monday. We'll see. We'll just see how we're feeling. Yeah. I we'll might just see. go back to our hotel room and just crash. We'll uh, see. Not a bad idea, really. But I think, uh, yeah, I'll see what I can do about the VOD as well to mm -hmm. be on my channel up here on YouTube. Yeah. Which um, will also be, which is also linked in the chat yes. there. I don't know. I know the internet and the connection and everything else like that has been pretty uh, shoddy. So uh, yeah. hopefully we can have the high quality ones there. Yeah, yeah. We record all these locally, so they will be re-uploaded there. In the meantime, it is on YouTube and on Twitch. Twitch. Uh, I did already. It's, it's rounds one through seven, round eight, and finals. So yeah. you guys can can see those there. Cool. And uh, yeah, I think that is going to be it. So it. big thank you to uh, Core for letting us do this. It was a good time. And I appreciate them uh, giving us the opportunity for this and, and just hosting the whole event in general. It's been it's been really, really solid. Yeah, shout out to them. Thank you. Thank everyone here for attending, but especially Core TCG for allowing us to do this. And uh, thanks everyone for hanging out. Yeah. Yeah, we should be done for the day. Again, uh, we'll, we'll have deck list up as soon as we can. So be on the... Uh, be on the lookout for those and then yeah we have more regionals starting tomorrow and yes. just a bunch of, there were like five regionals for opo6 this weekend so yes uh, a lot of data to keep track of but we'll try our best for it and content. that that will be it now a lot of content. content a lot of content either way we'll see you guys in the next stream we'll do thank you guys bye 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 bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.